Length of the country in this week here at Majestic Jaipur. The grandeur of the Mahals. Fantastic city to be playing this penultimate event. The Bhavani Singh Rathor presents Jaipur Open. Powered by a Small Bank. A Small Finance Bank, very important for the development of microfinance. Look at some of the top players in the fray. Saptak Tarwar, Manu Gandas, Aman Raj and Akshay Sharma. And for those of you joining us just now, I'd like to tell you that we're live from the Ram Bag Golf Club, this majestic golf club in the heart of Jaipur. And we bring to you Bhavani Singh Rathor presents Jaipur Open 2023 powered by AU Small Finance Bank. I'm your host Shorya Singh joined alongside my co-host Ainish Aluwalia. It's been a fantastic uh, week of golf thus far. We've had uh, low scores. Leading the pack is Saptak Talwar at 11 under par, Manu Gandas at 10 under par, trailing by a solitary shot. And you have quite a few low numbers. The cut has been applied at 1 under par. And um, this is the penultimate week, offering a prize fund of 1 CR. It's a big week. Ainesh, how do you feel thus far? I feel good. Thanks for the introduction, Shorya. And, uh... Quite an exciting morning today we have in front of us. Uh, seems a bit nippy out in Jaipur as you watch uh, Abhinav with a little sweater on, teeing off on the first. Yes. Abhinav Shore has found a little uh, form at the end of the season. Uh, seems to be pushing a little bit more on the order of merit. And uh, he would like to have a strong finish to the season and maybe crack that top 10 on the order of merit. Yeah, he sure would. And behind him is the heavyweight Olympian, Odin Mane. Only requiring a, an iron to tee off here. You know, he has that length of the tee, has pedigree and a lot of victories under his belt. Fantastic player, Odin Mane. As uh, often tends to run hot and cold. Maybe this week could be one that he can find that uh, splendid form that he's known for. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you there. And uh, Udyan also uh, has been, as you said, had an hot and cold season going on. He'd like to push for a win this season and uh, put all the doubts to rest. Udyan Mane stands tall and delivers quite a blow on that golf ball. He does it with quite an ease. He's, uh, you can compare him to a money else who's so big and so strong. Very effortlessly creates a lot of power. Talking about effortless power, we'll discuss a lot of that with you, Ainesh, uh, both across uh, cricket as well as uh, golf. Okay. Always <laughs> excited to uh, uh, get a little banter and a little. And talk about power, you know, you have uh, Kalin Joshi based out of Bengaluru, another good, uh, phenomenal youngster. You see so many of them now. Listen, Kalin's been, uh, despite being very young, he's been on tour for quite a while. He's one of the younger veterans, if you would like to say that. Yeah, that's a good, uh, you've coined a good term there. He's definitely one of them. And I'd like to see uh, you as a young veteran. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, not on the other side. We here nestled comfortably in the commentary booth. It's nice and warm here. No such issues that the players are facing. It's nippy on the golf course, but uh, God is kind. As we have a look at the players uh, going off, just to look at some of the other other scores. Sanit Bishnoi at 8 under par, tied 5th. Aman Raj tied alongside Akshay Sharma at 9 under par. And some of the notables who could not survive this week is defending champion and numero uno, Om Prakash Chauhan. But he's sitting pretty because his uh, closest pursuer is uh, off uh, trying to earn his Asian door card. So he's not here this week. Uh, I would say. Don't you think uh, Om Prakash missing the card? Do you think he's uh, opened the door a little for the pursuers on the order of merit? I think Sachin uh, may be in with an outside shot. He's, he's currently at 71. Maybe if he can have a good week, uh, get to within about 35 lakh or so of uh, Om Prakash Chon. In the final week, the victor will get uh, somewhere close to in, in the vicinity of about 46, 47 lakh, I think so. Um, there's a lot to play for, at least uh, that final week. You should be in with a mathematical chance. And uh, Aman Raj also from the outside looking in. So it's still not uh, not over. 
especially they'd, they'd be thinking that if Om Prakash can miss the cut here, you never know, they might have a chance. And that's why golf is the great equalizer. Yes, I agree. As we can see on our screens, uh, we have two events left. Uh, we're going through the Jaipur Open currently. Day three, moving day as it's known. And uh, everybody is trying to reach the coveted final event, the Tata Steel Tour Championship for a whooping three crore prize purse. And it's a special event. Uh, it's a no-cut event invited only by the uh, year's top 60. So everybody trying to make a push. Everybody wants to be higher up to have a chance to maybe uh, push for that uh, position that Om Prakash is finding himself at the number one position. And maybe some guys who are in and around the top 60, nervous times for them, nervous moments for them. As, a, as their next year depends on where they finish this week. Yeah, we were just looking at uh, the top 60. You see uh, Arjun Prasad at 54th, Sukra Bahadur, I think he's made cut here. Uh, we just saw him teeing off. Uh, Tappy Ghai, Kalin Joshi at 57. Uh, rather unique to find him so far down, but shows you the competition is so stiff and he's not played too many events. Uh, Adil Bedi. The phenom from Chandigarh uh, finds himself in the ominous uh, 58th position. Not somewhere that he's comfortable being. I'm, I'm certain that uh, he would want to secure that card as well. Pavan Kumar, we've seen him. He's been very consistent and um, tends to shoot low scores as well. A couple of top 10s as well this year for him. And Dhruv Sharon, looking resplendent in that mugshot at uh, 60th position. But he's having a good week, so no such worries for him. As you go back to the action for Cullen, the first hole, a fairly benign hole here at Jaipur, maybe just a little bit over 400, not even 400 yards, maybe 380 odd yards. You tee off with a three iron or a rescue and then get a pitching wedge. So it's a fairly straightforward hole. Well, we'll have uh, Shorya describe the holes today because unfortunately I haven't had an opportunity to play Jaipur. But from what I hear, uh, the course can be overpowered by the longer hitters and favors those who. Get it a country mile. Yeah, there's going to be some sad news for the likes of you when the golf ball rolls back. <laughs> but I don't see any change, to be honest. It's only that uh, the difference still remains. As we have a look at Cullen, should be looking to put a bit, little bit of spin here. You can see he needs to be one of those towering shots that he's known for. Not the right yardage. Uh, pretty undesirable result for him early on. Yeah, he would have hoped to, with a shorter club in his hand, uh... Considering how he usually likes to attack most flags. So I'd like to correct uh, the error uh, by myself. It's actually 345 yards uh, because you're forced to lay up here. So it plays uh, a little longer because you, you're laying up to a yardage of about 130 odd yards. So um, it's, it's, it's a different sort of a powerful. We've rarely seen anybody go here with the driver. Uh, I'm certain that the longer hitters could get there, but the trees will impede uh, that uh, sort of an approach. I've played quite a few tournaments here, Rainesh. In fact, uh, I had the good fortune of winning <laughs> my amateur event here. Yes, it was uh, back in the day. But it's a fantastic event uh, and, and a fantastic track. And uh, the golfers are really enjoying this week. A little bit about uh, AU Bank, founded by Mr. Sanjay Agarwal, a distinguished chartered accountant and first generation entrepreneur. AU Small Finance Bank has been a catalyst for empowering entrepreneurial ambitions among India's unserved and underserved segments since inception 1996, originating as AU Finances. The Jaipur-based retail centric non-banking finance company has just dedicated two decades to providing prompt tailored financial services to both rural and urban areas. Transitioning from an NBFC to a fully fledged small finance bank, on April 19, 2017, after acquiring SFP license in 2015, the company rapidly achieved milestones such as scheduled bank status by November 1, 2017, and recognition as Fortune 500 company uh, the same year, Fortune India 500 company. It has consistently adapted its services to meet customer needs, upholding rigorous compliance standards, and earning trust as a prudent and inclusive financial institution. Reflecting on six years as scheduled commercial bank, a small bank, Finance Bank has demonstrated significant growth, societal impact, and continuous innovation. It has leveraged technology to enhance financial inclusion and foster robust customer relationships, thereby contributing to national economic progress. The bank remains devoted to its enduring mission of transformation and service, striving to address the dynamic needs of its clientele and making a lasting positive impact on countless lives. So there you 
learn a little bit about the partner bank this week, uh, making this possible AU Small Finance Bank. As we go back to hole number one, with the play. Players seem to have come up a little short. I think uh, Udin Mane seems to be the closest of the three, and uh, he's still a fair distance away. Yeah, underwhelming shots by all of them. Maybe uh, a seven on ten uh, for Odin, but maybe giving too much respect to that back left flag. Uh, there's a little bit of a shelf beyond that flag where the ball sort of falls off. Uh, but I think sometimes uh, what happens here, because the trees are rather tall, and the players can't quite feel the gust of wind there. So that might be something that, unbeknownst to them, sort of impeded their shot. Otherwise, it's a fairly straightforward shot from there. 120 odd yards. You'd think that 20 feet is the powerful course from there. Yes, and I think those uh, little nitty gritties can only come from someone who's uh, had the fortune of winning a tournament in Jaipur. We are in for a treat today. Seems like a different lifetime ago, my friend. <laughs> As we have a look at Cullen. I played quite a few pro events here as well, had decent results. Uh, very enjoyable golf course. It's, it's a majestic setting. Obviously, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's got royal heritage and uh, the layout is also very fair. Surprised by the choice of club here. What do you think, Ainesh? Really yeah, lofting it up. Avoid it. Do you think that plays a factor usually early in the morning? A little water on the greens? As we watch uh, Roman Bole Patel live on the tee uh, at number one, deliberately going through his routine. Very languid swing. Rohan Dole Patel, easy going swing. If I remember correctly, he finished dot on the number last year at number 60. And he'd like to be uh, well within the ranks and not stress about uh, making his card for next year. Yeah, he's on 62nd position, so he's uh, not too far off from there. But this week will do him a world of good. And I'm pretty certain that he'll keep his card. Harinder Gupta now. No such worries for him. Fantastic player. And he's been really consistent throughout the years as Harinder. Yeah, Harinder has that demeanor where he just, he's always relaxed and calm. He just shows up and swings a golf club and shoots uh, low numbers. Going with a longer club of the tee. Looks like a three wood if I'm not wrong. Yeah, with the recoil with that suggested he's very content with the result. Yeah. And uh, a true veteran on the Indian tour. Uh, the flag bearer for Indian golf uh, in a lot of other tours. And Rahil Ganji. You must have played a lot of golf with Rahil as well. Yeah, a fair bit of golf on the professional golf tour for India. Very effervescent character, really positive and uh, really likes to crack a joke or two. I met him last week. Uh, the week before that at DLF, he played so well in that tournament as well. And uh, I think he's sort of getting into a purple patch now. Kyle Kanji, hailing from Kolkata. He's always been a very good sportsman. You can see that that swing is still athletic. It's a blink and you miss sort of a swing. It's a very recognizable golf swing. Like, I could watch this swing, like, you know how you watch a Phil Mickelson or Tiger, you don't need to look at their faces, you just recognize the golf swing. I think he's had that consistent move for a long while. And pound for pound, he's one of the stronger players. Absolutely. And you look at the athleticism he's maintained. I think he's well into his 40s and uh, he's still swinging so freely and still has that swing speed to compete uh, with the likes of the youngsters today who hit the ball so far. I would assume that the youngsters are trying to catch up to him in some uh, parts of the game. Let's so have a look at Udi. And this part should break a little bit from his left. Being uphill, uh, speed should not be an issue. How how much of a factor do you think the dew on the greens on the fairways play? Uh, on the fairways, uh, early morning, the only thing is that you can't spin the ball as much. And, and when you're chipping it, uh, that does make a difference as well because the dew tends to get between the club and the blades of grass. So, there you have it. He's got it, I think. Oh, just about. Putting the ball doesn't break that much either. So that's the only difference. You don't get much purchase off the surface. So you'll have to cater for that. It's a little, it, it makes it a little slightly tougher to score. Yes. First few holes, you'll see that depending on the kind of hole that you're actually facing, if you need to spin it or something like that, then you definitely uh, add, add a back foot. So maybe a flag like this might not be that comfortable for these players early in the morning. Yeah, maybe that's that the, you know, this is the first one we were watching. It'll be interesting to see how the others approach it. But... Maybe that could be the reason they thought uh, maybe they were going to catch a little more of a flyer than a 
spinny shot and wanted to drop it shorter and then probably good. something else happened good thing though that the sun is out so it's, it's going to be easy and and you can see that uh, scoring has not been difficult for these players there's been a lot of deep numbers here and uh, typically you associate this golf course with low scores it's it's fairly benign it's got uh, four nice par fours it's a par 70 there are a few challenging holes on the back nine you have a couple of tricky par threes uh, the 11th but on the whole the players do look forward to this golf course let's have a look at Cullen and his par save yeah that's a good one on a hole that's 340 yards you don't want to start with a bogey yeah and for those of you joining us and don't quite understand the intricacies of golf you can always reach out to us um, on our social handles or instagram and um, ask us any questions that you have uh, regarding the game of golf i know that it can be a little complicated birdies bogeys eagles and uh, believe you me it's not that uh, confusing it's just 18 holes playing uh, repetitively over four days and then the victor emerges uh, the least shots you take you win so it's a game of opposites take fewer shots than your opponents and and you end up taking uh, the trophy and this week uh, a handsome price uh, price fund over 15 lakh for the winner so yeah a lot of money as well it's actually funny if you think of it you practice so much all these professionals they hit uh hundreds and thousands of golf balls over a period of uh years and then all to play as less as possible on the golf courses up enough we watch him uh catching the left side of the hole as long as they go in no pictures on the scorecard so that's a par four for him as well yeah you don't want to be dropping a shot early on in the morning a little bit about this tournament as well bhavani singh rathor presents jaipur open 2023 powered by au small bank bhavani singh rathor um, is a professional golfer himself and he's the presenting partner this week and has his origins in Rajasthan. He's a good player in his own right and has played events on the PGTI in the past and holds a law degree from Oxford University and was also a part of the Oxford University golf team. He also participated in the previous edition of the Jaipur Open. So uh, really you can see the support uh, that this game gets from professionals and, and, and the likes of Bhavani really do make things possible so a big thank you for to him for making this possible and, and uh, getting this great event together and of course to a small finance bank as well yeah, absolutely as we watch uh, rohan with his attempt at number one hoping to probably hit it closer than the group we've seen previously so takes a swipe over the trees read out the club at the top of the swing and that's what everybody should try yeah, and do, I guess. <laughs> works for him. Um, but yes, we've had some special sponsors this week, including Bhavani, who uh, I had the fortune of playing a lot of golf with growing up. And uh, as throughout the year, all our sponsors on the tour, they've helped us get these players uh, out on the courses and playing for some good prize money, some good prize purses, including the PGTI team who makes it happen. The look for this to be close. This is ideal angle. I think the only thing which might impede, I think he's hit that three, three wood too far. Might have been a little too greedy off the tee going with the three wood. We'll really uh, need to get this up in the air quick and uh, get it to stop as well. Might have about 90 odd yards going with the lob wedge here. Do you think the trees are high enough to uh, make you think a couple of times? Or? Yeah, if, if you get too far down where he is, you can see the amount of spin he was able to put on that uh, went to about 85 90 yards so ideally players try to get to about 220 230 35 yards of the tee have a 100 yard shot but uh, there you saw her in there being a little more aggressive maybe 70 odd yards so that puts you in a little bit of an uncomfortable spot but obviously he knows his golf absolutely if uh, someone does it's him and uh i think i would highly recommend all uh Everybody who's uh, coming up with new golf courses, the first hole should be like Jeremy. An iron on the tee, a wedge onto the green, an easy start. The game is hard enough anyway to make it more difficult for players. Yeah, absolutely. You, you you stole the words from my mouth. I was just thinking the same. You want golf, um, you know, they say golf is a relaxing game. You want to ease into the round. You don't want pressure early on. Anyways, you have the butterflies, especially when you're playing a professional event. And if the first hole is difficult, you can get sweaty palms. And, and thankfully here, um, on either nine, 
starting holes are really easy. Uh, the 10th as well, you, you lay up with uh, probably a 7 iron of the tee and then go in with the pitching wedge. So, you know, they're not very difficult holes in terms of making your 4. Uh, but they're tempting. You, you can drop shots there. And immediately forced, uh, faced with a par 3. Here, the second hole uh, is a little tricky as well. Maybe a 7 or a 6 iron depending on the pin position. So, there are a lot of challenges here on this golf course. Uh, if, you don't, um, if you don't strike it straight... Uh, you could uh, end up shooting a high score. And that's evidenced by the number of players who have missed the cut this week. The cut going at uh, one under, you had uh, Mukesh Kumar, Shankar Das, former number one, Vaseem Khan, good player, Om Prakash Chauhan, Numero Uno, not make the cut. Jamal Hussain, who's been so consistent. Um, we have Akbar Hussain, Varun Parekh, the uh, previous year's uh, Grant Thornton champion, also not uh, making the cut. Sartha Chibber, who we've seen... Um, was playing so well. All of these players missing the cut. Ashok Kumar. It's um, Ranjit Singh as well. Ball striking machine. All of them missing the cut by a solitary shot. So that's rather unique. You have a total of... Uh, you have a total of 12 players missing the cut by one shot. Mm. So it's been a painful week for quite a few. Well, and it goes to show as we watch Rahil on number one. Um, making his birdie attempt. Seems to be the furthest away in the group. Like to roll this one in, seems to have a good speed, just overballed. Yeah, also missing it on the other side, on the same side as Udyan. So I think there's something that has uh, flummoxed the players, not getting that uh, read. Yeah, both of them got the speed, right? Money Ram, Money Ram also missing the cut. Money Ram playing uh, really well this year. Um, interesting to see where he is on the order of merit. We've seen him make quite a few cuts. Uh, a likable character is Money Ram, hailing from Karnal. Well, you know, Om Prakash missing the cut this week uh, comes as a surprise, especially since he's won four times this uh, year. And he's won as recently as last year. As uh, we, last week, sorry. As you have a look at Harinder, uh, you're speaking about Mani Ram, who is in 66th position. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if... Uh, also missing it to the left. So the player is not really getting that uh, read. So, Mani Ram, uh, another thing that the players have to play the minimum number of events for them to qualify on the order of merit. So, often you'll find that the stellar names on top of the top 60, the ones who just play a few events, uh, like the likes of Gaganjit Bhullar or maybe Shubhankar who come down for a few events, then they get removed from the order of merit. Then these players can move up. But I think Mani Ram might have missed his card. I think 66th might be a bridge too far, to be honest. For those of you wondering uh, what we mean by missing or making a card, uh, the top 60 players from the year, given on their uh, performance through the year, make their uh, season for the next year where they're qualified automatically to play all events. And uh, then there's a qualifying event that happens in uh, usually around the January time where people play a pre-qualifying and play a main qualifying. And a few more cards are given out then. And Rohan on the first there, we see, do uh, you think uh, Harinder Gupta's part might have helped him? Because he got the speed and line both right. Yes, I think it always helps if you can go to school when the other players putting. So Rohan did that. Um, and while he was putting, I just had a look at the order of merit. So there are a total of three players who have to move off that order of merit. So unfortunately, I think uh, Mani Ram will have to make the ominous joint professional golf tour of India qualifying school, which is in the month of February. Um, I'm, I'm certain that I'll see you there. <laughs> you know, it's, a, too sure, but, it's uh, a it's an annual pilgrimage of uh, a lot of players, and uh, why not? And for all those of you who fancy yourself that uh, you can be a good golfer as well, do fill in the form. It's open to, I think, players with a handicap of two or below, if I'm not wrong. Uh, all professionals, and you pay the fee, and and you can play the, the previous editions have seen close to six seven six hundred entries. This time could be more. You've seen uh, the rise in prize money, world ranking points, the association with the DP World Tour, and so many other lucrative things. You can see events, uh, prize funds skyrocketing this week, playing for one CR. So it's a big calendar in the offing uh, next year. So if you uh, feel like uh, this is time, maybe now is the time to shine and fill in that form. Also, the qualifying is happening on the same course where we have the season and uh, the Tata Steel open at uh, Chamshedpur. So it's a, it's a beautiful golf course. It's a beautiful city. 
Yes, oh. there you can see this, this hole is rather tricky, this uh, second hole. Downhill par 3, it's slightly uh, right to left. Front right uh, flag pin position. You know, like if, if, you, if you see, that looks like a fairly straightforward chip shot for Odin, but it's not that easy. If he rolls it up, and then he'll have to uh, sort of be at the mercy of the elements and what kind of bounce he's able to get. And, and to hit it high, there's not much green, so he'll be happy with an up and down here. So I think a lot of, uh, they do play an underrated role as well, because a lot of the times you're not sure if the ball is going to catch a little water or not. That totally depends on what kind of spin you're going to get. And that's the difference between you maybe sticking it to a foot or maybe uh, rolling it six feet by or leaving it four feet short. I think he's surprised both of us. He's going with the with putter. <laughs> so he's definitely trusting the roll. Eliminate the elements. This shows you that, uh, you know, he's such a good player. And uh, sometimes amateurs think that you always have to get the, the chipper or the pitching wedge out. But no, you can actually use the putter as well. Whenever you get a flat uh, sort of uh, surface, then uh, try and use the putter. At least you're sure. Oh, exactly. Yeah. I think what happens with a lot of our balls we've watched uh, on screen has been through the PJ Tour and the European Tour. And something that they do is they'll always show you the fancier shots that players pull off. And not realizing that there are a lot of shots which are mundane and basic and average. Like this one with Udyan Dale is a wonderful shot. That's a 10 on 10 right there. Absolutely. And then that, that's what required. At the end of the day, you have to score the lowest. A smart play there. A um, few others who did not uh, make the cut this week. Uh, Vikrant Chopra, very consistent player. Uh, Dipanka Kaushal also would have needed a big week here. Unfortunately, uh, not making the cut, uh, has been playing rather well. Indian Open champion, C. Muniapa, former Indian Open champion, not making the cut. Abhijit Singh Chadda, long hitting golf golfer from Chandigarh. And a uh, few other names that uh, could not quite make the cut this week. I think disappointing for Prakhar Asava as well, being the local lad, uh, this being his home course. Yeah, rather unfortunate as we get back to the action. And we have up and up a little over the hole, a little down and up, this one. Yeah, this is a good part to have for birdie. And want to make as well. Yeah. Downhill parts um, are good on these screens. They're not rolling too fast, but they're playing true. So fairly makeable if you can put a good stroke on it. And that indeed does uh, put a good stroke on it. The medal medal is from the Asian Games. A lot of pedigree. Playing that early in the day as we have a look at Cullen here. Cullen is a straightforward part from what I can see. He's, he's flag iron number two. I think he can give it a good whack. That's a really good tee shot by Cullen. Good distance control here on hole. Let's see if he's rewarded with the birdie. Oh, that was bur bur burning the edge. It was heartbreaking to watch these parts and. Uh, but we've seen uh, seen a couple of holes, and for those of you joining us now, I would highly encourage you to actually go and watch these players, these golfers play live because uh, very impressive with the things they can do with the driver and the putters and the wedges, and always a treat to watch them. And for those who cannot go and watch them in person, we are bringing you the live action. And got an update: uh, Syed Sakib Emma has played three holes, and he's two under par. So, getting off to a fiery start, the kind that you need if you are to win this tournament. He finds himself at six under par. Still a fair distance away from the leader. As we have a look at Udyan. Looks like a fairly short putt, but Udyan is going through the motions. Has done the routine. This would break a little to his right. It looks easy, but uh, it's never quite done because you have to sort of leave it outside the hole. These are. Uh, one of those uh, parts for the right-hander that are a little uncomfortable. Just leave it outside the edge and trust that it'll break back. Yes, and then, uh, also given the distance of the part, it looks like a three or four footer. These are more tricky also because you expect to make them. That's a good one, right in the heart of the hole by Odian. It's a steady start for him. Yeah, par, par start, uh, not too bad, as long as you don't drop any shots. But this seems to be this kind of golf course but even if you have a slowish, sluggish start, as long as you're not dropping shots, there's an opportunity where you can finish strong and shoot a low number as well. It's going to be a putting contest as well on, on the last two days. You see that 
there's a lot of traffic uh, in the red numbers. There's so many players under par. Everybody that's uh, made the cut is under par at this point in time. Apart from one, Kevin is the only one who's dropped a few shots. Otherwise, you have a total of 54 players under par. So, you know, the rate that they're going, the tournament um, could be one in the vicinity of 18 or 19 under par. As we have a look at Amardeep Malik. Yes. Uh, I think I'm going to coin a talk from his missing assistant because... He's just been there. Uh, every time I've watched the coverage, he's being shown because he's always there around the top five top consistently through the weeks. Yeah, Amardi playing alongside uh, number three on the order of merit, Mr. Sachin Bisoya and uh, American Varun Chopra. मिठाइयों की डिलीवरी चल रही है सीआईडी की प्लानिंग डिलीवरी नहीं बेटा सब अलग-अलग बैंक जा रहा है ऐसा क्यों बिजनेस बढ़ रहा है ना बेटा एक ही बैंक से काम नहीं चलता चलता है ना एयू करंट अकाउंट पे सब मिलता है वाह मामू सोच बदलो और बैंक भी मेरी सी एयू स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक बदलाव हमसे है He's uh, committed to a cricket game with us on Sunday. So, looking forward to catching up with him as well as we watch it deliberate. Seems to be standing rather far from the ball. I see that uh, also the toe end is a little up. So, that's something that uh, is rather different as opposed to other players. Maybe a more rotatory swing, that's for sure. Not that up and down. He tends to be more around the body, keeping the club face that far away from the body. Now, we have Gaurav Pratap Singh, that's swashbuckling. Cool. Aggressive, going hell for leather every round that he plays or everything he does actually. Bullish even in the market. He says, I only know one way to live my life. <laughs> That's to live it with the pedal to the metal is Gaur Pratap Singh's uh, motto. I think we've uh, made an error with the age. He, he's more like a 19-year-old than a 39-year-old. Absolutely. He's, uh, as they say, he's... Uh, 39 going on 19. Yeah, he's certainly got the energy for it. If you if you do have a chat with him, you'll understand what you're talking about as he takes an iron on the first as well. I mean, with the rescue, it's uh, the ideal choice here for Gaurav. Be carefully looking at it. He's one of those players who uh, plays a left-right fade most of the times, so if I'm not wrong. Yeah, really good uh, left-right fade. He really gets into that shot, puts a lot of hit on it, has that uh, shaft lean with the left wrist. And uh, someone that I'm really impressed with is Karthik. I've seen him on the range and he's thoroughly impressive, especially if you see him hit drivers. Very consistent, a good length of the tee, very athletic player, you know, 23 years old. Only 23. And uh, if I think he's, he's also part playing on the Asian tour, part playing here. You can see he stays down and really goes through with the golf shot, doesn't really get out of it. What I mean by that, maintains that spine angle is his. Uh, it's a really good ball striker, is Karthik. Really chases the golf ball. He's somebody who could be a good cricketer. I think you can recruit him for the next few matches. He, he has that athletic look about him. Always love a few left handers in the team. I'll talk more left handers. Uh, I was in your team, but I was often just made to bowl and uh, wait my time for batting. I think uh, we'll, I'll have a few complaints regarding the cricketing as we go on further in the day. But uh, there are a few similarities between this game and uh, golf. We saw at uh, the Grand Thornton, uh, you know, I had the opportunity of speaking to some of the legends and uh, how they're enjoying this game. And uh, we're thankful for the support that uh, they give this game. and. Uh, the fact that golf can bring so many different uh, sports together. As we have a look at Ryle, walking down hole number two. That's a brilliant shot by Ryle. A brilliant shot by the veteran. And, oh, the, probably a better shot by uh, Rohan. Yeah, that would have good, looked uh, really good in the air. Would have pitched somewhere in the vicinity of the flag stick.
reading the line there that's important uh, you do your work when the others are putting kind of save time good to see harinder gupta taking his uh, sweater off the weather is probably warming up it would mean the dew is going to go uh the dew is going to dry up soon and the ball is going to start traveling a little better a little longer always more fun it's very intrigued to ask um, i think it's important that uh, the first time that my co commentator is a genuine long hitter is somebody who, who carries the ball well over 300 yards um, how do you find early mornings for somebody who is the medium hitter i know that early morning tee offs are one that we never prefer because the body does not quite react the same way we have a look at rohan this putt should break a little left to right for rohan dohle patel give it a fancy chance cuz he's made the first uh, he made the putt on number 1 as well and we saw that uh, this putt is indeed makeable we saw abhinav lohan making one from uh, similar territory just missing it on the right hand so i'm saying that early morning we find that uh, the connection with the ball is not the same you tend to get a little bit of um, a vibration of the club face as well early in the morning you're not hitting it as well the ball doesn't turn right to left in the morning and you know the first few holes are never you're not striking it as pure even if you warmed up is it the same with a longer hitter how do you find the difference playing early in the morning and then you sort of getting through the round or is it uh, you know the added length does it make it easy for you in the morning just tell us a little bit about that I think personally, I feel if you're trying to gain a little extra distance, um, if you're the sort of player who it's a long, because you have to make a lot of effort, you're going to struggle. I think, fortunately for me, distance has been very easy uh, as we watch Harinder Gupta, the very makeable range. Should break a little from his left, and seems to have got it. Uh... Left it. Leaving it in the jaws, never up, never in. Unfortunately, that'll only be a par for him. but i personally haven't ever struggled because uh, when you're when you naturally hit it a little further than let's say the average distance you don't have to make a lot of effort even in the colder mornings when you're not used to hitting it um you you you're hitting it shorter but at the same time you're still further away than the players who are playing alongside you how do you find the difference in your ball striking early in the morning as as compared to how the day wears on like you you know you're blessed with natural distance i know that you hit hit it far you have that swing speed But do you find any difference? Uh, your ball? Do you see the difference in curvature? As we see, Rahul just missing that putt. Uh, do you see the ball? Uh, does your ball flight change early in the morning? I think, as you said, it becomes a little tougher to get that draw working in, especially because I, I play a draw naturally. But I think your the release and the body they tend to be a little slower. So that's something uh, that. But you know, now given the exposure with the amount of uh, warming up and techniques, you sort of feel on the first that you're as ready. Um, so you watch Mana on number one on our feed uh, too, since he flag around the left. But but you are right. There there is a slight difference, and those are the elements that you have to play with also because the difference is sort of uh, understanding how to score when you're playing golf. when the temperatures are lower than let's say 5 10 degrees as compared to when you're usually playing golf around uh, in the north at least most of the year we play there of temperatures higher than 35 37 degrees so there is a difference yes yeah valid point so you, you got to cater for different uh, climate conditions and weather conditions and uh, some of the players are really good at that i think wedge game becomes more difficult yes indeed does and we spoke about uh, dew being a factor you know uh, dew being such a big factor especially in cricket <laughs> it's uh, probably the opposite in golf in, in cricket dew probably comes on uh, if you're playing a day night match in the second half and we saw the world cup that how that became a factor and obviously in in golf dew is a factor probably in the early morning holes where the ball doesn't quite react the same way that you'd want it you don't get that roll with the driver So warming up is key if you have uh, an early morning tee off, and uh, somebody who has warmed up uh, seems is uh, Gaur Pratap Singh. I'm surprised he's wearing something uh, to begin with. Also, he's just always warmed up, always ready to go, always ready to go. Yes, Gaur Pratap Singh uh, pitching it next to the flag. You see, one thing that uh, he didn't quite get the purchase that you would imagine with the short club. They still rolled about 15 feet by. That's one yeah. of the few things that happen early in the morning. You won't get that grab on the green, so he would have uh, hit a really good shot, but didn't get the kind of result that he would have expected. Which is what we've been talking about because 
we watched Harinder Gupta with his wet shot. He had a little spin. Uh, and he probably was expecting to roll it out a bit, which is why he dropped a little short. Of, here we saw over the flag, which probably would have uh, struggled with a little water between him and the ball. He have uh, got We have the notables in the field. Amartip Malik at uh, 6 under par. Kalin Joshi 5 under par. Arjun Sharma player from Gautam Budhnagar at 4 under par. Divyansh Bajaj from Kolkata 4 under par. Anga Chiva multiple winner on tour at 4 under par. Sri Lanka's K. Prabhagran at 3 under par. Sukra Bahadur Rai from Nepal at 4 under par. As we have a look at Dhruv Sharon on the tee. Another boy from uh, Gurgaon. I think time does fly by. Dhruv has turned 29 and <laughs> I would imagine him uh, to be in his mid-20s. But that's what they say. You've been seeing him on tour. Um, he's been a good player. One of the better ball strikers, but uh, you see the, the amount of traffic in terms of talent that you have. And talking about talent, there's none so more than Shan, who also seems to have uh, advanced in terms of age. Obviously, that happens. Time and tide wait for no one. He's 45 now and does have his struggles with distance. I did have a conversation with him. Uh, just trying to do the uh, things right and see how he can still compete on tour. Yes, and as we watch Pokhraj, he's never struggled with distance, sure. But Shamim Khan is one of those players who makes you look uh, silly with a three wood in his hand. He's probably more accurate with a three wood than you know, a lot of guys are with their uh, wedges. Yeah, this is um, going to be a tale of uh, trusting styles, this group. You have uh, Dhruv Sharon, also a longish hitter. And then you have Pokhraj Gill. It was an absolute bimoth in terms of hitting the ball. I would think that uh, him and you are uh, similar in terms of the way that you play the game of golf. Yeah, but we both agree that I hit it further than him. Then that's more important than anything else. <laughs> is, so. it, is, is it an inside <laughs> joke or are we talking uh, strictly academically you are hitting it further? Because if you can hit it further than Pukraj, I don't know where the ball is going to go. I've seen both of you hit it and it's uh, very difficult for me to point out who hits it further. He also has an unbelievable amount of carry. I've seen him hit some huge drives and as he got back to Gaurav Pratap Singh, this but uh, he's putting off uh, a different level altogether. It seems quite a few feet higher than the flag or maybe that's an optical yeah. illusion. No, well, usually screen, but he does seem to be coming off from a... Yeah, it's a little downhill. And he's uh, definitely not got the correct line. We'll have some work... Um, it's barely out of the pattern, really. He'd have to be a little focused on that part. Yeah, these are the ones that you really don't want at any well, point in time. Especially, yes. At any point in time. You know, the three-footer is uh, the nemesis. Anything from three to six feet. You have to focus on the line, the speed. And, and, and you have nothing to gain because you expect it to make them. And you always prefer a seven, eight-footer. You can Absolutely. hit them a lot more relaxed. Uh, you don't really expect to make them. If you hit a good part, they tend to go in. And, um, you know, three or six-footer, you tend to get a little more tense. And line and speed become um, more of a factor. Yeah, because it is interesting. But the thing I was uh, listening to is uh, forgetting someone on the PJ Tour. And they were talking about their power parts. And they said, even though you're making a four, let's say, uh, it's much easier in the mind to make a tap in than, than a four foot of a bar and then moving on to the next tee. God of uh, Comfort he makes his bar number one. Rechecking the line, perplexed by the break, maybe. Not quite sure, not quite sure what Karthik is looking for. <laughs> <laughs> there doesn't seem to be much in this. That's what happens when you're very methodical. Uh, uh, everything that he does, uh, you know, that, that part, uh, maybe all of about um, 
11 or 12 inches, maybe under a foot. And uh, not quite sure what he's looking for, but that's golf. It's also the interesting side of golf. Uh, players like to do it different ways. A lot of players are quick off the bat. Given it a lot of thought. Good for him getting that in the hole. Well, the tap in range you give it a lot of thought. It also, also makes the viewer nervous that there might be something here. You don't want them to miss it at all. Exactly. As you want the pro tracers of uh, our professional golfers, rule number one, comfortable start for Manu there. There won't be much suspense in these. Uh, should be right down center. Fairly straightforward hole. What's surprising is that it's a short hole, but uh, there's no impediment uh, per se. It's a pretty wide fairway as well. So there is a bunker on the right hand side. Is there an opportunity to maybe drive on the green roll? Or, uh... Uh, there are trees there. So, so the trees, so, yes, and they're right in the line, of, uh, and they're probably where you would hit up for a long hitter. The trees are probably at about uh, 310. Green would probably be about 320. So it's a reachable hole, no doubt about that. But uh, you would have to contend trees, so maybe, and, and there's out of bounds on the left hand side. Oh, I don't mind such a movie, you know. Um times when balls are fairly wide, it becomes more of a driving contest because the longer it is probably a couple of clubs shorter coming into those greens, but over here everybody is laying up to a similar spot. So then yes. it comes a, the approach is then similar for everybody and then it's a good showcasing skills as well. It's a very fair golf course in that aspect. It tends to take the driver out of the longer hitter's hand and uh, then if they do that's uh, Sachin making that part there. If they do end up uh, taking the driver, then they have to be ready for the risk that they're going to face. So that's what I really like about a golf course like this. It, it sort of does not play into one player's hands. You know, it's it's what they say. A lot of golf courses tiger-proofed, like Augusta did that by adding length. And it's so important uh, to build golf courses that can give the other uh, sort of older style players, you know, players who like to move the ball and, and not necessarily uh, just bludgeon it. I think that's what... Uh, you know, RNA and every USGA, they're trying to do that and, and get back that skill into the game of golf, not just make it bomb and gouge. The yeah. Garage with a wedge in his hand. But you're right, because that's the interesting thing with the golf course as well. It's it's not playing in any one particular type of player's hands. And uh, even if you watch the leaderboard, Garage coming short. Getting a lot of spin there. I mean, if you're about the leaderboard, you get Sattak, Manu, Amagraj, Akshay. These are not your conventional long hitters. They don't they don't hit it short. But these aren't the guys who bowl yeah. the golf courses. And Manu can get the ball uh, there. You know, he does. Yeah. I don't know if I have to call him a spring chicken. He does hit it quite far. You know, you would think that uh, maybe even by European tour standards, he would be an average length on the European tour. Yeah, I, th I think watching Manu play, he, he has that extra gear that he he doesn't usually use, which is a good thing as well, because you know that he's got that speed and power and required, and he's uh, usually playing within control most of the other times. You see this hole, that, uh, the third hole, which is uh, lined by out of bound on the left-hand side. And I've seen... Uh, Sort of this bush uh, and and uh, shrubbery and these trees grow over time. We saw at one point in time there was a fence. Now you're seeing that uh, you know these trees have ingrown into the fence and it just looks uh, so beautiful and majestic. There's a walking track uh, for people on the left hand side and flanked by that big public park as well. So uh, really a unique setting is uh, Jaipur Golf Club. My apologies, Rambal Golf Club. You watch uh, Alinder on the left with a little bit of wrist in his putting stroke uh, had for a few years now. And uh, Dhruv seems to have missed the green dust and I think he's, he seems to have short-sighted himself. We can't see the golf ball between a lot of slope as well. And uh, not too bad. Not the most difficult of shots because the rough is uh, not a factor this week. Like um, we see the defense of the golf course kind of thing. Like he, he shot at himself and they made a 
chip shot about uh, six feet and he's got a par putt left on a hole which is only 340 yards. So now to our viewers as well, all those scores and the scores that we're watching coming with the players and uh, some of them are, we're going to see some of them today as well. Um, it's not because the golf course is an easy track because we've seen some big names, some uh, winners this year missed the cut as well. I think it's just the quality of the players as well. That they're taking advantage of, uh, advantage of some of the easier holes and playing the other tougher ones uh, well and not dropping shots there. The standards have obviously been increasing. There are many uh, that can be attributed to that. The cut uh, going at one under is testament to that. I think years past, I remember the cut uh, used to go six or seven over here, and that's how golf has changed. You need to be playing your A game if you are to make rounds. Pokraj uh, almost close to his A game on that, but is leaving it a little short. I'm missing his on the left as well. Not sure uh, if for a birdie or a par. We'll, we'll soon update the viewers. So, Ainesh, I just want to ask you on a personal front. Have you been playing many tournaments? I've seen that you've teed up uh, in quite a few. And, and what are your plans? Uh... I'm not sure. Personally, I, uh, I don't have a wrist condition. I had to withdraw from Jammu for the same reasons. And uh, I'm just giving it a little uh, break. I do, I do practice a little bit. You watch Sanit reach on top, being off on the first. We got a smooth swing as well. Yeah, yeah Sanit is a watch though. Strong ball striker is Sanit Bishnoi. Prayer plans are uh, not sure. Still seeing how recovery goes. A little bit later, we'll love to take it up uh, at the qualifying school and be on the other side of the cameras as well. Sanit already a winner on tour. Fiery player. Sanit playing alongside Ravi Kumar. It's on your screens. Ravi Kumar going on the other side of the tee box, which also is an interesting ploy how players use different sides of the tee to suit their short shape. And Ravi Kumar, a 28 or 28 year old from Chandigarh, he's uh, having a better second half of the season as well. Ravi Kumar at 50 section on the order of merit, so has secured his uh, playing rights and also that spot in the lucrative season ending tour championship. As we have a look at Aman Raj. Unmissable hat of Aman Raj hailing from Patna Golf Club Bihar, uh, winner three times. He's, if I'm not wrong, won twice this year, so he's, he's also hit a purple patch. Yeah, Aman Raj paying homage to Shingo Katayama. With this similar hat, looks like a cowboy who's landed on a golf course. Seems to be uh, going through some sort of wrist condition. Seems like the flavor of the month. Seems to be going uh, stronger. It's a comfortable short swipe. Not too happy with it, but. Uh, Oh, this is not a comfortable side to see. Sanit uh, playing a provisional. Maybe he's uh, hit it out of bounds on the left, as you mentioned, or he's probably close to it, unsure whether he's in play or not. And surprising that even Aman was uh, looking on a little pensively. Seems like both of them have tugged it to the left. You really have to be uh, hitting this shot a uh, good 30, 40 yards offline to hit an OB with an iron on this hole. Never quite seen that, to be honest. You haven't <laughs> Might have miscued it uh, early on for Sunday, but uh, let's hope that he finds that golf ball. Yeah, I always try and do that. My love for the game is really strong. Unfortunately, it's a one-sided one love relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a sort of ends at the Q school, but no, I, I, I will definitely be going. Although I've not played at all, but it's just fun to keep the competitive juices flowing and to get an opportunity to play a professional tournament itself is, is a lot of fun. I think have a look at it. 
Yeah, I think it's a unique sport. You don't really need to retire per se. You can, uh, you know, you can decide to just uh, still be in touch. And you never know if you play well, play a few tournaments as we have a look at Gaur Pratap Singh giving that uh, too much steam in that instance. So. But then that's a sign of confidence going past the flag. It's always easier putting back rather than leaving it short. Directly with his personality. Players like he is. Aggressive, always looking to score low. Yeah, I remember back in the day he used to uh, have an end field and on the back of it uh, he had uh, emblazoned uh, Sheriff. So, you know, that's the kind of personality Gaurav Pratap Singh has. He's the sheriff in town. Let's see if sheriff can make a few birdies today as we have a look at Sanjeev Kumar, uh, who's two under par today. Uh, a lot of birdies early on for uh, uh, Plus Chandra, gold medalist at the national games, Pranav Madrikar, Rondole Patel, all of them making early birdies. You see my and Manu over the hole as well. We know that this part is makeable thanks to uh, Abhinav. Made a similar part of this and and then I think one of the overboard a little there, but good on speed. I think overall, um, fairly benign condition for the players. No wind. The greens are uh, pretty friendly as well. Rolling at a comfortable speed. Rough is up, not up either. So not much in terms of challenge for the players this week. And that's evidenced. Uh, by the low numbers, by the entire field, I'm certain that nobody's complaining. That's an entertaining, uh, that can often be an entertaining week for the viewers as well, when you have so many birdies on offer. Yes, and even if you have opportunities to make birdies, the players do it with their uh, high skills. It's always fun to watch them. Make those parts and hit those approach shots close and hit those uh, impressive tee shots. Watch Karthik from a, probably the easiest spot on this range part from under the hole. Gaur Pratap Singh. Uh, we saw him with that uh, aggressive putt. And now we'll have this. Uh, Try and make it far. A little bit outside his comfort zone, maybe about seven feet by. Well, that can happen if you live by the sword. Sometimes you have to die by the sword, so we'll see. But these are the most, uh, you know, those five, six footers, eight footers so far. They're, they're momentum parts. Absolutely. Making them or missing them as you watch one of make his part and uh, comfortably does so. Making them or missing them has more of an impact on your mind than on the scorecard. Yes, it's very important to make them though, and um, he's done that rather comfortably as Gaurav. As we take a first look uh, at Varun Chopra, now we have on our screens uh, Sachin Besoya. Closest pursuer to Om Prakash this week in the field as uh, Karan Pratap takes a week off from over here. And uh, Om Prakash surprisingly has missed the cut this week. So interesting times ahead. The order of merit Om Prakash would have wanted to sit this week and create a fair distance between him and his pursuers. But Sachin would like to have a say on that. And you watch him deliberately taking his stance, swiping the dew off the putter face. He seems to have underborrowed, and as we watch uh, approach our first on our live feed number two. For anybody joining us now, it's a lovely morning. We're bringing you the coverage, live coverage from Jaipur. And uh, this is the Bhavani Singh Rathor presents Jaipur Open 2023, powered by AU Small Finance Bank. We're watching golfers play day three as we watch 
Sanet on the right side of your screens, pitching it out on hole number one. As we saw him hitting a provisional of the first, we're assuming that's his first shot that he managed to find. And Varun Chopra screens on the left. Little four footer comfortably in the middle of the hole. As we're moving on the day, day three, we're getting closer to the leader group and our uh, you watch Amar on the left side of our screen. Seems to be with a three footer, shouldn't be too much trouble, but giving it a careful look. And he's made that uh, comfortably. Moving on to the next one as we watch. Sun is now taking careful aim as well. Not the most comfortable of lies, seems to have been on a little slide downhill, which probably helped him because the ball had a little release as well. This is Tata Steel and this is an idea. So what happens when you join them? Something remarkable, like the material of the future. Fiber reinforced polymers that goes beyond steel, that is high on strength and corrosion resistance and is cost effective. A material that will be used in foot over bridges, the insides of railway compartments and electric vehicles as also an infrastructure for smart cities. Tomorrow is shaped by imagination and steel. Tata Steel. We also make tomorrow. This is Tata Steel. And this... Seems to have taken a confident swipe at it. Content with the result. Making way for Manu. Manu, as we all know, the order of merit winner from last year, the PGTI, the number one golfer in the country, took his straight open door uh, for a year, has come back to pay a few events, and uh, always special to have a golfer like him, the 27 year old from DLF Country and Golf Club from Gurgaon. Also taking aim with seems to be a rescue, a hybrid club in his hands. A quick recoil, quick uh, pick up of the tee. Always a good sign for golfers. Content with how he hit his first shot. And as we watch Saptak Talwar, the man everybody is chasing here on day three. Saptak sits pretty at 11 under par, had a wonderful two rounds of golf. He hails from the JP Greens Golf Resort in Greater Noida. Only 24. Yet to have a win on tour, but that soon will change. He'd hope it changes this week itself. Confidently going through his routine. Has an iron in his hands. Takes a full swipe at it, uh, looking at it a little longer than he would have preferred, but moving off the tee shouldn't be too much of trouble. This is us covering the leader group for you now. As we have an update on squad, we've got these guys. Sane taking aim on uh, number one, which I would assume is for his par. Uh, Syed Saqib Ahmad seems to have a... Seems to have...
meme seems to have uh, hit it a little right and a little over the flag in the bunker on the par three and I wouldn't be too impressed with that bunker shot. Maybe the lie wasn't the best to begin with. As we now have uh, Aman Raj carefully measuring his birdie part. Aman Raj has begun his day at nine under par, only two adrift from support. So a winner twice this year, he'd, he'd like to have a say for that trophy by the end of this week. And he gives it a comfortable roll, makes his birdie on the first, and he gets straight into the work without a problem at all. Dushran making a putt on the par 3 should be content with that as we watch Shamim and Pukhraj take measure of what they have to do. Sanit left himself uh, what looks like a 3 footer. He makes that. He'd be happy to move on to the next one. We'd uh, uh, update you soon on what he made on number 1. Taking the putter out, we know Shamim, even though it's a little off the green, he'd definitely fancy a chance here, especially knowing it's for par. Both Shamim and Caddy taking a very careful look at it, trying to pinpoint exactly where the roll should be. Yeah, it's Caddy, Gulu. Has uh, been a trusty uh, man Friday since quite a while. Both of them have made a it for his part as we watch Subtek on live feed number two, our current leader. Take a swipe on number one. I think he's left it a little short. Interesting to note that uh, Shamim Khan still leads the money career earning list. Impressive record. He's at uh, 4 crore and 69 lakh from 287 events. He's, uh, he had a fantastic record. And about 1.7 lakh per event. So shows you that uh, whenever he tees up, he does mean business. And followed by the legend Mukesh Kumar. Surprising, you'd always think that uh, Mukesh would be ahead in that list given that he has had so many victories. And Rashid Khan has uh, at 144 events already at 3.6 CR. The similar comparison between Sachin and Virat, you know, Rashid not taking much time to climb up uh, on that ladder as we have a look at Manu here who now plays uh, most of his golf on the DP World Tour. Yes, and Rashid is one of those uh, quintessential fearless players. You can only see the flag. Always wants to make his parts even if he's feet away. And Manu uh, with a decent jab at number one, leaving himself under the hole. A little longer than what he'd hoped for, but it seems to be the exact range from where we watched Aman Raj make his birdie. So. I think players are wary of going over that uh, flag. Don't want to be faced uh, with that uh, tricky up and down. So, tending to throw caution, not throw caution to the wind. And uh, we have a look at the career earning uh, Chika Rangapa. 
I think he has a better earning uh, rate than even Rashid Khan. He's only played 98 events and is at 3.11 CR. So it's only a matter of time before, uh, you know, they usurp Shamim Khan. But it just shows you that uh, the younger generation also has a lot of money to play for. Uh, mm-hmm. So that makes a lot of difference yeah. as well. I think if you adjusted it, then uh, there would still be a little gap between Rashid, uh, Chikka and Mukesh and Shamim. Because Shamim and Mukesh have had a very, very coveted... Uh, you know, it's, uh, if you look at this list, you look at Om Prakash Chauhan there at number five. So, you know, he, maybe he's won close to about eight or nine events. There are a few other players who come to mind, maybe the likes of Ashok Kumar, who you would think that, you know, they'd be higher up. But it just goes to show you he's that. Kind. If you look at the number of events played by Om Prakash, interesting that he's almost played as many events as uh, Mukesh Kumar and Shamim Khan, which also goes to show that uh, Om Prakash, I think, has really jumped up the ranks in recent years maybe not as much early on in his career because he's been in the most hot form of golf in the recent past as anyone else and i think uh, playing a lot of tournaments um, is also a testament to his fitness you rarely see him waylaid by an injury or uh, out and that's a big uh, factor when it comes to having a good career is that uh, as you have a look at karthik and you don't miss too many events owing to injury it's a little underboiled there, but actually that's a good uh, topic of contention. There's a lot of younger viewers watching golf and maybe if you're listening to us, fitness is also important because if you go higher up through tours, uh, you, you need fitness just to travel and just to have your body ready to play golf. And then obviously you need to be fit to play golf and maintain uh, your health and your body and everything. But travel takes uh, a lot of toll, especially uh, if you look at uh, all the guys who play on the Asian tour and if you go higher up to the European tour and maybe if you go higher up and play on the PJ tour, like guys like Anirban, Gaganjit Bhullar, um, Shubhankar Sharma, the amount of travel and the toll it takes on their bodies just because they have to get from point A to point B, it requires a certain level of fitness as well. As we have a look at that uh, multi-screen view on hole number one and also Gaurav Tap Singh visible on the third green uh, one thing that um, you have to think if you have to draw a parallel between cricket and golf you see that virat kohli and uh, ms dhoni rarely missed matches uh, in their career because of an injury i think i read a stat that virat has only missed two matches Absolutely. owing to an injury so that shows you the level of fitness and strength you require uh, to be an elite sportsman so playing a lot of events in itself is a testament to your longevity and then the more shots that you have chances of playing events you're eventually going to get there. And uh, like you, you can see a lot of direct fitness required in cricket because the explosive nature of it. But golf has a different toll on your body because these are players, uh, uh, including uh, yourself when you were playing uh, highly competitively week in, week out. You're producing crazy amounts of speed and accuracy, turning around uh, the spine of the body, making a golf ball... Uh, go a fair distance and also the direction and line, the hand going through that, uh, uh, the impact through the ground, through the grass, through sand. It, it takes a lot of effort. And as you watch Manav making a lovely stroke there. He made that look pretty effortless, but you're right. Uh, this is, uh, fitness plays such a big factor. Just to, just to show up every week, you know, let alone how you play, it's important that you compete. As they say, if you're not going to buy a ticket, you're not going to win the raffle. So, um. Manu now in hole number one, we watched his approach coming a little short. Attempt for his birdie. I won't uh, be surprised if he gives it a very, very fair chance. You know, you've traveled with uh, Shubhankar quite a bit on the European tour, being a good friend of Shubhankar. Uh, you had the opportunity of uh, being on his bag and... Uh, carrying for him on the big European tour events. Um, what is something that you have seen in, in terms of uh, ball striking from Shubhankar? And if you compare him to uh, the other European tour golfers and you compare them to our players, what are some of the key takeaways that you have for our viewers who think that uh, European tour is, is DP World Tour is obviously the pinnacle of golf, but where would you rate some of our better players? I think... Uh, um, I know a lot of Shubhankar's journey also before uh, I went to watch him uh, play on that tour. I think he's one of those guys who's 
um, as we first would watch Akshay Sharma. The part that we saw that uh, Pratap. maybe a little bit of a different line, but you see that change in elevation. But I think if anything, Akshay is a better putter. He's a very good putter and he gave that a run. run. He left himself this sim uh, similar part to what Gaurav had. But going back to uh, the conversation about Shubhanka, I think he puts it up uh, quite well himself. He says, I've always tried to be a student of the game and um, he's always trying to learn, always trying to get better. Even currently in his off season, he went uh, to the US to work on a few things um, on his golf clubs and on his technique to see how he plays in different wind conditions and different grasses to get better. And um, I think some of the guys that I watched out on the Indian tour, they definitely have the game to compete there. When it comes to just pure skills, I think uh, a lot of golfers are not far behind. But to execute it where it matters and to execute it in those conditions, I think that's just something that takes experience and um, that can only come if you just keep going higher up and you keep putting yourself in those conditions. Yes, yeah, so I think uh, one of the motivating factors is going to be that opportunity to finish number one. Saptak now would love to make this putt with a little tricky length, but he'd love to start with the power, calm those nerves down because this is fairly new territories for him as well and comfortably does so. Akshay now. One of the more impressive things I watched this year is actually Shorya was uh, um, I watched uh, Shubhanka play a few big events, uh, including the Masters. And this year I got to watch him at the British Open. And uh, we spent a fair amount of time there um, on the golf course as well. And Arjun Sharma was also there with me. We were there with his family. And we watched a lot of golf. And we watched uh, on our twin screens first. We watched Akshay. Tapping in, uh, what seems to be a four-footer, but yeah. uh, he made it look easy. Yeah, very confident putter is actually. That's uh, he's one of the few putters on tour that uh, you know gives you that. When you're watching him, you get that positive energy that he's going to make that putt. It's a lot about body language, the way he lines up. Absolutely. Uh, you can actually decipher a lot about how a player is lining up to a putt. He always is very assertive. As we have a look at Rohan. Ravi Kumar. Yeah, my apologies, Ravi Kumar here. But you're right, I think a lot of golfers, you just see when they stand over the ball, whether it's for a drive or a putt, you're just like, they're not going to miss this. Sometimes there's just this energy yes. that the players have. You're quite right about that. And I think it goes to show why Akshar Sharma has just been knocking on the door for this, uh, especially the second I half of the season. I, I think it's uh, across sports. You can feel that as a viewer and somebody as a connoisseur of the sport. Uh, uh, you know, it's almost perceptible. You can see it as, as, as um, you know, what they say, the zone. You're getting in the zone, you can see players. Some of the players find it so much more easier when you when they're standing over sort of uh, uh, precarious parts, maybe four to six feet, which are breaking one way or the other. There's a certain confidence in the way they go about it. Even when they miss it, it um, doesn't seem to irk them, or you know, they're, they're, they're certain that they have done their bit, and that's where you need to. That's the level you need to aspire to. It's not always about how good you play; it's also about how you play the game with confidence. I because more there. golf is, um, we have a look at. Uh, I think being professional golfers ourselves, sometimes we we do get to see the difference. Uh, as we watch Amon Raj from both the hole, it seems to uh, have left it a little short. I missed it on the other line. On the left side, we've seen look, quite a few miss it on the right. But uh, eventually, it's also about how you play the game. You know, being somebody who's sort of. Um, been more meticulous and deliberate and taking his time, it tends to take a toll on you. And you see some some of the other players where it feels so effortless and, and they're sort of accepting the result. That's so important. How you play the game is more important than how well you play the game. Eventually, it determines the outcome. I think a lot of golfers struggle from uh, working on the game too much and the mind takes a backseat, not realizing that golf, I think, of all sports, is probably the most mental as well. I mean, you require a high level of skill to be good at it to begin with, but to have the execution, especially week in, week out. The caddy pointing towards the right edge of that cup. So according to the caddy, this ball should break a little bit to Sanit's left. Let's see if he has given him the correct line. 
He has, and uh, Sanit has executed beautifully as well. Sanit, a bit of a shaky start, one would assume, but he's one of those players who gets in hot and can just turn a golf course on its toes. Do you want the pro tracers? Number one. You saw the ball come coming in a lot flatter for Shamim Khan. Raj with uh, that left right ball flight that he favors. Raj also tends to hit the ball really high, but uh, maybe on this occasion going with the stinger of the tee. I think Aman Raj is one of those. Uh... Amanda is one of those uh, confident players. He's at, a, he's at a point in his uh, golfing career where he's having fun with the sport. Yeah, that's so important. Enjoy the game of golf. As you see, Pukraj. On hole number three. So players tend to play off to the right fairway here. Avoid the out of bound and then uh, maybe have a nine iron or a pitching wedge for the longer hitters coming in. That's a good run by Pukraj. Pukraj also found a run in form uh, recently. He's very finicky, very picky about uh, golf clubs, always uh, wondering, figuring out the science of how things work, the biomechanics and the different weights, different uh, flexes on the shaft. It's a lot, uh, it's very interesting to actually have a chat with him and uh, he can go on for hours and hours and hours and uh, I've enjoyed a lot of those conversations with him and uh, quite a golfing family as well, two younger brothers, both professional golfers as well, one of them in the field this week, unfortunately he's missed the cut, but quite a quite an interesting jovial young man, Sukrat Singh Gil, uh, he got Dhruv Sharon, made a good one on the previous hole. Leaving the flag in. Sure, what do you think of the row? Oh, he's uh, no, yeah. <laughs> he had a little 360, but as long as they go in. Yeah, I uh, personally uh, don't quite prefer to keep the flag inside from 10, inside 10 feet. Uh, tends to impede upon the line that I tend to take. Uh, it sort of confuses the eyes, especially if you're aiming outside the hole. And um, a lot of players do prefer it. It... it uh, I don't think it has any advantage. You're not going to be hitting it that firm that the flag will aid it. Uh, maybe beyond 15 feet, it makes sense because it can be used as a backstop. What about yourself? I think I'm there with you. I, I, I prefer the flag out as well because uh, visually for me, it just feels like the hole's cut in half. Exactly. The hole looks smaller. Yeah, the hole looks smaller and it is quite small to begin with, especially on days when you don't have the top of the greens. Uh, for somebody that uh, it always looks like a bucket, as Shamim Khan. He's made a living uh, off that putter, as Shamim. Well, you know, it's an inter interesting question because you've, you've played a lot more golf than I have. You've played on tour for a lot of years as well. Uh, there, there seems to be some guys who just are better putters consistently over a period of time compared to everybody. Like you said, Shamim Khan is all that. Mukesh Kumar comes to mind as well. Um, is different because there are so many elements to putting as well like reading the green getting the speed right and making the stroke but is there something that they just do better when it comes to reading the green or they're just more confident or their approach is just such that they just happen to make more putts than everybody else i think that um, i often thought of uh, there's a certain player that always does well on the putting green and you can see it um, by the feel and the hands i know that's not too simple to this all the time, but you can see it on a but on a practice screen. Uh, you can see Rashid Khan, you can see Shamim Khan, uh, a Mukesh Kumar. There's something different in the way that they line up, and that that actually boils down to repetition. So you know, a lot of players players don't really uh, give that much uh, preference to technique in terms of putting, but um, whatever technique you do use, it must uh, produce a consistent. So these players have actually done that a lot better than the others. They are sort of conventional in their putting style, maybe a little bit of a forward shaft lean for Mukesh Kumar. But if you look at all in all, uh, their putt methods are not uh, using cack handed putting technique. They're not using longer putters. They're very traditional. So what they have done, they've been conventional in their putting style. 
they've been consistent over the years and they have a very good repetitive path so that reduces the stress stress uh, side four feet so where a good partner will actually shine is inside four feet and that enables that he can be a lot more aggressive from 10 15 20 So they make a lot more putts and because that confidence from within like four and a half, five feet, they're never afraid to go for the putt. And uh, so if you're always searching for a stroke or trying for a new technique, changing your putters, yeah. maybe, you know, uh, trying a claw grip and so on and so forth, you'll rarely ever see, if you look at it, the best putters over the years have been the ones who use consistent technique overall because they've never had to switch. And on the other sure hand, what they do. on the other hand, you'll see that players who, who are struggling, they'll go with the lower hand down and whatnot. But the most consistent putters, you'll find them with a consistent putting grip because they know that the path is always repeating. And they do the basics really right. I've seen Rashid Khan, I've seen Shamim Ling goes uh, sticks down, yeah. you know, for that path, putting those tees. They they do the basics and they do them really well over and over again. And guys we're talking about usually, if you look at them, uh, are they they're far from uh you know, the textbook kind of putting, even though they're conventional. Like Rashad I've seen with his uh, toe up and uh, Harinder Gupta for existing his stroke. But they do it uh, very well most of the times. You watch... Uh, he seems to have done a very good job of that, actually. But, uh, you know, coming back to your point, obviously there'll be some uh, improvisation in, in terms of toe up or standing too close or... But all in all, you'll see that it is still, you know, the conventional left hand up, right hand down, uh, sort of putting. Very rarely, the only one I can think of who's a very good putter with the lower hand down is Anirban Lahiri. Yeah. You know, hand down, but he's always been like that. I don't he's remember him. Uh, even when we were playing golf, I remember him uh, using that technique. So that's maybe something that he started off with. So it, it shows you that they really have that path narrowed down. They'll have bad putting days, but they stick to it. But that's the difference. It's, it's still about making sure strokes, whether it goes in yeah. the ball or you have a great day or a bad day on the greens. Uh, funny story, actually. Uh, I don't know if you'll appreciate me sharing this, but uh, I was recently playing, uh, I think, uh, as, as recent as two weeks back, he was playing in South Africa. And he calls me up and he says, uh, uh, what's your money? Make different, this. different line on this one. Team. The first time we've seen somebody on that side of the green, a little further to the right. No break. The two part region where you'd be comfortable making two strokes and moving on to the next. Yeah, but if you put stroke on this, uh, might have a chance because this would break a little from right to left. Uh, there's not much in terms of line. If you're Manu Gandas and a multiple, multiple winner in one season, uh, you'd give it a shot. Almost. It's a good one. Signs of a good confident player. See, that's since you, you'll see that it's, it's almost except to see a good player on a putting green. It'll always skirt the hole and go feet by. And on the other hand, if you're not sure if you're hitting those parts gingerly, they'll sort of trail off one way or the other. They'll miss by a larger margin. The eventual, uh, you know, the radius to the hole might be the same. You might find him three feet away. But the way that a confident putter will always be going for the hole. And that's how they make more birdies. Always giving it an opportunity. So it makes a lot of difference. Uh, and I think not many people understand that it's, it's a big difference. It's a game changer is uh, how you part and how aggressively you can part. Just over the, uh, just off the green, but under the hole. So Similar line, similar line to where we saw Odian. A lot easier though. This is um, birdie territory for him. I think, uh, do you think Satak might... Uh, have a few nerves going on, given the situation he's in. Um, maybe, but it's still the third day, so it's not the final day. I'm pretty certain that he won't be feeling much. If it were the final day, you know, it's, it's sort of uncharted waters, then you could still understand. But he's, he's made uh, he's, he's made quite a few cuts and had good finishes and does often shoot low numbers. So the third, third won't really be feeling it. And he's also playing alongside friends, so it's it's not he's not going to be overawed uh, by the situation. Um, definitely not going to have any nerves running into this round. This is very familiar territory for him. Yeah. So you're telling us that story about um, 
Uh, Shubhankar. <laughs> so he's playing a tournament in South Africa, and Shubhankar is one of the formidable ball strikers, one of the best ball strikers in the world, uh, to be honest. And uh, watch Akshay Sharma cleaning up comfortably. And he tells me that, uh, you know what, I figured out what I was doing with my putting and I'm going like, to stick to this. And he goes left hand below right. right. And uh, first day of the tournament, he goes, he plays a, a decent round. And uh, he's like, you know what, this is very sorted. I'm doing this right. My release is happening this way, that way. He's very confidently sure that this happening. By the end of the tournament, he calls me. He's like, I'm done with this. <laughs> I don't want to do anything with this grip. Uh, I hate it. I'm going to go back to what I was doing. This is not working for me. So that that goes to show how much more impressive someone is if uh, they've had a consistent putting stroke in grip through years. Because even the best players, uh, certainly the best Indian golfer, one of the bet better Indian golfers in the world, Bosch, um, is unsure of his putting stroke. Yeah, that obviously, there will be times, uh, there will be sort of peaks and troughs. Even Tiger Woods went to a mallet putter. You would never imagine that he would change that uh, uh, sort of blade putter that he had. So that will happen. But, you know, on the whole, they will be, uh, you know, their stroke will be pure, you know, because they have high expectations as well. And golf... Um, Life with Vedika, always full of altitude. Chair as well, but he's tried all putting techniques. You know, uh, now he, he's comfortable with the mallet, but you never know. You know, it, it doesn't give you that feeling that he is going to hold that putt. And that's primarily because when you switch so many techniques, nothing is really uh, grooved in. And if you, sometimes it's also innate ability. God doesn't give you everything, especially the golfing gods. You can be a good ball striker or you can be a good putter. Rarely will you find somebody who's a great putter and a great ball striker. You see Rashid Khan as we go back to hole number three. Rami Kumar, uh, quite a long attempt for his, uh, what I would assume is a birdie attempt. Somebody that comes to mind is is Rashid Khan, uh, that he's a fat, exemplary putter. You know, that's the part of his game that stands out. Uh, he, he's a very consistent iron striker. He has control on his ball, but not he. He's not somebody who's um, who's not some that the ball is really coming off the face with that sound. He gets the job done in terms of an iron striking, but he's just uh, making a living on the putting greens. He's, he's very good on days uh, with his iron striking, but not that's not what he's known for. And, and then you look at somebody like uh, Ashok Kumar, who was just a ball striking machine in his heyday. Fantastic, yeah. long driver. Uh, you know, he could hit those three towering three irons and that ability that he had. So it's, it's very rare that you have everything going for you. Shamim Khan, on the other hand, has been very consistent as we have a look at. Uh, well, under the hole, seems to be a five, six footer. Yeah, five, six feet. Uh, not much mystery here, I think, and just uh, line it up in the middle. Yeah, well done. You know, I think also with the, the better ball strikers, I feel the downfall on the putting greens is because of the ball striking, because uh, I've seen a lot of these guys, especially uh, having watched, obviously, Shubhankar very closely, having watched uh, players like Rory, and all these other guys on those, you know, the world number ones and the world top 10 players. And um, I think the problem is that they're so good with the ball striking that they have more opportunities to make putts as well. Exactly. So they also have opportunities to miss the putts as well mm. in comparison to guys who may be hitting lesser greens, fewer greens, and they're chipping it up close and making pars. Ramon Raj cleans up on uh, hole number three. And you I made a, you've made a very uh, valid point. It's not uh, putting also is uh, sort of precipitated by the way you strike the ball. It has everything to do with it. Oh, you know, the putter can only jail, bail you out of jail a few times. But if you just can't hit the fairways <laughs> and you're always struggling with uh, eight, seven footers for par, that pressure will grind you down. So if you're a great ball striker, you, you'll see, you'll have really good days of putting and, and then you're more uh, 
circumspect of your putting because you have a lot more opportunities. You're seeing the parts that are being missed because you are being faced with a lot more birdie parts from that range. I think this is which is why you watch these guys when they have the putter running because of their ball striking. As Ravi Kumar cleans up as well. Um, you'd see these guys go low. They, they're not shooting four, five under par rounds. Then. They're shooting eight unders, nine unders, exactly. ten unders. Because Shubhangar, when he won uh, in Malaysia, he shot a ten under par the final round. And his ball striking was the same as every other day. So he made more putts that day. It's the same when he uh, uh, won the Tour Championship uh, held at RCGC. Uh, when he had a duel with Rashid and he shot Nate under par in the first round. He holds the course record at DLF at eight under par as well. It's it's just the ball striking is always there. It's just about making putts on that day. And uh, most of the days when you get a few more opportunities than other players, purely because you strike the ball better, you're also going to miss more putts. And then that can play in the head because you yes. think that you're missing more putts than making them. Whereas you're just hitting the ball better. Yeah, you'd rather have that issue though than struggling for up and down and trying to, you know, that's why I always say uh, kudos to Shamim Khan. He has uh, our respect uh, as a player and uh, even as a viewer of golf because, uh, you know, he's not bestowed with uh, that uh, prodigious length of the tee and yet he's able to go toe to toe and dominate. Uh, so that's, that's really fascinating. Even Mithun Pereira, somebody comes to mind, you know, he, he played well at the uh, Grand Thornton Open and we had that conversation, you know, he's hitting. Uh, he's hitting three words from 210 yards. Imagine how uh, difficult that game is. I mean, to watch players at seven, nine, six signs from 210 is impressive, but to watch players at three words from that distance. And... Beautiful drone shot of this uh, wonderful city. Pink City, what it's called. It's uh, fascinating. So much history, heritage here, uh, royalty. And uh, this is a state to visit and, and a city to visit if you are indeed uh, an avid history lover or even just like the game of golf. There's so much to do here in Jaipur. And um, as we have a look at that beautiful shot, we also want to talk about a few of the tour partners, uh, Tata Steel Group, Amrutanjan Fruitnik Electro Plus, Bisleri International Private Limited, Vedi Himalayan Spring Water and Rolex. And uh, a few pointers about this event. Bhavani Singh Rathor presents Jaipur Open 2023 powered by AU Small Finance Bank is the 19th event. And also the last full field event on the 2023 Tata Steel PGTI season. And uh, it's important for a lot of players who are on the bubble. What do I mean by that? Uh, players who are in and around the 60th position to try and secure their place because they want to play the lucrative season ender. The three crore tour championship presented by Tata Steel, the tour championship. And this tournament carries a prize fund of a one CR. Mr. Bhavani Singh Rathor is the presenting partner for the tournament, and AU Small Finance Bank is, is the tournament sponsor. A little bit about uh, the presenting partner, Mr. Bhavani Singh Rathor has his origins in Rajasthan is a professional golfer himself and has played a few events on the PGTI, holds a law degree from Oxford University and was also part of the Oxford uh, golf team. Quite the honor to have, uh, quite the achievement to go with and also quite the uh, honor for the players to be presented by such a person. Yes, uh, love for the game of golf runs deep. And uh, leading professionals in the frame, Manu Gandas, former champions Kalan Joshi, Aman Raj, Shamim Khan, Sachin Besoya, Rahil Ganji, Udi and Mane. Quite a, quite a constellation of stars, the only one missing. Unfortunately, Om Prakash Chauhan who's missed the cut. He would really be feeling left out of the party. But that's the nature of the beast as we have a look at Manu Gandas on hole number three. We watch uh, Sampachari having a careful look at the group as well. Oh, that's going to be a very difficult one coming back. Seems to have caught a flyer there. That happens when there's a little bit of grass underneath the ball and uh, you can't quite gauge that. It's going to be a very difficult up and down. I would be surprised if he seemed to have been on the fairway, but he's left himself a very, very tricky third shot. That's a big drive right there. Maybe a little adrenaline for the leader. And sometimes a very good driver of the ball. 
I'm surprised that they're all uh, hitting this fairway. In years past, they'd uh, play the fairway adjacent to it uh, in order to um, sort of negate the out of bounds altogether. But as you can see, he's only about 10 or 15 yards from that fence on the other side, uh, lurks the out of bounds. So it also shows you that the players are confident. Or in years uh, past, you'd see players try to hit it or hike it over those trees and play on the other side. Maybe the trees have grown a lot taller. So that option is uh, no longer on the table. Well, also, these guys would be the more confident players this week in the field, given how they're performing currently is Saptak takes a swipe and... That's a brilliant shot by Saptak. That's how you get it done. Absolutely. Showing uh, the multiple winner, Manu. And we've also gotten an update that uh, Saptak is indeed sharing the top spot with Aman Raj. Let's see if he can uh, run one shot clear now. And some of the others out on the golf course uh, having a good day. Uh, Syed Saqib Ahmad, 300 par today. Pranav Madrikar, Udyan Mane. And Rohan Dhole Patil, 200 par. Dhruv Sharon, based out of Gurugram, also at 200 par for the day. And 9 under for the tournament. So, a low scores uh, in the offing. Absolutely, we just started there. And Dhruv Sharon has uh, also had the fortune of playing a little cricket with me. One of the faster bowlers had a quick start today as well. Yeah, I didn't quite know that uh, Dhruv is also taken to the game. Absolutely, I'm trying to convert everybody. Uh, yeah, we've seen that uh, you know your team is uh, uh, quite the one that uh, everybody wants to spot in it. <laughs> uh, cricketers turning to golf, golfers turning to cricket. It's uh, it's always a good thing to have more than one sport in your bank. Yeah, it's it's a good sport to uh, keep yourself limbered up and keep your fitness. Just avoid getting hit by that ball. <laughs> That's the only thing. I think. Uh, uh, Cricket team misses the quicker ones that you throw, you know. I still remember <laughs> the stumps flying out. <laughs> that was the good old days. Don't but yes, be sir. fooled by the grey hair on Mr. Shorya. He's <laughs> quite the quickie when it comes to um, cricket. You know, I, I played a few, um, quite a few matches after that, and uh, with with a few of my classmates uh, from my MBA team, and they would all only give me bowling. <laughs> I would get, I would bowl well, but I would always yearn to bat. But it's very difficult to get to bat, and you know that's the thing in cricket. No matter how well you enjoy bowling, but you really like to stand and bat. I know the lusty sixes you hit. Um, talk about sixes. This is where that uh, Manu Gandas would need the touch of a surgeon and not the brute strength of uh, a power hitter. It's a very difficult shot coming up. He's, uh, he's, he's chipping into the green and not much green to work with. Uh, what do you think is a good shot from here? I think a little depends on the life, but uh, even Akshay Sharma seems to have short sighted himself and hit it onward. Maybe the referee there. Has, <laughs> you know, that's what happens. Case. Sometimes the referee is there and you get a little bit of uh, adrenaline that uh, I must move a little faster. I know that feeling. I think I would have, I, I would lob it up directly on the green because I think the greens are quick, but they're not lightning speed. Uh, to make sure that I don't leave it short. And put it well, back. A very difficult shot given the fact that it's nestled down. I would think that... Um, he seems to be putting it in the back of his stance. Yeah, I would think that anything within 15 feet is a good shot. Just give yourself an opportunity for par. Don't want to drop more than one shot here. With a lower shot, bump and run and... Uh, He's left it short. I was... It's an unfortunate uh, soft bounce for him there, you would have expected. But that's what, what happens when yes. you sort of... That's one of the only defense on this golf course is that you can short side yourself uh, if you get too aggressive. No, we got a charge on our feet number two. But I think with Manu, as long as the ball stays up, uh, after that approach shot, a bogey would be something that you won't mind. You know, sir, so talking about your time on the European Tour alongside... Uh, so many other other players and I want to know that in, in terms of distance of the tee, is there anyone in Europe who would be hitting it longer than you? Longer than me? That's a genuine uh, question. There be, there be, uh, yeah, because... Yeah, I think... I think I and, and it's not... Uh, I mean, I, I know you, you don't need to be humble, but uh, the fact that I want to 
just uh, tell our viewers a little bit about uh, Ainesh's background. Ainesh is also a professional golfer, and uh, he's, he's probably the longest hitter that I've seen in my life. Uh, he's been a professional for a while. I, I know that you hit it long, but you're having difficulty control the 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 way the um, the direction it goes. I know you've sort of struggled with accuracy of the tee, but as far as pure distance and striking ability. Rarely have I ever seen uh, somebody hit that drive. I think you carry it good over 310 yards as we have a look at Manu here. Just slides it by. So where does the distance taper off? Because, you know, you see it on TV, you see Rory McIlroy and, and, and you know, you see it's, it's long. And, and I think of some of our long hitters, you, uh, Abhiji Chadda, Veer Alawat, and, and I'm sure there's so many others, uh, Mari Muthu. In, in terms of length, does it get more than that? I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I've I've watched. I can speak for myself. I don't think I'd be. I don't think I'd be the longest there. I think there'd be a few guys, very handful of very few guys. If you watch Ravi Kumar, be number two comfortably makes his part. So he's having a decent start today. Yeah, good part there by Ravi on hole number four, the par three. This par three plays uh, to about 190 yards with the center flag. So you see a lot of players going with a six sign. That's a fair distance. In Akshay, as we see on our left, and Sanit on our right. Sanit seems to be having only seven and eight footers today to contend with. You see how Akshay putts. I mean, it's 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 almost craning over the putt, but he's looking to make the putt. Look at that. It's his body language. He's extremely positive when he's yeah. putting. He, he's looking. There's a difference, you know. There's a putter who's hoping to make the putt. You know, when you're from five feet, you just sort of hit it and you hope this one goes in, and you're a little scared of it. But there's another one who's a lot more confident and is actually looking to hold those parts. And that's the difference I feel on the green. That can make a world of difference. Yeah, I think as a viewer also, you're a little more sure of um, Akshay when he's standing over the part. Sun slides it by. Unfortunate miss for him. You know, something that comes to mind is Bernard Langer when he had those yips. You know, you'd watch him on TV from uh, when he missed that part in Ryder Cup. Uh, you see him from three, four feet. And there was a time that he couldn't hold anything. So it, it's perceptible to the viewer as well. You can see the nervous energy. Stop like it, uh, got a little uh, left tuck of the t-shirt and under his arm. And and there's a lot of wear on the center of that putter. <laughs> there's a lot of wear in the center of the putter. So you know that Saptak is a good putter. Tell me you're a professional also without telling me you're a professional. Yeah, that's a good one. Fantastic putter. You see, he's a confident putter as well as Saptak. All those hours of putting means. He, he'd be happy with that body. Yeah, so coming back to our discussion, there would be a few that uh, you're saying would be still wrong with the view. Bryson definitely post his uh, extreme transformation into wanting to hit it uh, further than everybody else. Um, Manu for a Cleaner for more transformation I've seen Manu over the years. He, he's definitely beefed up as well. You can see that uh, you know the arms are a lot more stronger. There, uh, you can tell that uh, you know he, he's carrying on power of Packers. That's why he gets that ball there. But yes, there won't be a lot of guys. Uh, I, I I do hit it quite far, and even guys like Veer and uh, Abhijit Chanda, they they'd be up there with a lot of the guys as well. But you know, I think that that's where the conversation gets interesting because. The average distance is quite high to begin with, and uh, uh, it's not that you can't play if you are hitting it shorter. But it's not even a it, it's not even an advantage. It is something that's practically almost needed now, as we watch Gaurav Pratap with his pre shot routine on this part. Gaurav Pratap Singh here at um, hole number five. So first look at hole number five. Can you describe what? Uh, yes, yeah, so, sir. Um... I'm seeing this so all. Um, little... Oh, oh the look lovely at that! Part. Yeah. It's a beautiful no, card. Brilliant part by Gaurav Pratap Singh. What score is he at currently? So Gaurav Pratap Singh is uh, currently at five under par. This hole number six. My apologies. The par three. So slight change uh, that has been made. This par three. This there's an addition of this water hazard as well. So you normally going in with about a nine nine. Oh, okay. 100 and 150, 60 odd yards. In the foreground, you can see the players waiting for their turn to hit as well.
he'd like to emulate what uh, Gaurav just did and he scrapes it by a little burn on the edge. He would have loved to make that. He's got a serious look going on with that dark sweater and his uh, shades or spectacles. I'm not quite too sure what they are. Don't be fooled by the godfather looks. He, <laughs> he, he like any other person, enjoys a dab at a, at a little gold guppa. He's my chart partner. Yeah, it looks very now. Has a very serious disposition about him. He's uh, uh he's surprisingly one of those uh, kids who's very nonchalantly funny. Um, you get you receive a few of his texts on WhatsApp, and he's hilarious and a good person to hang out with. Clean Talk about uh, somebody who's hilarious. I must uh, give a shout out to uh, our friend uh, Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Flag winner of Indian golf uh, when it comes to comedy. Yeah, I mean, good, uh, good slapstick comedy. Kushal, a very good golfer in his own right, and a good cricketer, and a very jovial character to be around. So, Kushal, if you're watching our broadcast, uh, good, hello, and good morning to you. So, there's been an addition on this hole on hole number six that uh, hazard there, making this hole a little more difficult. It was a very accessible green at one point in time. So, now you shot at the golf course. You know what they say about golf, uh, golf is a good walk spoiled. <laughs> so you can well imagine that when you look at this uh, sort of quaint setting, nice, benign, uh, no wind, just enjoy your round, but uh, it never quite works out like that. You always think that you're going to enjoy a round of golf, but as soon as the competitive juices start flowing, the disappointment uh, sort of goes hand in hand. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, I think for the most part, golf is like uh, a constant stress management. I mean, even the better players, uh, I'm not saying they don't enjoy it, they are always under stress, but uh, as we take a look at the leaders of the year, actually, this season, Om Prakash Shohan sitting pretty at uh, the number one spot. Quite a fair decision between He's him. broken a record as well. He's already had a record prize uh, money. He's at 1 crore 13 lakh. He's already, uh, unfortunately, he's not going to be adding to that tally. Sachin can get closer to him. Sachin currently sitting in at 800 parts, so maybe he is still in with a shot to win this tournament. If he can get to maybe about 80 and then be in with a mathematical chance because the final event will uh, give the winner close to 45 or 47, 48 lakh. We'll, but there's a lot of money. So you can usurp Om Prakash Chauhan, but I think it's not going to be easy. There's, yeah. He's uh, not going to be, he's going to be smarting from this uh, miscut this week. And I'm certain that he's going to come out all guns blazing. He'll get that card on the DP World Tour as well. Kind courtesy, his Absolutely. number one position. So. Uh, you'll have, and I personally feel he is the best iron striker on tour. He's the most consistent. If you look at him, his, uh, you know, his, his, he doesn't miss much. He's very solid in the way that he plays golf. Maybe not the longest, but he's a he's a devastating force. He's he's almost akin to Mukesh Kumar in his prime. He's very consistent, very solid, left to right, and a, a little longer off the tee than Mukesh was yes. in his prime. And I, I think that he can actually hold his own on a tour like uh, DP World Tour. Absolutely. And I think he's, uh, he's had a little experience on the Challenge Tour as well, which means that he knows uh, a little bit of the conditions that he's going to face. And but I think that's what happens also for guys going on uh, such new conditions, very different people, very different cultures, going through that entire process takes a bit of... Uh, time getting used to it and I think that's that's a challenge in itself and uh, I think golf is something that these players are so good at that if they play in those conditions long enough they're going to adapt um, regardless of uh, where they are in the world. I think it's these other factors that they need to get used to. Keep giving yourself more opportunities and talk more opportunities. And there's one to get yourself from uh, the jaws of defeat and try to make fun there. From that. Feel a little too much green to work with, so you'll have to push it out quite a bit. I think you call that really well to work yeah. with, so it gets a little difficult, my shot, when you have a target to pitch it to from the bunker. On the other hand, when you just sort of bunt it out of the bunker, it's a little yeah. easier. It wasn't a very difficult shot. I think I think the lie was all right as well, but uh, just maybe the pressure uh, situation thing. But 
all three players seem to have not hit a very comfortable shot. Yeah, this is not the easiest of holes. Uh, it plays to about 185, 190, and it's a pretty small target. Uh, the depth of the green is not that much, uh, neither is the width. There is a slight OB on the left hand side. Visually, there's there's a short of the green, so it's not an inviting target. You can't quite uh, roll it up either, pitch it up. So you have to hit a high shot and um, no, no space to miss it, so as to speak. It's one of those uh, challenging holes on the golf course then. Yes, par is a good score on this hole. This chip shot would uh, have liked it to be a little longer than that. We'll have some work to do. And for those of you joining us on uh, ABP Network, we'd like to tell you that uh, you're watching the Bhavani Singh Rathor presents Jaipur Open 2023, powered by AU Small Finance Bank. This golf course, the venue golf course uh, this week is Rambag Golf Club at Jaipur. And the format is stroke play. Your leader currently is Saptak Talwar at 12 under par, being followed closely by Aman Raj at 11 under par, Dhruv Sharon at 10 under par. And there's a tie at fourth position between Manu Gandas and Akshay Sharma. I'm your host, Shorya Singh, joined alongside my co host, Ainesh Alwalia. And we're we'll bringing you the third day's action, which is today as well as tomorrow. This is the penultimate event on the Professional Golf Tour of India calendar for 2023. It's a big event, this one. All the stars have descended upon Ramba Golf Club. You have uh, American Varun Chopra, who's leading the international charge. On your screens on the left-hand side is Akshay Sharma. The player from Chandigarh, multiple winner on tour. And you have Sukrabahadur Rai, K. Prabhakaran from Sri Lanka, Kevin Steve Regal from Andorra, Badal Hussain from Bangladesh. So you have a total of five international players who've made the cut this week. And uh, the Professional Golf Tour of India will also have its qualifying school in the month of January and February. This will be played over multiple qualifying stages, culminating into the final qualifying stage, where you have a total of uh, approximately 40 cards for A players, A category, and then maybe another 30, 40 for the B category. So at the end of the year, you have top 60 players on the merit list and ties who earn their A card position 40 to uh, 60 to 100, get a B card. So they get a uh, few tournaments depending on the depth of the field. And they must return to the qualifying school as well. So uh, being in the top 60 is imperative for a lot of the players. Pukhraj Singh Gill on your screen on the right hand side, putting for his birdie. On the left hand side, you have Saptak, our leader, putting for par after that uh, errant tee shot and uh, that underwhelming bunker shot. We'll have this turning from his left to right. Unfortunately, he's going to drop a shot and he'll find himself in with in with a tie with uh, Aman Raj at 11 under. Look at Shamim Khan in his electric buzzers. They both have the red and blue going on, quite fashionable together. Yeah. And definitely going to the same stylist, our uh, caddy and player. Look at that. Uh, as they say, easy like a Sunday morning, that putting stroke. Uh, Effortless as always. You, you see him hitting a driver, there's no effort. And obviously, he, the ball uh, also sort of... Uh, Tells the same tale, but that's how he plays his golf. Yeah, that's probably why he's been able to sustain his game as well. He's not putting a lot of pressure on his back. Yeah, it tends to just want to put the ball in the fairway and get it on the green and let the rest uh, happen. Manu doing a fair cleanup. After but you know, it's, it's, it's a very important point for even the weekend warriors to note that if you can just hit the fairway, you've sort of won 90% of the game, no matter how 
long, you hit it. Just hit the fairway, you get on the green, you'll always have a birdie part. That's things that a lot of golfers don't realize. They hit 10 fairways, we watch Zoof. Leaves it a little short. Zoof's having a better day on the greens today. Yeah, Dhruv Sharon uh, making three birdies early in his round is that under I think it's going to move back to the past. Could be a breakthrough week for Dhruv. A very affable young man. And um, had a difficult year last and the year before that. Sort of struggled. Had a dip for about a year. And uh, even earlier this year, it's now finally finding some form. That there's so much competition on top. Even if you're playing your B game and you're shooting sort of level par rounds, you're just it's just not going to be. You're just not going to be around. So it's uh, that's the nature of professional sport. You really have to be firing on all cylinders, and uh, only then will you be noticed. That's a big point now because. You could be playing good of course. In ko bhi a you se pyar ho gaya. Soch badlo aur bank bhi. A you small finance bank. Badlav hum se hai. That addition of that water hazard. Yeah, there you see the players limbering up. Karthik there. Shara, how was your uh, warm-up? How did you like to converse with your caddy before the round or during the round? Were you one of the intense players or uh, once you got to the golf course and once you started your round, you were just relaxed and let everything happen? No, I couldn't be relaxed. The furthest from it, you know, I, I remember that um, I would always uh, Try and reach there in time. The stress started even before. <laughs> you know, it started from the warm up itself. You land up there, and uh, everything seems so rushed. And then when I look back at uh, uh, you know my brief golfing career, I realized that uh, you know should have tried to relax a little more, took things too seriously, and that's what happens when you're playing professional golf. You take it very seriously, meticulous about you know hit 25 balls, and then have two parts, and then you know hit four parts from this angle, and and uh, so I was very meticulous in the way that I'd go about uh, everything. And the average. Well, what Dhruv seems to be laughing and chirping along with the first. But uh, I think that's the key. Do you think when you, if you, if you, if you end up uh, playing the qualifying in January, you're maybe going to approach it a little more relaxed now? Yeah, I think now that's uh, that's what's happened uh, since I've stopped playing full time. I really do enjoy the opportunities that I get, and that's the big difference. It's you actually enjoy the game of golf. That doesn't happen when we started golf when we were young. Uh, the primary reason that we started the game, as you have a look at uh, Sanit there, limbering up, stretching, so important, as you said, early in the mornings, the body is stiff, open up those joints, stretch the muscles, uh, is that you enjoy the game, that's how we started it, but, and you even enjoy it, as you have a wonderful moments there. That's my greeting between the players. At least you're a little less uh, lonely on your local door on the PGTI. The higher up you go, it becomes tougher and tougher. Uh, it's, it's one of the factors that you have to contend with also. I mean, Raj always looking stylish and resplendent. You know, I think Aman Raj uh, is one of those guys who's, uh, who's so able when it comes to having a great mind when it comes to sports because his general personality is just extremely confident and he transfers that into sport so easily and comfortably this was a shot where there was a look of consternation and uh, i think eventually he did end up finding that ball yeah he chipped out made a bogey on that first ravi there with that uh, Weird look that seems to be the flavor of the month uh, with that big movie coming in that everybody is aping <laughs> in that look. Did you get a chance to watch it? Yes, I did. I did. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart, I'll tell you that much. As we have a look at Amun Raj. Yes, you're right. I think he's, he's definitely put on uh, a lot of muscle. That's good to see. You know, there are players are spending so much time and realizing the importance of that. 
No, we don't realize he's uh, he's very popular in Patna. He's very recognized. He's uh, he's part celebrity uh, in Patna. His father also a former professional golfer, and uh, he he's coached Amin Raj throughout his life. So, uh, good to have a confidant like that. Yes, so I think uh, father's done a good job so far. Yeah, also a fantastic story, rising through the ranks, coming from humble backgrounds, and that's what golf can do. It's a great equalizer, gives such a good opportunity. Oh, one of the better things about golf also is that uh, um, yeah, Satak looking really cool there. Very calm. He's got a look of his own. It's such an individual sport that at the end of the day, what you do or don't do depends entirely. There is no scope for. Uh, no politics or anything at all. Yeah. That's the only thing. That yeah, it kind of cuts both ways, to be honest. <laughs> Sometimes the team sport you can get shielded Absolutely. by the performance of others, but here, yeah, they right. has a little bit of a pause, does Manu? They all do it differently. And that's what impresses me the most. It's uh, every player has such a different way, such a different mind, such a different approach, such Good. different swing theories as. Well, good transition there by Saptak. You know, when you when you were playing golf and you were coming up, uh, not into the professional ranks, but early in your junior amateur career, how how much uh, theory around swing, biomechanics, or fitness was available, or was it a conversation that was uh, consistently happening, or was it something that? I think the only thing that we thought about was just go to our coach. And just work on a swing. I think biomechanics was not really there at that point in time. Um, club fitting options were also very few, far in between. And um, and you would normally uh, just order your clubs from abroad, and they would come in, and you sort of retrofit them. Uh, fitness was again very individual. Whatever you do, or there were not many people who used to do it. I used to try and go to the gym, but um, you know, to sort of sort sort of figure your own way out. There are not many like, resources. Look good aesthetically, and that's what fitness means. No, for us. no, for me personally, it was always I had this, uh, you know, all of my I had this crazy obsession with distance, and I don't know if gym ever helped in that. I definitely got injured my wrist in in the process, but you know that's something that I I always thought that you know if I have to play on the bigger tours, there's something uh, that that I need to get to that 300 level, but. I don't know, Jim, actually, I ended up losing distance, got stiffer. So, you know, yeah. it's it's one of those things that you need a lot of guidance. I think that's happened in the last 10 years. Price fund has increased. International golfers are coming. So it's a natural progression. You've seen uh, players who would probably be playing other sports, you know, the likes of yourself or you look at Pukhraj. Uh, you know, thoroughbred golf is lucrative. It uh, offers you an opportunity. You control your own fate as you look at... Uh, Hole number six here, Ravi Kumar is nice. just coming out of the hazard. It seems like he's on the front edge. Yeah, yeah strawberry just safe from him. Um, yeah, I've been lucky just yeah. skirting the hazard. I think it goes to show him even a hole which is not that long, more than three hours. There is still trouble. You still have to get a good, you know, good position. And we also have an opportunity to say hi to our viewers. Uh, yeah, please do reach out to us on social media to hear your thoughts and uh, what you like to learn about the game, which player is your favorite, should we come to your golf course, anything you want to know about uh, the game of golf. It's At the end of the day, it's you who made it possible. It's, uh, you know, the more you talk about the game of golf and uh, the great thing about the Professional Golf Tour of India, wherever we go, golf is free to watch. Absolutely. And... Uh... I think a lot of the guys who follow golf, who maybe started or are thinking of starting, if you know some of these players, maybe they play close to you, they live in the same city. I think all the golfers are very approachable. You have a chat with them. They're very eager to tell you about the sport and uh, why it is so special. I think one of the things that I always said, um, you know, Instagram and, and social media is such a big thing. If you want to follow a golfer, just write golf after his name. You'll always find him there. And one unique story. Um, I've seen a youngster short up is really good golf and I just saw him short underscore golf because I've already taken short golf. 
<laughs> I'm like, uh, I've beaten you. Uh, so that's, you know, there's not much imagining involved in terms of those uh, social media names. So, um, but, but you see the younger lot, Chika Rangappa is one that comes to mind. Proficient in the way that he prepares for golf tournaments, uh, you know, puts in a lot of work in the gym, is meticulous and uh, really comes across as a stylish golfer. I'm, I'm a yeah. big fan of his, the way he plays and uh, very swashbuckling kind of style that he has. Naman Raj, uh, from similar range to Gaurav Pratap, and we know the result of that. He made that lovely putt on this very hole. And Naman Raj is having a good run on the day. He's, he's currently yes, I think he's got, he's got it. He's got it. Uh, is it going to be that day? Never when it comes to the man from Patna. I think that quick walk was not to take the ball out. It was just to go to the next team to make another bird. You see, when you make a putt, there's a certain amount of swag. See in the way he's uh, walking. He's got the moves of Mick Jagger after making that putt. (laughs) He's definitely got a lot of swag about him after making that birdie. Get that spring in your step. Son, I'd like to follow suit as well. And uh, he's almost on a similar line. He's almost, yes. And he's he's slightly closer. He'd he'd 100% uh, want to give it a good run. Similar line. Should break a little just to his left in the end. Much he's learned from Aman. Apparently oh, a lot. God, I've never quite seen that, you know. Wonderful student is Tanil. Good to see him roll one and smile on his face. Fantastic. Uh, this is the first time that we've seen uh, a sort of a duel under the sun. This is going to be that kind of day. Fantastic part. family is the... Indian version of uh, Minju Lee and his sister Minju Lee. Uh, son and sister Gorak also. If she's she, not wrong, she's also won the Order of Merit uh, uh, once or twice on the WGI. Wonderful call for herself. Uh, was caddying him last week. Last last week in DLF. You know, Ravi would, Ravi would be feeling a little lonely on that green right now, having seen both those players make their putts. And now you're struggling with your power putt. But that's uh, the nature of the beast. I think he'd be very content given where he was uh, with his first shot to get out of a bar to not mean the hazard. Well done. And, uh, as the day is progressing, we see a few more golfers, a few more putts being made, a few scores moving towards two, three, four under by as we watch on our screens, uh, Syed Saki Bema, then Pranam Madikar. Running hot on the day, both at four under par currently. Look at, golf course. look at that part, better than most. Definitely that territory, 25 feet. I wouldn't have expected both of them to make it. Not the best of tee shots they had. Uh, they were not quite hole high, 25 feet, but they made the most of it. And that's the difference. As long as it was in. So this group really made uh, good work of this hole. We take a look at uh, Amar. Uh, he must be feeling confident this week because uh, I'm not sure if you know or not. Uh, there's a fixed four ball every practice round. Amar Deep Malik, Angad Chima, Arjun Sharma, and Sudhir Sharma. And they play uh, every year, all tournaments, they play practice rounds together. They have a little game going on. Yeah, I remember they used to, uh, this quartet uh, was initially uh, Aditya, Ko- Aditya Rajkumar Chauhan mm-hmm. was a part of this quartet, but uh, maybe next year again. And uh, so this year, they, uh, uh, Sudhir Sharma and Arjun Sharma were leading heading into the practice round this week. And Amar and Angad managed to uh, oust them uh, by a couple of holes. So Jamshedpur is going to be. This seems to be R5, seventh, if I'm not wrong. This uh, looks like, like the seventh, uh, or is it the ninth? Uh, this camera angle is uh, not quite telling us the tale. And we're going to keep you in mystery as well. That's a lovely stroke by. Am I deep? I think this is uh, indeed hole number eight. For his little cleanup. Yes, this is uh, 
par five eighth hole reachable for these players. I mean, I was watching an interesting stat of uh, golfers through a couple of decades. Uh, I'm not quite sure who the players were. They were big players in the PG Tour. And something interesting in the stats was that their par five scoring is so far ahead of their uh, par four scoring compared to the field. A lot of these golfers are over par for the par fours, but they're so severely under par for the par fives, which goes to show even if the, you get most golf courses, you get three to four opportunities, uh, namely par fives to score on. If you can play the par fives well and uh, keep your game intact uh, through the rest of the holes, because par threes and par fours are slightly tougher most places. You know, I, I think um, that's where it, either you're an accuracy player or a long hitter. You can't be sort of a middle of both. Because if you're a good accuracy player, you'll make a lot of birdies and par fives. You'll get yourself to about 100 yards. And from 100 yards, you'll invariably make birdies at least 30% uh, of the time. So you'll end up making quite a few birdies that way as well. Because if you look at the makeup of par fours, like longer hitters might get wedges, right? But the guys who don't hit it that long, they'd be on the fairways hitting their nine irons, eight irons. But on most par fives, even if you're not reaching on two, your approach shots are you, you, you're hitting wedges. Yes. And most guys who are not long hitters are better with their better wedges. They have to be, otherwise they, it's it's difficult for them to compete. So even if you're not reaching in two, par fives truly give you an opportunity to score. And I think if you take out the stats for the tour here as well, guys who play the par fives better week in, week out are more consistent when it comes to leaderboards as well. I think you've uh, brushed up on a very nice uh, topic and then we can actually look at it from the stats let's see the stats that uh, we can come away with here speaking of uh, also my while we take out uh, some stats you look at the birdie leaders as we have a look at uh, rahil here at hole number nine the bird is om prakash chauhan so as I said, he's a brilliant iron striker, one of the best. Then you have Aman Raj. Karan Prat Aman Raj, not the longest hitter. Om Prakash Chauhan, medium length hitter. Let's have a look at Rahil. Then you have Karan Pratap Singh, who's obviously a little longer than uh, these players. So, M Dharma, again, medium to long. Mari Muthu, the only long hitter there at uh, number six. Kapil Kumar, Abhinav Lohan, Akshay Sharma, maybe again, you know, a little longer than medium. Little longer than medium. Gaurav Pratap Singh, little longer than medium. But Harinder Gupta, medium length. So it shows you that if you have accuracy, you can make a lot of birdies. And uh, let's also have a look at the eagle leaders. You would assume that this would only be the long hitters. I think Sudhir Sharma is going to be somewhere up there, as I was right. Yes, uh, Karan Pratap Singh again. So that uh, shows you that he's doing something right. He's a yeah. he's the birdie uh, second on the birdie leader list, and he's uh, leading the eagle stack. Fifteen eagles. That's a lot, and he makes the most on the final day. Huh? Six eagles on the final, always firing on all cylinders. Yes, Karan Pratap is one of the most aggressive players of uh, known when guys talk about him. Rohan Dhole Patel now. Rohan is similar to Karthik in the way he approaches his thing. He's, he's deliberate with his stance and his pre-shot routine and very carefully measured everything, every little movement. Slides by. It's a good aggressive putter. That's what I've seen. And as you have a Sudhir Sharma. Harshjit Singh Sethi. Harshjit, of course, he's, he's again, he um, is, is really long. Won that tournament, the playoff, he hit that green. He green, green yes, so he, 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 yeah, that was an absolute mockery of a par four, <laughs> what he did to that hole. <laughs> so it shows you, obviously, the Eagles uh, tend to favor the longer hitters. You see quite a few of them there. But as far as the birdies are concerned, so it shows you that it's possible. Harinder Gupta, 15th on the Eagle list. But not many, uh, you would not find any. But also another interesting thing that happened, like two players made albatross on the same day, uh, yesterday. Uh, Divyanshu Bajaj made one on the par 5 14th and uh, Varun Parikh made uh, one on the par 5 8th. Uh, 
two albatross on the same day, same tournament, quite rare. I think that would have uh, never happened. That's fantastic, seriously. Hole number 14 and hole number 8. We have both fades and the uh, Saptak seems to have missed it a little short as well, but over the water, so nothing to worry about. Leaves himself what seems to be four footer for par. Funny trend on this par three. Uh, is that trouble over the green as well? Because I see it's a few people leaving it short. Yes, it is. A, it's sort of an uphill green. Um, which is sort of perched up and has uh, sort of fall off areas on either side. So if you end up missing it, uh, especially towards the back, as you've seen, you tend to short side yourself as the green is about maybe eight or nine yards above uh, the ground level. So you expect uh, a difficult uh, chip shot, especially if you short, short side yourself on the back. So that's why the players tend to favor the front right. But now with the addition of that water hazard, um, Short sighting yourself, uh, short of the green is not an option oh, either. Please watch Akshay Sharma with a lengthy approach as well. That seems to be the trend today, though. I see it seems to be uh, something that players are doing. It's oh, that's a great a part. part. You know, whenever Akshay is putting, you know, that's going to be close. Is it a run? I really do admire the way that he puts. You know, he's he's gotten aggressive to the game. You don't have to be a long hitter Absolutely. to have an aggressive approach to the game. He's, he's a medium long hitter, but he has a very good aggressive approach. So when it's go time, he's always backing himself. Absolutely. And I think that's uh, that's also an underrated point. A lot of times people think aggressive would mean that you're just firing at all flags and you're trying to hit it as hard as possible. And uh, that's not usually what happens. A lot of the times an aggressive approach is hitting it 15 feet right on the flag and trying to pull that putt. Exactly. You don't have to always try to hit the flag uh, at all times. And and I think Manu's probably learned a lot of that on the European tour because uh, being on the bag with Shumankar uh, and watching a lot of the players, uh, sometimes it's the golf courses, sometimes the conditions, even the British Open this year, there are so many holes where you're after a three-wood or a driver, you're, you're, you're hitting an approach with a three-iron, two-iron. And uh, those are the golf courses where these players shoot five, six under pars. Like John Ram on the third day there shot, I think, a six or an eight under par, which, which to me was such superior golf. And it wasn't because he was trying to hit everything on the flag. It's just you're aggressive with your putts. You watch Manu, who's mostly aggressive with his putting. Oh, and look at that. Uh, you, you call it. No commentator's curse happening here. Yeah, not yet. Not, not yet. <laughs> not hopefully, yet. hopefully not yet. It, it, tomorrow. Eventually, it always comes around. They blame the commentator. Blame, oh, we just, we, we just blame, 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 blame the messenger. <laughs> blame the player for missing the putt. We, but want, we want them to make all of them. Uh, brilliant putt there by Manu. Few putts on this green we've seen. Yes, sir. Especially from the, uh, coming from the right, and everybody is favoring that because if you miss this green to the left, it's a steep embankment. You just can't make up and down if you miss the green on the left or the back. So the only place that uh, you can sort of miss it is on the right hand side, especially with the flag where it is today. Sattak would uh, not want to give away his par here. I'm sure uh, he's watched Manu, who's playing alongside him in. There might they, they, they must be leaderboard, they must be aware of uh, what's happening around him. Yeah, but I think it's too early for him to... And, oh. uh, the disappointing miss for him. For sure, one of those players when you were in and around the leaderboards, did you like to know where, where position you were in or what yeah, the was doing? To, to be honest, uh, when I was playing well, the only time I, I would get to around maybe fifth or sixth, the only few times I played the first leaderboard when I was third or second, Mostly my good play, I would think, was top 10. So I would never really bother about uh, where the winners were because I knew that I have to play my game. 
um probably if i was somebody uh, who was contending to win i never thought that when i was in fourth fifth position i was like let me just try and consolidate this uh so not me for sure i would just see that uh, you know if you are around the second third leader group just try and play a good round but maybe when i was an amateur when i won a lot more as a national amateur that time was different uh, but as the competition thickens when you turn a professional and yeah. you're trying to win a tournament you don't want to lose a tournament as well so i would just try more of a conservative strategy to ensure that i can finish in the top 10 karthik on whole number 8 going through his deliberate pre shot routine carefully that's a good part uh, when i do look back at my solitary uh, professional victory on the feeder tour i i remember that even that time i was just trying to play my game so for me even the amateur victories or the pro- sole professional victory just try and play your game but for players who are in contention a lot more i'm sure they think differently they sort of see it as a chess match i think maybe uh, it would depend if you're leading the tournament or you're maybe a stroke or two behind and you have a few holes left to see what you need to do maybe then but uh, because i remember uh, something and I, and i learned a lot from that uh, when i i was an amateur and i was playing a pro event at uh, classic and uh, um i was playing well and i remember I you had that fantastic finish here and what happened was uh, through the first eight i i started i was a little nervous i was hitting it well though i was i was hitting green i was hitting fairway so the nerves calmed down i was playing with rashid and the uh, good balls on the final day and by hole number 6 or 7 i thought you know what i can do this i can i can play against these guys but on hole number 9 um i hit my drive i hit the fairway and uh, rashid uh, took out a driver and he aimed it over to the first at itc so i never quite seen anyone yeah, doing that he he aimed it at the first he took out a new golf ball and he aims it there and he hits the first uh, fairway just over the green and i'm just thinking what is he doing what is what is he on doing? the 9th hole on the 9th hole he he does that and uh, and uh, the classic uh, golf course is my home course i had never seen the hole like that and he hits uh, his drive and it 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 goes to the fairway and i'm just wondering about him now and he hits his approach shot it's the bunker i think he makes a birdie while i hit the green and three putted so it and and i'm just consistently thinking about that as what do you think the, what do you think uh, the referee and and uh, what are not thinking there not sure because uh, he seemed if he's stuck behind the tree then he has to just play it as it lies but maybe there's something else that there's, there's another thing that's uh, he's confused about which we can't I'm not sure what that is Unclear on, uh, so just to that? tell you about the rules of golf, unless uh, the place is demarcated as a free drop, uh, the player cannot get uh, a free drop from uh, even if you don't have a swing and your ball is adjacent to a tree or stuck in a root. That is just what they say, rub off the green, and you have to play the ball as it lies. So that's what they say is uh, rolling with the punches, so to speak. Alvin oh, being kind enough to wave with us. I think he's calling uh, one of his playing partners uh, to be sure of what is happening, or maybe uh, asking for a second opinion, which also can be done. Yes. If you're un, if you're not satisfied with the ruling that you're getting with the first referee, you can always ask for a second opinion. These are the times when uh, things start getting a, a, a little slow because. Oh, well, yeah, I think that's going to be a slow player by himself. I think the referee has given his uh, go ahead. Sometimes you you know you feel that uh, you've been uh, you got you know the wrong rub of the green and you feel that you've been you should have gotten a drop or so so on and so forth but uh, as they say the rules of golf are meant to help the players but if there is no basis for a drop you can't quite get a drop so I think we, a lot of the times uh, especially in the moment we as players we we complain more than we need to yes. because you feel that there is something but uh a lovely referees on tour they're very yeah, the rules yeah, they're very informed 
that's the nature of sport as we see that being a referee is quite a job as we saw in the turkey ball league recently <laughs> a rather uh, unfortunate incident there but uh, no such uh, problems on the golf tour we do really do uh, respect and appreciate uh, our referees they are the back taking a full swing though i'm not sure what he was worried about uh, maybe he wasn't happy with the angle full swing at it Yeah, seems to have had a decent shot. Let's see where that ends. telling me that this golf course looks like a course which uh, gives the longer hitters a lot of advantage but he said like, you still have to score and play by accuracy once you get off the tee and that's testament to the players on the leaderboard because none of the leaderboard none more, most of the players on 10 top 12 aren't your quintessential long hitter there are a couple of them but they're not numbers yeah i kind of like that uh, we get get everybody in the fray as we look at amardeep malik It's a good part by Amar, but his clock grip seems to be working for him. You know, I think back in the day, you never see so many variations in in terms of grips. Amadeep Malik also a wonderful guy, a great personality to be around. Recently engaged, so fortunes uh, changing him, uh, changing for him uh, for the uh, congratulations to him. and uh, somebody who's uh, thoroughly engaged with the game of golf is not making birdies uh, for fun right now he's uh, 13 under par leading this tournament now leading the tournament by two shots over saptak talwar and dhruv sharon uh, he flop also on that dhruv sharon in third position alongside akshay sharma at 10 under par some of the noteworthy rounds out on the golf course uh, sanjeev kumar sakib ahmed Eagling hole number eight, both of them playing four under par today. Ankur Chadda two under and six under for the tournament. Uh, Victor Hans and Kapil Kumar identical uh, two under par rounds going on for them as well. And Kevin Estevir Regal at three over but an eagle on seventeenth. So a bright spot uh, in another gloomy back nine for Kevin. Yes. Now we the day with the the pack chasing Saptak Talwar, who started at 11 under par. He's, he's par for the day, but he has Aman Raj to now chase, who's four under par through the first seven under par start. And I think Aman Raj uh, is sniffing blood, especially once uh, Om Prakash is cut, because he has to have uh, he probably have to win this week and maybe as well to finish number one, but. Amaraj also one of those players who's had a little uh, twist with a few challenge tour events. He also would love to go back in those conditions and uh, that competition. So we just got an update between the discussion uh, that Arun uh, had with Zach about preferred life. So this week uh, the golf course is praying preferred life for the closely mown area. If ball is in the fairway or closely cut areas, you can. Get so that's what they were discussing so i think it not not uh, get a preferred lie and that that's be one of the times when a player is actually looking at a preferred lie maybe you get a club and improve your lie play so uh, on that instance maybe that didn't quite work but he had a short man to get to the green as such in uh, 
puts it past the hole. So he's got a few feet to contend with for his second butt back. We're tapping down uh, a few spike marks there, and after that long first putt, it'll be a cleanup. Still giving it a careful thought. Also, one of the more favorable rule changes of the recent past is you can uh, tap down spike marks, which you weren't allowed to do for the most part. Now you can if there are any blemishes, or you could always repair uh, pitch marks, but now you can tap down spike marks as well. That's a favorable change for golfers. This is Varun Chopra. Up, uh, less than a foot. As again, we bring the lovely drone shots, 360 view of the golf course and what surrounds around. And for those of you joining us, now we are bringing you live coverage of the Bhavani Singh Rathod presents uh, Jaipur Open 23, powered by AU Small Finance, live from Rambal Golf Club. And uh, here we are, Shwara Singh and Ainesh Alwale from the ABP studios we watch his distribution routine seems to be behind the tree so he'll have to manufacture flight Can't see his uh, golf ball, should mean there's a little slope there. He's looking through the trees, but unsure if he's going to go over them or uh, fight for the little gap between the trees. Uh, something or maybe the wind there as we now watch uh, a few more leaves rustling which would mean the wind is picking up always uh, more challenging makes for more interesting times doesn't seem to bother Raman Raj at all or Dhruv Sharon also four under for the day one with a little trigger pre shot routine oh, he's gone over the trees Black seems to be in the back edge of the green, which would mean that if you go a little over, you're going to short side yourself. So he's left himself a very good look at uh, 
So, Ainesh, uh, normally this is a time that we tend to pick one player that uh, would be either commentator to win the tournament at this point in time. Or rather, uh, you know, we just sort of uh, guess who would be. So, if, if you have to play on someone, who is it going to be? And I know scoring is still early. We've got quite a bit of golf. But who is it going to be for you? I've done this one before, but it was at the end of day three. And I got one out of one right. And uh, I think I'm going to go tentatively um, with Aman Raj. Yeah, Aman Raj seems like the safe bet because he has, he's, he's a proven winner. And, uh, you know, but my, I have a card that uh, it's going to be Dhruv Sharon. He hasn't won. And, uh, you know, he's on the ascendancy. And he has a good feeling about his game as well. So, let's see. As we have a look at uh, Karthik here. The South Paw. Both his playing partners on the green. He'd like to follow suit as well. And That's a good shot right there. Fully, actually. Probably the best shot we've seen today on this hole. Yeah. Really timing that release to perfection. I think my choice for Dhaman Raj would be also because he's one guy who's... Now are not going to be a factor. But also at the same time, he's... He doesn't defend. Even if he's got a lead, he's not one to say that I'm going to let the pack chase me and not drop shots. He's one to just say, I'm going to just keep making birdies. Yeah, I think now the way the tour is, uh, you need to have a sort of a paradigm shift in the way that you think. You, you can't quite let uh, the others falter. It's not going to be a race to, you know, it's going to be a race of attrition, a battle of attrition rather. It's, it's to win the tournament. You're not Absolutely. going to expect the other to sort of give it to you. It's also good to see Ankur Chadda playing well, 300 on the day. And for some reason, he skipped out on a couple of events, but uh, good to see him back playing and back in form. Yeah, really does uh, put in a lot of effort, does uh, Ankur. I've seen him on the rain, Gurugram, in different places. He He's uh, very meticulous in the way that he prepares. Absolutely. One of those guys who's uh, very strong on technique and uh, technically wants to be very sound. Gaurav Pratap from over the hole. He seems to be playing a little uh, aggressively, maybe even slight reckless aggressiveness because we've seen him being over the hole for most part that we've covered him. And it goes to show with his personality that he's always going for it. He's never trying to leave it short or leave it in a good space to get it easy. He's trying to make his approach short as well, is Gaurav Pratap Singh. Yeah, I think he's one of those people that uh, backs himself. And that's the reason that he had that uh, victory at not a golf course in that tournament. Uh, it's a rather unique thing. We've seen uh, Amardeep Malik and Gaurav Pratap Singh, both of them, if I'm not wrong, have uh, uh, two victories to their name. And uh, both of them are their home club. So there's a lot of uh, comfort and solace and known in what's Normally, they say familiarity breeds contempt, but probably not in this case. When you have your home golf course and you can play well, Sanit also uh, does rather well at uh, DLF. This time, unfortunately, not winning the tournament, but another home favorite taking that away. As we have a look at him here at uh, hole number eight. That's a decent chip shot. 
Sanit again, one of the younger breed of golfers, very strong ball striker. And I think of uh, the game of golf and uh, how I did uh, follow it during my earlier years. I really like watching golfers from yesteryears and the way they used to work the ball and the art and finish, whether it was Larry Mize or Lee Jans. Um, you know, a lot of those purists of the game. If you look at Lee Trevino, he was not, not so well bestowed with a lot of length, but really working the ball. Nick Faldo, how he actually throttled back and uh, he made a career out of accuracy hitting as we have a look at Kartik there. Missing that part. But you see that that is it's almost like a dying art. And that's why maybe the powers that be are, you know, decided to roll back the golf ball after five years. I think that could change a few things and get that uh, that element back into the game where players used to work the ball both ways. Uh, you know, you were necessitated uh, to try different shots and it wasn't just hit, uh, you know, just heave and uh, sort of move on. And it's just not like that. It's you know, there's a certain element of the game that needs to come back into play. Working the ball, flag sticks in certain positions where uh, you have to work it either way. So uh, maybe that's the change that uh, will bring back that scale and maybe sc scale back power because now it has become an all-out power game as golf. But maybe that's where all sport are going. You see that's happened to tennis, that's happened to football as we have a look at Gaur Pratap Singh schedules uh, even of cricketers they're playing a lot more cricket they're a lot more athletics maybe that's the way that sports are trending in general uh, Gaur Pratap Singh good part and you can't quite do much to stem the flow when things are going that way but uh, you always want to see uh, different facets as we had a look at Aman Raj uh, I reckon that would be his eagle part we're not quite sure this is a very reachable par 5 and Aman has uh, gained a few yards of the tee. As you can tell also, he has gained a few pounds of muscle as well. Another heartwarming story uh, was Camilo Vijegas uh, winning on the PGA Tour. That was something that I followed rather closely. It was uh, uh, very nice to see after the difficulties he went through and uh, what he could actually do and dedicated that victory to his daughter who unfortunately had lost her battle with cancer and that really did have a deep effect on Camilo as we have a look at uh, Sanit. Shows you that uh, sport can do so much more and uh, and even our um, you know, professional golf tour of India supporting different causes. Um, I believe it's just the start and we're seeing that you know, the sport is growing, uh, the prize funds are growing and eventually you'll see that uh, you know, you, you've seen some of the best golfers on tour come from humble backgrounds they've been able to uplift themselves and uh, that has a good effect overall in society at large. And we're talking about somebody, you look at Numero, Shamim Khan, an absolute inspiration from this man on your screens. Modesty Blaze, very nonchalant and uh, takes himself very lightly. He's the number one money earner on tour. Currently at two over for the day and five under for the tournament. As we have a look at that uh, fantastic drone shot showing our national flag, our pride and glory. You know, there's something about that view that uh, gives you goosebumps. And for those of you who are wondering what you're watching on ABP Network, you're watching Bhavani Singh Rathor presents Jaipur Open 2023 powered by AU Small Finance Bank. This golf course uh, has seen some fantastic uh, play thus far. We are live from Ramba Golf Club in the heart of Jaipur for the penultimate tournament on the Professional Golf Tour of India calendar year. We've seen a lot of different winners come through. We've seen birdies, we've seen eagles, we've seen heartbreak, we've seen it all. We've seen international flavor. In fact, yesterday we've seen something that we've never seen. I've, I've never seen it in my life and I'm pretty certain it has never happened in too many places. Albatross on the same day. That means the par five was actually finished by players in just two shots. You talk about hole in one. This is actually pushing it to another level. A hole-in-one only gives you a minus two. An albatross is giving you a minus three. 
know, most players will be lucky to have a, a hole in one in their entire life or maybe a few eagles here and there but an albatross it's a rare sight just as the bird itself then you have another one so it shows you that magic can indeed happen on the professional golf tour of india and uh, the creators of that magic yesterday was divyansh bajaj on hole number 14 and varun parekh on hole number 8 So two albatross, uh, albatross is I think that would be a correct uh, grammar. <laughs> so the plurals, uh, plural for more than one. But uh, shows you and the final two days are also going to have a lot of action on. A man on the screen is Dhruv Sharon, hailing from Guru Gram. He also comes from a defense background. Father is serving. in the armed forces played uh, have a, the good fortune of playing a bit of golf with him a yeah, very level headed young man as uh, quite a few of them now i think it's also age is so relative uh, ha huh, inesh I, i say young man he's 29 uh, and uh, you're a young man yourself a lot younger than 29 i'm, I'm pretty certain but uh, as they say you know you hear the statement of 40 is the new 30 and 30 is the new 20 and i and i always say you only make those statements when you reach that age <laughs> that's the funny thing about life that's the funny thing with balls when you're playing it uh you age a lot faster when you're watching it you, <laughs> you feel younger than you do yeah you you spoke uh, spoke truly when it, all the stress of trying to make the cut i feel uh, you know there's nothing the pressure of making the cut is probably the worst pressure in professional golf you really revel if you're in and around the lead you make the cut and you're playing well as we have a look at uh, drov here good stroke by amar is having a great day on the greens yeah but uh, coming back to you know when, when you when you on day 2 and you have the proverbial sword of democles hanging over your head am i going to survive the call am i going to play tomorrow am i going to have a paycheck it's, it's not the kind of pressure that you really want and especially with more competitive tours when you go higher and higher you'll see that each week you will have to play under the pressure of the cut so you better get used to that you better get used to the feeling of discomfort if you want to be a good professional golfer and you better have steely grit otherwise uh, try and become a commentator <laughs> <laughs> that's not too easy either <laughs> absolutely that's not too easy either but it's enjoyable to see these fantastic players as we have a look at such in on live feed number 2 body language made a bit strong but yes but i think also like you said rightly i think golf at the end of the day is uh, getting comfortable by being uncomfortable i think like you said a lot of good golfers are not ones who hit good shots all the time the ones who miss it the less Let me take a look at the strong Punjabi lad Pukhraj, uh, leaving it a little short. So, this should be a tap in range, should be comfortable for him. And he goes ahead and taps it in. Pukhraj, one of the quicker players, goes goes about his business. Once he's decided what he needs to do, he doesn't take a lot of time. feels the right approach to the sport anybody watching there's there's nothing extra you gain by taking a lot that you going to choose just pull the trigger make life easier drove now carefully measuring up his uh Two foot up. 
and he does so comfortably upwards and onwards to the next for him shamim uh, recognizable with those uh, bright blue pants today he's left himself a two and a half three footer for his tap in as the veteran he is no problem there for him Our leader, the beginning of the round three, currently finds himself uh, two shots adrift. Aman Raj with a long attempt on hole number eight. Uh, as you see, the flag fluttering now, which would mean the wind is picking up at different spots. Leaves a little short and a little less break than he would have liked. But a tap. And nonetheless, uh, we'll update you what that was for. Could have been for an eagle. This could be for a birdie. Manu seems to have missed the green a little, short-sighted himself, but got an uphill chip, so shouldn't be a problem. Short sighted, but he's definitely going to fancy this to make it. And the quick turn, a bad chip, but uh, that would suggest he wanted to make it. Left it a little short, probably didn't get the contact the way he wanted it. We see Gaurav Pratap and Manav on the stream. Gaurav Pratap, one of the most confident strides on the PGTI if, the, if ever there was one. Always seems sure of every step and uh, every move that he's making. Akshay Sharma now carefully taking a look at uh, his putt. It's a par 5, one could assume uh, it's maybe to make 4. Seems to be an 8, 9 footer. He's expecting to make this. Akshay is uh, going around quietly. Is one under par for the day through the first seven. Not a very hot start, but not a bad one as well. Should be content with it if he can make more. Raving about his party managers to make this one as well. Quite uh, aimed quite well outside the hole and. I think he overboarded there, sliding by the lip. Gaurav Pratap, on the other hand, has a much longer attempt, which he probably would fancy because he's, uh, we've seen him uh, make a few and uh, he's run that by as well. And that seems to have put a few tougher flags because uh, we're not seeing a lot of approach shots getting close to the hole. Most of having to make birdies from uh, 20 feet and outside. As Mana would want to do so here, he's a little further away. Manav also comes from a relatively uh, sporting background. His, his father was in the defense. 
ardent sportsman himself. His uh, older brother now settled in the US, played a lot of golf himself, very competitive, a uh, good family, good people to hang around with and uh, contending with that slope. Left himself a little short, but shouldn't be a problem to finish up for his par. Now Karthik Sharma carefully peering on. Karthik does uh, use all the allotted time that he gets, make sure he's ready before he strokes it. And There's not much time that's allotted now after the change of rules. 40, 30, 30. <laughs> Fruitnik Electro Plus. Rehydrate, feel alive. काम घर में कर रहे हों या बाहर या किसी बीमारी से उबर रहे हों आप बिना जाने डिहाइड्रेट हो सकते हैं। रोज जरूरत है फ्रूटनिक इलेक्ट्रो प्लस रिहाइड्रेट इसका अनोखा आर थ्री फॉर्मूला इलेक्ट्रोलाइट रिस्टोर करे ग्लाइकोजन रिप्लेनिश करे और मसल्स का तनाव कम करे तुरंत एनर्जी के साथ फ्रूटनिक इलेक्ट्रो प्लस रिहाइड्रेट एज लॉन्ग एज इट्स विद इन द कन्फाइन द गेम इज फाइन यू गिवन सर्टन अमाउंट टाइम यू मस्ट utilize all of that if you want to but um, when you look back rarely do you find that uh, slow play does help you because you need to get on momentum is so important and often i figure that you know when i made a few birdie they start thinking more it got slower so get quicker it's about momentum as you have a look at gaurav pratap singh from maybe about four and a half feet left right part you yeah, were absolutely agree with you and that's uh, a disappointing miss uh, given he was on the green and uh, had a run yeah i think i had him fooled cuz he was gesticulating that uh, it went the other way but a three put three putt uh, never feels good yeah no matter what uh, the situation but i think when it comes to time i feel if you're ready you're ready i don't think there's a lot i think uh, having a good caddy helps as well especially when you're not on the green because you can take a little time on the greens because you need to read the green get the speed right and it matters because uh, a lot of things are important your position um, the amount of money you're making that week your position the order of merit that it's understood but i think on the on the tee boxes and on the fairways it's a fairly straightforward dilemma it's just it's i think you know having seen the game long enough from either side now that i realize that uh, you normally find slow players are the ones who are not too sure about their technique it's not quite about the green you'll find slow players normally are the ones who are uh, unsure about the way they strike their irons and their driver so that kind of nervousness seeps into the green as well so if you know somebody who's a confident ball striker he will you know there, there's a theory in economics loss losses loom larger than gains loss aversion prospect theory so if you if you're walking down a road and you you drop a 100 rupee note uh you'd be a lot more hurt than just finding a 100 rupee note as we have a look at aman raj so what i figured probably you know what oh look at that uh, almost uh, a similar finish as it was in hole number 6 but coming back to my point about prospect theory is that uh, when losses loom larger than gains that's when you take more time because humans are generally loss averse you know we, we we don't want to be making mistakes and that is amplified on the greens but if you're a good ball striker where you're sure of your striking it's not going to hurt that much because you know that I'll get a birdie putt again on the next hole so if you see there's a common theme between the slowest players are the ones who are not sure about their striking off the tee because they feel that this putt uh, you know I don't know when I'll get another putt uh, for a birdie or par this length so that's actually the thing so if somebody slow my uh, my guess is always work on your driving and your iron striking So uh getting back uh, 
to the action but you know that's what i recommend if somebody is really slow work on your iron striking and and your driver hitting because if you can hit more fairways it'll lower the anxiety and i i think slow play is definitely a lot of anxiety on the greens i think a lot of times i've also realized growing up myself coaches uh maybe because they didn't know any better they they make you practice and on the course especially they want you to take those extra practice swings and they want you to take your time at least before that used to happen but i remember that uh and now when i've watched golf i mean you go to major championships a lot of the guys if they have a drive if they know they're hitting a driver they a lot of them don't even take practice swings before just they just tee it up and they hit sanit skaddy has given him a line of uh, right edge i'm not too sure about it if that's going to break that much it just looks pretty straight so let's hope he makes this one Yeah, oh, just, just about creeping in from the left hand side but you you've seen a lot of golf in europe and and uh, the top level golf uh, what is it like there and in, in, in terms of time taken by the good players i think uh, the better players take lesser time i think uh, the, the players who are more on the pj tour get a little more uh, freedom than players on the european tour because on the european tour you just have to be quick you're at it like i i remember being on the bag for uh, shubankar a lot of the times uh, i had to know a few things before he got to the ball especially on the fairways because uh, there is no time because he needs those few extra seconds to feel ready and hit the shot but if he's spending that time to uh, uh, you know gauge the distance and understand the wind and see what is where which is why i always made sure i was ahead of him I had things ready before he came so that he has the information so he can take time to get ready for the shot and not spend time gathering the information and using those uh, precious seconds because especially given the weather conditions that you have to be quick they want to finish the day as soon as possible and uh, yeah because daylight hours are sort of limited absolutely and which is why I think um uh, you save a lot of time especially when you're uh, um on the tee boxes because most of the holes most of the courses par fours par five especially you know what you're doing you know what you need to do you know where you need to hit the ball and you just adjust to the weather conditions if you hit a driver somewhere on a day where it's headwind you might hit a three wood if there's no wind that day so those are the adjustments that you make but those are quick adjustments as you have a look at uh, the tee shots by the players on hole number 9 here Kumar standing really far to the left for a fade. So, but you're saying that the execution is also quicker, right? By the players. Absolutely. With some players, uh, they they take uh, their allotted time when they're around uh, the around the greens and on the greens. But when it when it comes to their approach shots and uh, their tee shots, they're very quick. I remember Rory uh, the first time I ever saw him as we watched the roof on hole number ten having. A good day today. Oh, that should be oh, almost yeah. fair. Uh, I remember I saw him on uh, hole number eight, uh, the par five, uh, Augusta. Uh, he 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 just walked the tee, waited for his playing partners. He put the tee on. He didn't take a single practice swing. He just went with the driver and that goes to show it's an it's a it was there was better thing to can target so feel that i need to try need to get it for the video to swings and deliberately do every little thing and then go over time because over here sometimes and it works the referee is not there but when you're on uh, better toes high toes you 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 get these you're given fast never a good side but you want them on the leaderboard you don't want that pressure Yeah, so an earlier time, just trying to be more self-assured. And these are habits. If you build out here, if you're taking less time here, you take less time outside. Talk more, less time. This doesn't take much time. It's Pukhraj. It makes an aggressive swipe. He's 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 being aggressive today as well, but yeah, probably could have taken a second. <laughs> Aman Raj still leading the way at 13 under par. Saptak Lakya is at 12 under par. Ron at 11 under par. Manu Gandas, Akshay Sharma at 10 under par. 
and out on the golf course blazing their own trails Mar Syed Ahmed both of them at 4 under par for the day uh, are the leading lower as far and Madikar was having a good day as well was at 4 under par through the first 12 but seems to have made a first seems to have made a double on number 12 so he's two under for the day seven under for, which is still outside the shop Neem Khan one would expect him to get a good run on he's so overboard, I think the the yeah, they think, in the players. I think uh, look at him. He's even he's a little bemused by what uh, transpired there. I don't think there are many greens, uh, especially in the country, that would uh, fool. I see like quite Khan. quite a few players. Uh, almost every second player go with this multi kind of water with this red shaft. Well, I'm not uh, be like before blaming their own. Let's say technique, or maybe the, they're not giving the right thoughts. I think they tend to change the faster because of availability. Uh, the more spoiled you have a choice, you feel like you want to try everything because maybe this is not for you. Or sometimes it's just access easier to that sort of equipment. I also. agree, and, and I think, but it's players are generally uh, favoring uh, the mallet uh, style part these days and the one with the multi. So maybe it's just one of those flavors of the year. It sort of I think a mallet also helps uh, push the ball out quicker off the face most most of the times. I think it uh, gives you a better way to align Patak with a wedge in his hands. Yeah, I would have wanted to hit. Uh, Mama left that good 15 feet short. That's been the story for his day today. He's he's made a birdie and he's made a bogey. He's made a birdie, followed it by a bogey, and he made a birdie on the last. Let's hope he can make this one, put an end to that trend. Yeah, if you are to draw positives, at least he's making birdies. So that's always a good sign. Saptak also for the first time in the tournament uh, is sorry, not for the first time. Is twelve under par today, for the day. Another mention, my good friend, I just, uh, I think I somehow missed it. Uh, Anikit Savant uh, uh, also made the cut. Uh, in fact, he equal par and two under. So a mention for Anikit currently in 50th position. So well done, Anikit. Uh, good good show by you. Let's hope that you get a few more birdies today and tomorrow as well. I saw him on the range. Uh, the previous week, I was trying a new irons. I'm trying to downgrade my shaft flex, and I was seeing him at the irons, and I was thoroughly impressed by how well he was hitting his irons. And I said, I'm surprised that you might make the cut at DLF. You're hitting the irons so well. So good that uh, he's been able to deliver this week as we have a look at Manugandas. And get an impressive player. I met him also uh, uh, to the DLF event. Good ball striker consistent. But that goes to show with the game, never know. Why yeah. one's performing, why one's not performing. I think you also get overawed now with, with the cuts always going at under par. We'll have a look at Manu here. Takes a good swipe at him under borrows on that one. Before part of a tournament, you already know that you need to make birdies. So there there is a latent pressure which is always there. Previously, when we were playing tournaments, you could free wheel and, and sort of if you're playing well, it you would build on it. But now you're hitting a one under, you don't know what to take back because you know you need to repeat it. So it's it's not easy at all because you need to keep backing up good performances with good performance. And that's not easy. That's why I see the numero uno also the cut because it's 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 become gradually a lot more difficult. And that's what it does, you know, where as they say, where there's honey, there's bees. So you know, you you add, add prize fund, you give world ranking points, you have affiliations with the DP World Tour, you know, you have this tie up with the ABP network I have that uh, tag with your sport and so on and so forth so this is a lot of difference you have Absolutely. more competition uh, you know there are more eyeballs on the game of golf and in invariably the scoring goes down so you need to back yourself up yeah, i think everything that you said at the end of the day it just adds up to a uh, consistent golf over a period of time because uh, you make it a little lucrative the incentives increase then players know that you know better this is what we get in return and uh, and and now it's not just the money 
it's opportunity to go to a higher tour, to have access to better competition, to better players. And as a, as a sportsman, as we look at uh, Saptak Talwar, trying to make him disappointed with the stroke, he's left it short. So uh, that little trend of a birdie followed by a bogey continues for him. But you're yeah. right, because as, as a few, if you, if, if money was not the main value, you want to play with better players. You want to play on better golf courses and better conditions in front of crowds. This will give it an opportunity to have a look at uh, Akshay's approach to putting. This is that I'm really fond of in, in the way that he goes on about it. See, he's, he reminds me a little bit of Jack Nicholas in the heyday, how he puts. He sort of slouched over, open stance. He gives that a good run. He's always very assertive when he puts. Learning the game to learn how to conduct your screen. Absolutely. I think you've uh, hit the nail on the head. And as we were talking about it earlier, even when they missed the putt, it's it's about how sure and uh, confident you were making the stroke because you are going to miss putts. Even the best ball strikers hit it on the best putters, miss a lot of putts. At the end of the day, this this sport is about missing it better. You know, it reminds me of a statement by Elon Musk actually when, when uh, you know, trying to miss or anything else. He said the number one problem with uh, people who are working or, you know, trying to build anything uh, with the human being is wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you start a task, you have a great idea, you want to build something and eventually you think it will happen. That's wishful thinking. But that's not uh, where it happens. And the same can happen with professional golfers. You think you found something and that's it but that's not how it works you have to make it happen and that's something very deep actually it's it's about uh, repetitions being on the range and consciously making that happen as opposed to thinking it will happen uh, the thing about life is uh, no matter how bad it gets it can get worse Absolutely. so you know uh, the uh, the thing uh, some many call, call me a pessimist for that but the thing about life is it'll give you uh, good luck has to be earned <laughs> but bad luck is given you know? have to really keep trying for things to go your way but uh, get waylaid at any time as i say keep uh, the black on and keep trying no matter what you're doing so ju you just got to make it happen but... absolutely as they say golf is the closest sport to life uh that's what it and i think uh, uh, it was very beautifully put by you because at the end of the day you know a lot of times you you keep doing keep at it and you don't see it maybe you don't understand but you are the, you are getting to a point where you do play well as you watch i'm surprised where ravi is lying here see here really aggressive of the and the only way that is far is uh, maybe hitting a rescue of the tee rescue or maybe even a three wood but um, normally you don't quite see that players if, the conserve was not much space of 35 yards. There's a to the left, and there's an out of bound on the right hand side. And you think that and it's a downhill hole uh, that turns from right to left, uh, as far as you can say, much uh, in terms of uh, that. Yeah, I feel he's uh, also left in a very good position. Sometimes people would look at that chip and say that uh, he would have been happy as, uh, within two feet of the hole. But I think given the slope and the undulations, leaving yourself flag high and uh, uphill part yeah. than to try the four footer. So the uh, 47, first five, and then downhill. So if you look at it, it might be just maybe 310, 15, but there's no way to hit because there's a hazard, there's the OB. So, uh, this is a quintessential uh, risk or reward hole. If you look at Sanat uh, Bishnoi here at hole number 10. Seems to be a fair distance away from the flag. Uh, it just seems to be the middle of the day. Uh, I think the, do you think? the fly positions are maybe a little i'm not quite sure i mean if he's this far he, he might have gone for the green ad or i can't quite tell you on in time because uh i don't see him hitting in that um far away with the sandwich so he, 
he's gone with the three word somebody with his length can get to the green with the three word and this flag position to be giving the players a little confusion when it comes to as we watch on our feed number 2 we have uh, gorak pratap singh coming off fresh free putt so he want better stroke and he does see yash behind him uh, applied to the green Raj, uh, you can see him on the challenging par three eleventh. This is a true test. Uh, this hole, a place about two twenty, and um, can play into the wind at times. So, uh, shorter hitters would be hitting rescues as well. Longer hitters maybe a five iron. It's an interesting hole. Karthik here. With what appears to be a putt for his birdie, and uh, it's a disappointing miss. He doesn't actually take a lot of time over the ball. I think this. Uh, I'm not too sure. We apologize to our viewers for that. Uh, I think they are on the twelfth because the twelfth has it adjacent to the green. We're certain that the group on the left is on hole number ten. So. We'll add a little bit of mystery to this broadcast as well. Be a little more interesting. And for those of you who joined us and who are wondering, watching golf on ABP Live, it's uh, you're watching Bhavani Singh Rathor presents Jaipur Open 2023, powered by Mall Finance Bank. This is the penalty on the professional get calendar champion. Uh, is number one on the order of merit. Unfortunately, the cuts. This is a very challenging event. Even the best don't earn a right to just. Uh, land up and play. You got to earn it. You got to earn those stripes. The golf and golf, no mercy for the players. As we see, Sanit uh, after his first part, he is also perplexed by. Not quite sure if that's a bogey or a par. We find out. This one on this for him. We found this green now. Yeah, the the flag pin position on the front right uh, is a good one, uh, but it's uh, I mean it's par for the course because holes are straight forward. So the only way that you can make the Brazil more spicy with the flag pins. And uh, we'll walk that wonderful shot on the screen on our right. And Ravi Kumar does seem to have had a problem with the greens there. A lovely up and down for yeah, him. Yeah, he he has a little bit of a spring in his step. Uh, I think he might have made birdie. Very average, Pokraja. <laughs> Uh, some sort of thought that is right in mind. Not one wait. He likes to really get on with it. It's a great. What uh, uh, did we see? Varun Chopra on the on feed number two. Feed number two is uh, oh, T. Amar Amar Deep Malik actually. Yes, T number ten, I think. Yes, sir. And, uh, he's disturbed by something. Stops midway. Let's uh, so watch Pukraj on uh, on the left, quickly going about his business, cut his fingers on the ball and uh, pulls the trigger. Okay, that golf. Look at that golf shot. He has a uh, blue and also a touch of a surgeon. Well done, Pukraj. Amar Deep Malik. Off on what a be hole the par three. Yes, players probably would be with an eight iron. This hole uh, playing to about 165 yards, blinded by a tree in the middle. Very unique. You see where the ball pitches. Kind courtesy that big tree in the middle, so you have to align for that tree. Uh, hit and hope. And then you see the caddy scampering on. You must be wondering. Implement that he's carrying on in his hands. Uncle Rake uh, golf uh, necessity to uh, golf course in 
a similar or better position when you found it. So if you enter a bunker, you must rake it, otherwise you incur a fine. You got top traces of our uh, leader group. Uh, when we were juniors, uh, we were rather naughty. We leave trenches for the players, uh, and you know, make sure that if anybody else lands up, <laughs> they get in a spot of bother. But not as a professional. Please fill your boots and rake the bunkers. How many those players were? Works hard at his. He's introduced that uh, pause in his backswing. Uh, does a lot of drills. Very intense when it comes to practice sessions. Um, were you were you that sort when you when you were playing when you were practicing or were you more hands on? Because uh, I, I I remember watching you. You loved playing those little uh, games around the green with the little chip and parts and yes, bunker yes. plays. I, and I, I so think, you had a wonderful shot game. You've always been known for a great yeah, wedge player. Yeah, I think that happens to be from where I actually played my golf. Uh, we all played a lot of us melf him dipinder kular vikrant chopra formative years were spent at uh, delhi apta or army whatever you might call it um we were just spending our entire there uh, you know after school all the way till 8 o'clock in the evening and lights would go off at about 6:30 and then one and a half hour going to the putter uh, you know chip from the clubhouse to the putting green we would do the most incredulous things keep the balls on branches of trees climb up trees <laughs> chip them so we did it all and i think that's actually develop a good shot game Absolutely. you do and that's how you enjoy the game so we would have these competitions you actually carry a torch and play a hole at night so yeah. that you, you need a few of those stories uh, you know sometimes if you become successful and you will no major those are the stories of folklore and you know people say he became successful because he did these things but i mean at least you do all that that's how you feel feel also yes. that's how you develop feel and, and um, one you know, you know how tiger talks about educated hands I think that's basically gets into that also because you're unconventionally practicing. A, a brilliant story about that. I remember us uh, in the Caddy parking lot. Uh, they used to have these, these games with each. Other. They, uh, on the gravel, they'd made this putting green, and they used to bet. So we actually go, used to go out and do, so things like that. You know, uh, you do a little things in an unconventional manner. You build skill, and you also enjoy the game a little more. At the end of the day, let's not forget golf is a game. It might have become a profession, but it's a game. The same way you and I play cricket, it's a lot of fun, right? You try and do different things. You know, when you're bowling, you try and try something else. You're playing, so you have to add that element to the game of golf. You have to make it fun. Otherwise, it's just a job. You work <laughs> if you're taking it that seriously. You, Absolutely. You have to enjoy the game of golf. Yeah, adding on to that, because uh, uh, yesterday I was talking to uh, Shubankar, and he was said. The guy he was working with, uh, who was getting his stuff, and he said, he, uh, "There are two people I've worked with now who have incredible feel, who know exactly what their club did, where it was before he and comes up with the details." And he's like, "One of them is you, and the other one was a nirban." And I think it goes to because so unconventionally we grow up here doing different things. That's what he said because. players are so spoiled for choice when it comes to uh, the western world over he said like, when i was growing up we got a club and that was the club that you had so you had to make all shots from that if the driver was too heavy for you you had to make it work if it's too light yeah. for you you had to make it work that's one of the stories of setter is being able to hit the three and uh, out of the bunker and spin Absolutely. it so it's no it's not an exaggeration we've seen it you've seen uh, thoran virachant uh, on Ranges. I've seen it that you spin it from thirty yards wedge, and uh, that's how you develop. You do unconventional things, and and you try things, and you actually develop those sort of skills. Somebody that comes to mind is Mithun Pereira's fast and a great uh, proponent of short game, uh, brilliant player. I think a winner on on the Asian tour as well, besieged by some season and uh, bone issues later, but uh, fantastic nevertheless. As we come back to. Manu Gandhas, no such uh, issues for him. He's built like a boxer at this point in time. <laughs> I'm blessed uh, by Manu. And I think he's one of those guys who also has to have incredible feel because, from what I know, uh, he's strictly he can't practice a lot. So all he does is uh, play injury, and uh, he probably has to rest and. Recover. So, giving performances like he does, like going on the European tour, winning five, six times, facing this part which will break to his left. Let's see how he can have a 
As looks like it's line just wearing uh, on, but it's still across the hole. We're seeing Sanet here at hole number twelve, right to our left. Now I think this is a conversation that he's having with his co-players. If this is a preferred lie or not, that can make a world of a difference. Uh, but mind you, you can't take a preferred lie and come on the green. You can even if it's away from the flag, you can't just put it on the green. So if you're off the green, you can only uh, off. I think at this point in time, he has not got the benefit of the doubt, it seems. If any part of the ball touches the closely mown area, then uh, you're you allowed to take yes. a time. Or if nobody's looking. <laughs> no, <laughs> obviously not. But uh, as they say, in a weekend round, we've seen the worse. So golf is, is a fun game and uh, competitive fun game. <laughs> golf can, can have its own uh, stories. But also... Uh... Which is all test. bank jana address change ke liye. Kamal lena please. Brand chaogi. Aisa kyu? Chal video call karte na. Please branch band ho jayegi. Good afternoon, ma'am. Welcome to AU zero one zero one digital bank. Kya kar rahi ho? AU video banking. Kya bank ke saare kam ho sakte hain. To branch kyu jana? Soch patlu. Par bank bhi. Small Finance Bank. Badlav Hamse hai. Sayyid Saqib Ahmed and Aman Ra as well as Dhru Sharon. Dhru Sharon trying to win his maiden tournament. The Bhavani Singh Rathor presents Jaipur Open 2023 powered by Small Finance Bank. This would be quite a trophy to add to your mantle. Absolutely. We have some uh, big names who have won it also in the past. So, you end up winning for the first. be a great play. And uh, Sapta comes up a little short there. So, really, what, what a venue this is. It's going to have uh, so many opportunities. Why really? Of course, it gives you birdie and even eagle opportunities. And if you get a little too aggressive, it can bite you. So, it has the best of both worlds. I think that's a good sort of gauge of golf course as well and judge it based on does it make you think and if it doesn't uh, because if there are more than uh, more than one wait Head uh, as he waits for the referees to come here on the doubts that the players have, his playing partners, uh, from a longer range also. Oftentimes, if, if there is a doubt, then the players can uh, sort of weigh in and give their opinion. But if there's a then the player has to put the bullet and then call them and then come with the R, come with the one in this case. Yeah, the referee, some there, quite any doubt that the player might have. Had. That's a good role. That's a good role. Reminds me of Tiger's point. He better than most. Uh, had a double breaker. Really well done there. Absolutely well. well I mean, it's so, so good. Uh, heartening to see a good lad. Well, I mean, it's it's under to think that it's expected out of a professional golfer, but uh, it is still a good skill. Yeah, lag putting is a skill in itself. Um, you just saw Tiger Woods' his son Charlie Woods is the ball so well, and physically he's maturing so. So quickly, it's rather maybe obviously he has uh, the best golfing genetics that uh, one could ask for. I think Sanan did uh, catch a break, got a little yes uh, drop he... on the side on the fringe, and and I think he's made the most of it. That's a good part, but uh, running out three and a half feet for his par now.
uh, it looks a little uh, has has a, has a hurried look yeah so, there's always a thought when you take a lot of time on one shot uh, even if it's for a ruling you tend to try and hurry and get through things but that's also uh, happened in the sport is that the onus of catching up on time is also on the player also on the group uh, scaddy has given him a line outside I the cup I'm not certain if that's the amount it'll break it seems to be a very benign break it would be pretty if he's over borrowed well done All right but sanet seems to be one of those players who who is uh, directly taking the help of his caddy also he's quite relying on the by his caddy going well i had minimal involvement uh, with the caddy when it was going well but often when in then out more thing when well, you sort of know the lines you maybe just once in a while you need some to reform uh, what 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 line can you show maybe just give you a little, little bit of confidence but uh, um otherwise when it's not going well i think i would just uh, yeah, pick his brains out <laughs> so well, i am what he with them because i think i i always sort of you know those very subtle breaks where you're not feeling to the left or the right or those big breaks where you feel like yeah. going to come that thinking of, so most of the times if it was like a short short part where you're at a half of side at tactics you see the famous polo ground on the left hand side flat ball of course it's next to the eight and on the second shot Five. To get too far left, you can the ball mount going away into the into the out of bounds. Sometimes you feel like climb on a horse, <laughs> go away. Very different. Well, what these players doing? Hole number thirteen. We watch one bias on our screen. One uh, is having a quiet day at even par six hundred par for the top. Just in twenty. I think coming well, six hundred par. If he can get to about eight nine par, that'd be a good week. I'm not what it is about him, but he reminds a little bit of, of the player Digby just saying somehow maybe the silhouette is. Uh, You can see that the wind uh, picked up the, the rustling a little bit, and uh, that can make all the difference. Uh, you get seed of doubt, and you're not sure about which way it's going to go. I think that in itself is an art. I think that's one of the more tougher things to do is be committed to the shot. There are inordinate amount of time here. See if all that's going to yield a good result. Uh, not, not quite. Five hmm. feet left for his birdie. I think he was confused about the line and the wind. I think Manu is one of those players who takes a lot of time over the ball. Once he set up, once he takes his stance, he takes time to uh, trigger. I think if you look at Karthik, uh, who's going to come up on our screen soon, uh, he's someone who takes a lot of time before the shot, pre-shot routine, and one. I really like the way Karthik uh, sort of keeps pre-shot routine. Likes to imagine kind of play almost an archer. Times. He gives a very athletic look to. That's a good shot by him right there. Right. Up. Very nice, uh, of course. The way it is, it's, it's not too undulating. 
But trees are definitely the defining characteristic of this golf course. You look at Akshay. No question. Sure. Not without saying, but, uh, not to the result. Would you say this golf course is uh, more straight or more uh, short shaping? Uh, I would think that uh, strategy, uh, strategy, not so much, but short shaping, surely, because you see a uh, holes here uh, require a certain uh, short shape. So it's a lot of short shape here. Like this hole is a left to right hole. Uh, uh, the next hole as well as a left to par three is maybe not so much. Hole number 15, you have to hit a strong tree, otherwise you can't get in the fairway. So uh, this uh, course is a good mix of both. One of the older style golf courses where you used to work the ball. You can't quite just overpower this golf course. I think there's one thing that's happening with the uh, changes, uh, you know, uh, post uh, early 90s that with the club clubs and the golf balls, the short shaping is actually reduced. People now move the ball less. Yeah, the new uh, golf ball also the switch. I think with the, I think it'll ask me everything low spin, especially the golf club. I think ball now start more off target than uh, move back. Yeah, especially even um, pretty certain you wouldn't have Balata balls, although you would have loved them given your style of play. Uh, we used to have those titles, Balatas, and uh, I remember quite a few uh, Mizuno softballs, Max Fly uh, spin. We used to spin a lot, but you, if you hit one wedge, dent on them, and use it. I remember you use ball the pinnacle or something like that on the tee, and then switch over to a softball when you get to an approach shot. So. Uh, the good old days of golf. And when the Pro V1 came in, it actually just changed yeah, everything. Yeah. I remember the premium on that golf ball. We got one golf to keep it so safely. It was just something else. because It used to go the distance and spin. It. So that's what changed the game. Till that time, length was a factor, but uh, it was not such a big factor. Thumbs up also just off the green with a longer approach. Like he's uh, got. Quite the yardage book in his back pocket. You know, the players do. Uh, Prepare a lot, they prepare the books and so on and so forth. He got, uh, he's trying to do another thing in the whole part. So he's not just putting for trying to make, because if he's gone that far and adjusted the flag in yeah. his mind, he does not want to stick to it. This uh, is of uh, the ball falling in the hole. So like that, he goes on. This. Pratap Singh. Akshay's putt. He does make it. Look, it's, it's one of those things, it's very difficult to even talk about it. It's, um, it's almost super does. I think it's also like a little, uh, uh, a little catch you want to also. There are yeah. not things that they, they go miss when yeah. you're watching him also. When you view, view. see somebody like him, you can just uh, feel the po positive vibe come through when he's on green. He hold that. And this intent was clear and so did Gaurav so Pratap. Well. I mean, these guys are good. These guys are really good. Don't take the flag out, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, it does help. We just hold it. <laughs> Nonchalant Gaurav Pratap Singh. That was something by um, Akshay. 
the way he went on about it. He, he has that intent. That's something that I would really recommend a lot of the golfers, even weekend warriors, to emulate. That intent is everything. And you know, you're 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 going to make a few miss if you got every time if you approach it from the point of view that you're going to make it. You yeah, that was really that was really impressive. Year. Long part. It was all of thirty feet. It's not a short part by any measure. I know it looks easy on TV, and uh, also to his credit, Gaurav Pratap Singh. He made a great uh, chip after that first chip. Karthik now as he's watched his approach, he'd also like to follow suit, but he loves to make a birdie here. And he does. Yeah, they, they're uh, falling in from all corners. Brilliant part right there. Positive patch for all players. Manu would like to clean this up after his first part. That Manu, I think he usually takes a fly using the shadow straight part, and he's using the shadow of the yeah as an alignment as an alignment tool. Which you're allowed to do, your external. Oh, it's, uh, that's probably the shortest part that we've seen, and it didn't either. You know, I think that's what sometimes happens because move to the left. Yes. And I'll leave the sh shadow in, unless it's a straight part. Sometimes you get confused. Yeah. So one of my points against having the flag in that it confuses your vision. You can't find somewhere else when there's already a target right in front of you. I think he, he sort of over the thought there by leaving the using trying to use the shadow because uh, usually I've seen him the flag out. So he'd be disappointed with that three part. Shameem Ideal love. I for Shamim Khan was the back left. For this to be close within. Obliged with you. Comfortable shot on the green. Yeah, good show, Shamim. I think over the last four or five years is, is where we've seen a little bit of dip in terms of his finishes. Otherwise, he was always in the top. Ten, but what's happened? His, his standard of his game is still similar, but the competition has exploded. So you, you see him a lot lower on the leaderboards as to yesteryears. I think you're right, uh, but you know, if you if you look at the mix he's playing with currently, he's like Pukraj, uh, thirty, while he's forty-five, and he's still going toe to toe with the younger. Guy. It looks like Pukraj is going in with no longer than a wedge. It's really short, whatever it is. Really given that a lot of seems to have uh, missed it to the left. Missed, but with the, the amount of loft he had on his hands, he would have preferred to be released. I think got a little aggressive with there and tugged it a touch too, but no issue. Not too difficult from there either. A lovely view of the city. As we have the leader both side. Uh, now, nah, not much has changed since uh, the last hour or so. A lot has changed. At the beginning of the day, we had Saptak Talwar start his day at 11 under par, leading. But now uh, we see Dhruv Shai with him at 11 under par, and a new leader, Aman Raj, at 13 under. As we move to the back nine, first half of the day and the nine is done so it's moving it's uh, proven true to form we've seen a lot of low numbers not many players capitulating on this golf course uh, said the condition rather benign a few struggles for Akshay Damale, Kevin, STV, Regal had that eagle but uh, 
has been pretty dismal apart from that and uh, as you move up a few over par rounds but all in all you're seeing uh, even at this point in time you have a total of uh, 44 players who are under par so it shows you that uh, the golf course is definitely there for the taking and i think as we saw total of uh, nine players within five of the league you can see that Aman Raj is starting to move away. The next pivot make a couple move to 15 under par. I think he'll be in good shape on the final day. Have a look at Pokharaj here surveying that uh, chip shot. Um, that seems to be really errant by him. Five yards more. So bounded off uh, from the left and now his work you see a rather right way. I'm not sure if he's going to try and uh, hit a high one or run it up visualizing uh, let's see if this touch can match up with the long game he seems to have the sand in his hand, not quite sure if he's going to go above the trees. I think he'd uh, fancy me down as long as he's got a clear view. I think, flag. I think up and down is, is a little difficult. Get to about 10 feet and make that part. That's great, but this is uh, not what he wanted. I think that's a brilliant shot from there, just running off a little too much. But that's a good shot. I think it's a very yeah. good shot. That's a great shot by him. He is a long hitter. That's a very good touch. And that's a point that I need to touch up with you. How is your short game? Oh, my short game putting is uh, uh, splendid. <laughs> Absolutely. I think uh, that's my game. Uh, and it's a very short as well. I think uh, I got a little nervous for him during talk. My, my wedges short putting. Um, yeah, it's very short. And uh, I just need to actually get Learn to sort of better my wedge game and putting as well. But uh, I've got a uh, short game and putting always a very compliment of that. Interesting. That was uh, exemplified by Pukraj as well. I think there's something with long hitters and the green. Daily has touched. Look at Dhruv Sharon. Coming along. Dhruv has got a more textbook thick stance in his putting as well. He's not feel feel. Uh, I mean, he can have great feel as well, but it looks like yeah. Akshay approaches it and how Rashid. Yeah, it was not, not good feel on that. Uh, instance leaving it four feet short. This is a pretty relaxed, laid back guy. Conversation, he's never rushed. Um, takes his time. Uh, never seems hurried. A good feature, good personality to have. This is a very good uh, view of how Shamim plays his game. He'll cross the hole just by a few ways. You'll see speed control at its finest. Look at that. Point. <laughs> I've done exactly that. He's also one of the players who just like once he's taken his aim, once he's taken his uh, read, he just gets over. But what's so rare that uh, you very rare uh, to find a putter like Shamim, aggressive putt, but he has just uh, amazing touch and, and distance. So he's always beyond the hole. But it never goes beyond a foot, as opposed to rash aggressive putters who didn't tend to give it a good run. Uh, so the end effect is still the same because Shamim is still crossing the hole, but yes. his, his uh, judgment is interesting coming on the game back. I think that's one of the reasons also why he's number one in the all time money list. And you watch Pokhara. This would be probably a great momentum booster if we can make it. But Mr. on the low never had a chance. Okay for speed, but uh, got the line a little wrong. Disappointed, uh, didn't seem like he had a long club uh, on the tee there. 
Yeah, I think it's a little too aggressive uh, with that uh, short club. Now this, uh, the pre-shot routine here will tell you a lot about Dhruv is feeling. The confidence that a player exhibits uh, goes to show you that how he's feeling about this part. This is an uphill part for all intents and purposes, it's not a difficult part. Uh, straight or maybe just uh, a touch of turn from the right, but uh, it's very straightforward, especially if you're playing well. But you can see, you, there is a deliberate uh, movement there. I think there's a very, very slight break. It's not a straight part. Good part. No. Maybe a good stroke there. The strokes seem confident. I think putting is one of those skills where the need for acceptance has to be the highest. Yes. Yeah, good. And also, there's a direct result associated with putting. You're either making it or missing it. I think when it comes to long game, a lot of the times, if you're a bad driver, you still sort of manufacture something on the fairway or you don't make a very confident swing but you're okay there but putting is where you're either making it or missing it and i think the acceptance that i'm going to make the most confident stroke possible whether i miss it or make it is almost not my control once the ball leaves the butter yes I can't quite remember which player was that that uh, you attributed. You just accept whatever happens on the golf course, and and uh, that's how you maximize your ability. Uh, oftentimes, we uh, you know tend to worry about things that don't quite happen. You, you manufacture uh, you know scenarios in your head, and and you don't go bad shots. I think that's the most difficult thing in golf, which is easier on sports which are more uh, reaction based is that to stay in the present At the end of the day even how you say you know you think what you did before that what you do after that cannot be good. Aman Raj here, our leader. Kidnapping off. I think the goal. Safety that's a good Aman Raj. You know, as players have their ebbs and flows, so do we. Caffeine kicks in at the right time. <laughs> Which is exciting to watch uh, someone close to. Om Prakash uh, fearing for the title because it will make a very interesting uh, final event. Yeah, Om Prakash, I know how you would be feeling uh, sitting on that. Might not be surprising if that's the only cut that he's missed the entire year. I'm surprised he missed it all, but do you think he'll be watching the coverage? Do you think he'll it closely? No, I don't think so. He'll be on the range and uh, honing his technique. Surprisingly, he's actually missed four cuts and just shows you how brutal the tour is. And uh, this tournament isn't updated yet, so five cuts he's missed this year. So even the best, your number one player, has had to sit out for five weeks, which shows you that when he makes cut, he's uh, had like bunch of uh, trees. That's a good shot right there. Online Masane, just a little short, uh, as the trend has been for him through the day. He's going to have a longish attempt for birdie. Interesting piece of trivia. Aman Raj has made 16 of 16 cuts. Sanit Bishnoi has made 14 of 14 cuts. So it shows you that these guys are good enough with the B game also to make the cut because nobody plays their A game all the time. Ravi Kumar. Which is even more impressive for Omrakash Chauhan because when he has played his A game, he's ousted the field quite comfortably then. Yes, I think these are the only two players who've made all the cuts. Uh, Kartam, 11 of 11. Free uh, record. Okay, have a look at 
p of uh, on the par three. I think these are the only three players who made all their cuts. An easy feat, especially of competition. That's uh, a good shot by Ravi. Better shot out of the group, uh, but he'll still have a longish attempt. And the Om Prakash Chauhan with four victories this year. Karan Pratap Singh two, Sachin Besoya two, Aman Raj one, Jamal Hussain also with a victory this year. And I think it's like a new trend on tour, don't you think? Because last year we had that blistering performance by Singh Sandhu and Manu Gandas where uh, Manu won five, uh, six times, sorry, and uh, Yuvraj won five times. And then they both uh, took their trades to uh, was coming back for a few events here and there, but. Uh, you you would have thought that maybe this year there would be a bigger mix of winners, but winning four times in a season. Yeah, is... there is one player who dominates the entire season. Rarely are there two, as you have a look at Dhruv Sharon. Uh, last year there were two. Very rare for two players to go toe to toe. Uh, this year it's clear that Om Prakash Chauhan has dominated the entire field. The exact number. An exception for uh, this season, at least, uh, to enhance speed of play. Really nice, sir. Uh, has had a great run. Golfers, the way his uh, flow, the ball swing, everything from his takeaway is never rushed. So, seems like uh, has brought on some good. There you see the rule of lift, clean, and place. That's uh, given if uh, the fairways are gathering mud or there's some um, uneven lies on the fairway to ensure that everybody gets a similar playing surface. Uh, players out the luxury of a preferred lie only in the closely mode areas. So we use uh, promotions from the top golf country and uh, it's weak as well. This is steel. And this is an idea. So what happens when we join them? Something marvelous. Like cars that are lighter, more fuel efficient, yet safer. Thanks to high-perform automotive steel, which lowers CO2 emission and makes this world a better place. Tomorrow is shaped by imagination and steel. Tata Steel. We also make tomorrow.
back after that little bit of a hiatus. Technical snag at our end. Apologies for that. But we are back to the action now, and uh, uh, we're viewing the group that we started our day with: Kalin, Kalin Joshi, Abhinav Lohan, and uh, Udyan Mane. A group of young veterans, indeed. Yeah, Winners on tour. Uh, been there for a few years, but I remember the season that uh, Odian had when he had those four uh, victories, or rather five victories, when he went on to play the Olympics. The leader group on our uh, feed number two on the right of your screens, Manu. There, this should suit as well, and it does. And he's made the same miss he's been making all day. He's he's hit a little lower. It's going to be a very difficult up and down from there. Then short sighted himself. That's uh, probably the most difficult spot uh, on the screen where to miss it, and it's not going to be an easy up and down. By any measure. So you have a look at hole number 13. That seems to be Rohan Dhole Patil. Is that... Uh, not quite sure who that is. We have Saptak on our screens on the right. It's my apologies. Uh, Leader at the start of the day. Now in the chasing pack. Still having a decent round. Even par for the day. Seeing one of the better shots today. Giving himself a fairly good chance. Almost flag high, difficult to be flag high on this hole because everything runs away from the green. And as we watched, Manu pitch it slightly over the flag and he's run by at least 30 yards off the green. And then now on the left. Unfortunately for Odian, not making that putt. Odian Mane at uh, five under par for the tournament, even par for the day. You can see there's a little bit of a traffic jam here. This hole number 17, the par 5. Dog leg to the right. Short putt for Cullen. Cullen also a great ball striker, really long hitter as well. Oh, missed it. Tricky little butt. Unfortunately, Cullen would not uh, make that butt. Cullen is also one of those very similar actions since the longest time. He just does the same thing. Yes. He goes and hits, comes back. And he's mm -hmm. always had that ability to shoot really low numbers. Now, this is going to be a very interesting chip shot. You can't quite hit it high. He'll just have to keep it off. It's surprising that both Akshay and him have gone over the green. So both of them were aggressive, would have been trying to go for the birdie. But when you're working it from right to left, uh, what tends to happen, if you catch it too good, it flies too far. Uh, that's the problem with a draw shot. And maybe they were in between clubs, between a 9 and an 8 iron. So if you're trying to uh, sauce an 8 iron there, that can happen. You know, trying also, to... it has lesser spin when it uh, drops down compared to a higher fade shot. So. Exactly. So maybe a three-quarter draw, and that's uh, why it got in. Both of them 
really have their work cut out. And this uh, maybe comes down a little bit to course management or one of those errors that happen while you're playing golf. But you don't want to be missing it here. Uh, I don't see any way that both of them can walk away with a par from here. Look at that. That's a lovely chip by Akshay. I think which is why the play by Saptak was smart. M made it look easy, but believe me, this is probably one of the best of the entire day. The way he's hit it, he just pitched it on a dime. Uh, that's just the control that he has. You know, that, that forward press that he does with the left uh, wrist is so impressive. Absolutely. And uh, coming out of the rough with that slope to contend with, I mean, there were a lot of factors going against him, but he made it look easy. It was not by any stretch. You'll of realize how cool that shot was because you'll see Manu hit it. He's being quite deliberate. And uh, I think the pre-shot routine tells you a lot about what a player is trying to do. He's, he's trying to uh, hit the same shot that Akshay hit. It's also more difficult than a, you know, like sometimes you get to lob it to the flag and say, okay, five feet, six feet. You pop it around. Yeah. This is something where you need to sort of hit it in the middle, you need to drop it in a specific spot. And out of a tricky ledge, it's probably the most difficult chip shots that you'd face in a round. I think given his angle, he's a little more uh, tricky than Akshay. See, so he, see that. he got that um, soft bounce. That's why it's so difficult. You can't quite go high. You still have to trust it. I think he also hit a really good shot. Just unfortunate not to get that bounce, but shows you the skill that Akshay has to ensure that a ball runs through. Is just yes. fantastic. Something that uh, everybody should try and emulate. I think Manu hit a, to be honest, from the position he was in, it was an average shot. It wasn't a poor. Hmm. I think it just looks like that because of the quality of the chip shot that Akshay came up with. Exactly. He hit a good shot, just didn't bounce. I, I thought that he pitched it a few inches behind. behind right. And he got that, uh, you know, the, the impact sort of deadened on impact the ball. So it's it wasn't a big miss. It wasn't he? he, he couldn't have been too far away from what he was trying to do. But uh, also those spots are tricky in the sense that if you get uh, a little too cute with it, you can easily end up by having a to play with. Saptak here has no such problem at all. He's put himself in a comfortable spot in the green. He can take his time and uh, make a good run at birdie. He'd like to do that. He'd like to break par for today. A few birdies today, but he's also followed them by bogeys. So, want to make one here and then end the day with a few more. Reclaim that lead. Leave a short, but a fairly impressive part given the distance. Shouldn't be any stress to tap that in as he goes ahead and finishes it off. Also have a couple of hot rounds going on. The closer to the leaderboard, we have Saeed Sakeb Ahmed and Shivendra Singh Sisodia, both five under for the day, both at nine under par for the tournament. Manu now getting up for his par. We watched him hit it a little over the green. Had that difficult trip. He managed to bring it here. He's got about 15, 16 feet left for his par uphill. He manages to find the bottom of the cup. Peels it in from the left side. As long as they go in, that's a good... Uh, it's a good way to maintain and uh, maybe push momentum forward. Akshay also in a similar spot to Manu made a much uh, better effort of the chip. There with his hand gestures, he's trying to gauge the slope, trying to make sure 
He's got the exact read before he pulls the trigger. And as we've seen through the day and uh, in previous tournaments, he does this thing where before most of his shots, he takes a sip of the water. He manages to find the bottom of the car, middle of the hole, no problem at all. A perfect stroke, perfect putt. Probably acknowledging the crowd, appreciating the par that he made. Moving on to the next one. As we have the aerial view of the golf course and the golfers playing, as we know, uh, Akshay, Manu, and Sapta of the leader group for round three. And here we have the top five running on our screens. Aman Raj has snatched the lead, not something new. He's a 13 under par, four under par for the day. Followed by Dhruv Sharon, who's also having a great day on the course. Also four under par for the day. He's jumped up a few spots today and uh, going along strongly. Saptak, on the other hand, uh, he hasn't uh, given strokes away. He started the day at 11 under par. He finds himself at 11 under par, but he finds himself tied with Dhruv Sharon in two shots adrift, Aman Raj. Akshay Sharma and Manas, the two members of uh, the other members of the loop, round, round five, both uh, having an okay day, actually at two under par for the day, but Manu finds himself at even par for the day, and they'd like to have a say before the day ends. That's a beautiful view, of course. And the polo ground, as we've, meant, as we've mentioned before, a lot of royalty, as you would uh, associate Jaipur with, right there on our screens. As you move our way back, to the action, the group of, of Rohan Dhole Patel, Harinder Gupta, and Rahil Gangji on hole number seventeen. They're heading towards the nearing towards the end of their day. Arindar Gupta, uh, I think, confused by the read there, probably misread it. He thought it's going to break more than it did, and he missed out. You know, coming from over the hole. Ryan Ganji, one of those players that uh, you've always seen use a CAC approach for as far as I can remember. Roof Sharon not making a birdie on the 14th. I think that's an opportunity lost. A 14th is a definite birdie hole, the par 5. It's imperative for the champion to capitalize on the par fives this week. More interested to see what Aman Raj does on the 14th. The par fives here are definitely for the taking. It's an interesting time of the day because the three par fives to the finish of the day, starting on hole number 14, and how one plays that would determine a lot 
of what goes on into Sunday because if Aman Raj can pull a few strokes there and the chasing pack uh, does not match up to him, he could have a big hefty lead starting Sunday. Starting Saturday. Yeah, I think uh, especially these last five holes, you so right. Uh, the 16th also is uh, does give an opportunity. The 14th, uh, the 15th is the only one where par is somewhat difficult. It's a very difficult tee shot on that hole. And, uh, Rohan missing the shot. Uh, serene about the shots, tranquility. So, well, the golf course is always uh, like an oasis in a desert. It's uh, great uh, in the middle of a hustling, bustling city. And that's why I recommend that uh, try and take up this game for leisure. Even if you just step out and play once a month, you learn a lot about yourself while playing a game of golf. And if you're good enough to compete, then nothing like it. And somebody who's definitely good enough to compete is Aman Raj. At 13 under par, 13 holes. Omen is 13th. On Friday the 13th. <laughs> Playing the par 5, 14. So you are yeah, more interested to see. Friday the field on hole number 13 at 13 under par. So a few things that uh, do sound ominous, but... The number of games by our uh, host here. He had the he's too short lead over Drove. Yasha had had a rather strong finish. We get back to the action and uh, staring at the bunker, which would mean he's in the bunker and we can't see his golf ball, which would mean that he's closer to the back edge. That's a difficult bunker shot. Not that that uh, in play, but uh, visually does sort of impair uh, looking into the hazard. And uh, I think he he would have drawn a downhill lie. We're not sure what sort of a lie he's also found. Is it? Is it uh, is it a plain old bunker lie or is it maybe a fried egg? Yeah, I could uh, even if it's not a fried egg, it's going to be downhill. Uh, backswing will be impeded a little bit by the back. So it's not the easiest of shot. Let's see how he does. I feel sometimes these shots, because the degree of difficulty, there's only one particular type of shot that works. And usually players pull off that shot because of that. Because I mean, either they pull it off a uh, big mockery of it. Let's see uh, which one is it going to be now. I think if he's a decent lie, I think he just has to just get it out of the bunker and let it feed. Might have a backswing, otherwise in a few to rehearse it. I think uh, does have a backswing or... Not quite sure. It's a short since he's like just out of the bunker and he'll be fine. I think it was pretty straightforward. Uh, we, uh, we tried to make it a lot more difficult than what it was. But a brilliant shot nevertheless. It disappointed it didn't roll up a little closer, I think. Uh, before before the shot, I think he would have taken that. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> shot. A little animated about the result, but an up and down from that position. One of the only few players who I've seen has, um, you know, worn the cardigan for the entire round, even in this, um, at, at one o'clock in the afternoon. I think Sometimes you get used to, yeah, you guys used to get used to that feel of how you're swinging wearing a sweater that's he's not trying to change anything at this I think point he's though. also probably so zoned in he's not feeling temperature at all <laughs> he's just continuing with uh, what he started got a prata from a longer range not a bad effort slightly yeah. short
Karthik now would break from his left to right. Now that's an easy putt for the left hander. And makes it right in the heart of the hole. Good putt by Karthik. An update on how Amon Raj went on the par 514. With the, you could only manage a par, which which would mean that the group him, which would not tuck and Akshay especially uh, and Manu behind him, who are yet to play that hole, would have a slight door opening onto that par 5. Manav now. Uh, uh, keep the flag stick in, so maybe that, that is how he approaches the shorter putts. Yeah, we saw that missed putt by him on that hole. Let's see if it's a different story. This putt should break a little from his right. And I think he's done the same thing again. Similar, both the putts missing on the lower side. I don't know if it's a stroke or if it's like something is definitely off. I think he just seems to be a little too uh, conscious on the putting greens. Yeah, he seems more sure on his long game and his uh, short game. But Yeah, that move him to two over par. He, he, difference is perceptible in somebody like him and uh, Akshay Sharma, the way they approach their uh, putting. It tells you a lot about how they're feeling. Life with Vedika, always full of altitude. Drop uh, really pushes you down. And I think given where uh, Manu stands on the order of merit, it's a strong, strong finish to make Surprising it Surprising both uh, Aman and Dhruv not making birdie on uh, hole number 14. That's rather unstick. Malik on number 17. Trying to clean up and uh, similar tale, implying that the ball turned the other way from where he thought it would. I'm not sure what that was for, but uh, Amarjeev's having a decent day. He's at two under par for the day. Uh, still need to see what he's done on the seventh. And 16. Varun Chopra now hoping to make his little attempt. Varun Chopra, really good ball striker. Dominated at the bank school. A fairly easy tap in for him. Moving on to the next one. Qualifying uh, by quite a few shots. Not quite certain how he did at the final qualifying on this card, but uh, he's uh, really a good ball striker, is Warren. Sachin would uh, move off to hole number 18. Look at hole number 18 being flanked on the other side by hole number two. And for our lovely viewers who are joining us here at on ABP Live, we bring to you the Bhavani Singh Rathor presents Jaipur Open 2023 powered by AU Small Finance Bank. This event is being played at the picturesque Ramba Golf Club in Jaipur. The tournaments of of a fund of rupees one CR, and this is the penultimate event of the professional golf tour of India calendar year. 
leading the order of merit is om prakash chauhan who is the defending champion of this tournament and unfortunately has not made the cut this week so would not be seen in action today and tomorrow but that would not uh, impede his chances much to win that uh, coveted number 1 rank still has a handsome lead of uh, approximately 39 lakh over karan pratap singh seems like his position on top is uh, all but secured to the action to hold number 16 the par 3 and on view is the all time money leader on professional golf tour of india shamim khan the diminutive uh, golfer from delhi has stitched together quite a career for himself by the formula of fairway and greens so if you can do the basics uh, right you can have a good career don't have to be flamboyant as long as you're not too errant words of wisdom but also true this is like a fairly straightforward chip shot i think he's going to want to hold this yeah there's something about this chip shot uh, that seems makeable i don't you know things where you get that feeling you know if you could just pitch it in the right spot uh, it just feeds down to the hole and exactly. what it Yeah, see, he gave that a good run, a uh, good shot by Shamim. He won't be bothered too much by that uh, five footer. Yeah, he's very good from inside that range. Drew also one of the guys sporting that uh, jumper despite the heat. Around the sun, I don't think it's too hot to begin with. I think he might give this a good run. That's a decent putt by him. Comes up a little short. Maybe the greens a little. It's not as fast as I was thinking because Gaurav Pratap also left it about there from a similar spot. Pukraj now. Pukraj's tee shot is one of the better ones we've seen here. Yeah, it's a narrow target. Uh, my apologies. It's a small target. That's it. The green gets really narrow right at the back. You can see it's uh, that little neck. Nothing more than ten yards wide with water on the right and bunker on the left. So you need an accurate tee shot to get close to this one. It's a good putt, but uh, it came so close. Like a disappointing. Yeah. It is. Guys, on that uh, tee shot. Yeah, so not having a good day. Three over par for the day. Four under for the tournament. So it's trending the wrong way. Are you saying now? Still six under par with three holes to go. Let's have a look at Shamim Khan. Look at how easy he made that look, and a very soft touch. Doesn't uh, use the back; just drops in gingerly. I think that's one of the things that uh, people associate uh, Tiger as putting to as well. The speed is, is something that's right. You might get nine wrong sometimes. Speed. And it's even more impressive considering you're not playing the same green that we pick. The greens, green, the way it breaks. Yeah, especially on, on uh, our players uh, face a myriad of conditions. They were playing a DLF which was at about 12 almost. 
then you're coming here which is a little slower than the way that uh, I, I think they were playing uh, somewhere with the green zone about seven and a half or eight from quite quite now but uh, such are the degree of uh, such a degree of difficulty they're always facing difficult uh, different conditions and they play better good greens long golf course and they have to really adapt the practice rounds are so important here on the professional golf tour of india i think that's also a quality that maybe the top players have better than the other players is how well they prepare in the same amount of time they get in practice rounds another update yashas chandra has crept up on the leaders he's made an eagle on hole number 17 and a birdie on 18 to move up to 10 under for the tournament for the day so stretch by him sayed saqib ahmed and shivinder singh sisodia both of them at 5 under for the day and now the tournament so not that far behind amun raj uh, has quite a few pursuers it's not going to be easy now if you look at the urban sport, and the os is that is the ramba golf club here here at this golf course Gaurav Pratap Singh walking down 17 the par 17th is a dog leg drive longer hitters um, will probably play the fairway and have uh, a three iron coming into the green if you do end up hitting your own fairway you risk the bound flank the fairway on the right right hand you can uh, get any type to a six iron even for a long, long hit as you have a look at kartik here I'm having a rather underwhelming day would be a good place to make a birdie now good shot by him but we've seen that uh, short putts have been his Achilles heels today we did see karthik use the yardage finder to get precise information getting his third it's a good par 5 really nice design you want cut the take on extra risk or you play down the safer route score a little bit of a top spin on that not uh, the result that he would have wanted from there a little more aggressive than i think he was wanting to be a wins of it seems to be fluctuating for the most i think it's been uh, down it's not going to be heavy on the players now having a look at top sing with what appears to be an eagle putt for him got top sing currently at even for the day and 6 under for the tournament would really like for this to go in the hole 
I think that should be good enough uh, for a birdie for Gaurav Pratap Singh. We'll soon get a confirmation as well. Thanks for him. Both uh, Dhruv and Aman Raj having a fairly quiet back nine. The power uh, respectively. They have a couple of parts with. A look back at uh, the T hole number 16. Oh, that's 17. Yeah, 16. Mahal now getting one right. Uh, Finally. Golfing gods as he takes uh, a look up to the sky. Sanit now on P number two. Sanit uh, had a patchy start to the day. Didn't seem to his rhythm. Didn't find it long in much, but he's still par for the day. Which is too bad. Given currently, we don't have anybody really running away with it. We don't have, uh, we have some low scores, but we don't have like blisteringly low scores today where you see that somebody's just taken the field apart. And uh, as long as he can hold his own and maybe come back with a couple of birdies. He, he should be quite content. Karthik, on the other hand, uh, disappointing miss out short. Went a little over the hole. He misses his part. Quickly tapping in, moving on to the 18th. I would hope uh, the cleanup is just that, a cleanup. Yeah, so Ravi Kumar on the right hand side of the screen taking it 16. It will be interesting. He likes to favor right left draw. We'll have to align on that water hazard to get close to the flag stick. You can see the players have uh, really been aggressive on hole number 17. I was thinking they'd play the other fairway, but everybody's in a huge drives as well. We get a lovely, stunning view. The flag and the city, beautiful royal pink city, as it's fondly known. You watch players making their way onto the green, but nobody seems to have the green. Aman Raj seems to have taken the most aggressive approach that he could have. But he's in a decent spot uh, uphill, uh, maybe breaking your left. 
knowing how good his short game is that's actually a makeable chip putt for him makeable chip rather and given his uh, recent form and the way he's approaching the sport i think any everything is makeable for him saptak saptak has made birdie on hole number 14 and he moves to 12 under par so breathing down aman's neck aman would really hope to make this chip you can see that uh, the players do tend to get a little slower right towards the end of the round it's cumulative fatigue so it sets in and for our viewers who are joining us you can follow us on www.pgtofindia.com you can also get the live scoring stats the tour schedule you can also head over to abp news and head over to abp live get a wealth of information we are live to you from uh, ramba golf club on your screens is the leader aman raj from patna he that 13 under par and leads the top shot over saptak talwar oh, brilliant shot fancy that he just left it a little short this is the penultimate tournament on the professional golf tour of india The tournament is Bhawani Singh Rathore presents Jaipur Open 2023, powered by AU Small Finance Bank. And sure, one of feed number two, Manav, going through his pre-shot routine on number eighteen. He's got the big stick out. Yeah, this is a um, fail. Try this par five. Just keep it towards the right and let it rip. Reachable par five for somebody like Manav. I think um, he would uh, have a driver and a rescue. There is out of bounds on the left hand side, uh, which comes into play on the second shot, and there's a water hazard to the right of the green as well. But uh, uh, grandstand finish on this uh, hole, really well designed uh, golf course, and this hole is really the crescendo. That's a lovely drive, and some lovely camera work there to follow that ball ball on to uh, the first shot of the rough, and uh, as we watch. Speed number one, uh, Sanat, coming up with his birdie putt. Take on. Uh, the right side of the screens so you can see what's the golf ball in the air coming down with the flag on the background and he's left himself a decent shot as well yeah being a left hander that uh, shot will be slightly easier for him can stand right of the green and cut it back he might have something like a four iron from there depending how the lie is view at hole number 18 my apologies hole number 17 that's shamim khan let's we'll find out what that uh, chip was for let's so have a look at sanit on screen number 1 trying to make his par and that's so Feels Sanit's had one of those days where he just has not had a realistic opportunity at anything. Managing nine at uh, even par. 
if he takes advantage of a couple of par fives, should be a very very good day to end. Yeah, it's one been one of those quiet days. Uh, if he can make birdie on uh, either seventeen or eighteen, I think it will be a decent finish. Closing India at nine under par, leaders might move to fourteen under par, but that's all right. Being within five is never a bad thing. Dhruv Sharon with what appears to be a birdie putt. Yes, you can see from the, the exaltation. Rather happy at that. From the other side, seeing where they rise, and this is a birdie putt for him as well. Yes, and uh, seems to have made birdie. Not too sure what Shamim is putting from. We see, we saw him chipping up. So unless he was there in two, this would seem that this is a par putt. Just taking a little 360 tour of the hole to make sure he's got all the grain and the slopes right. And the putt will again go in the hole in a gingerly fashion. Taking a last breath in the hole. And comfortably thus so as predicted. We're quite sure when it is Shamim Khan holding that flat stick. Manav taking a little breather under the trees. Nothing to worry about, as we know, he had a good drive, but, uh, just missed the fairway by a yard or two. Back to the action. Seems to be going with a three wood. So the drive has not traveled as far as I thought it did. Or is that a rescue? Seems to be a rescue. Would be looking to hit a fade. This would make for some wonderful viewing right here. Maybe all of 240, 45 yards. Really does like to chase after his does Karthik. Seem to have it a little controlled three wood. Maybe trying to run it up. Not quite sure where that has ended. Mano, on the other hand, uh, seems to have a long iron in his hand. Yeah, one of uh, uh, really hit one out down there. Good about 25, 30 yards by Karthik's drive. I think the reason he's wearing that sweater is probably got a little bulk going on. Yes, uh, so for all golfers, yeah. That's a big drive by him, going with an iron. Let's see how he does here. That's okay. It's a good one. I'm sure all three of his family members are ardently watching him play. Big fans of his golf. That's a nice takeaway.
We'll soon find out where that ball has ended up. Now uh, seems uh, you can see from this angle how far down is it. It's a really long drive. I've had maybe about 200 yards. Uh, Zeroon's catching up uh, to Amanaz as well because he's made a lovely birdie on 17 in this part. Yes, that... Uh... <laughs> Fruitnik Electro Plus. Rehydrate. Feel alive. काम घर में कर रहे हों या बाहर या किसी बीमारी से उबर रहे हों आप बिना जाने डिहाइड्रेट हो सकते हैं रोज जरूरत है फ्रूटनिक इलेक्ट्रो प्लस रिहाइड्रेट इसका अनोखा आर थ्री फॉर्मूला इलेक्ट्रोलाइट रिस्टोर करे ग्लाइकोजन रिप्लेनिश करे और मसल्स का तनाव कम करे तुरंत एनर्जी के साथ फ्रूटनिक इलेक्ट्रो प्लस रिहाइड्रेट Turn as uh, Manu. A rotation through the ball is really good. And the referee coming in and uh... yeah, I was predicting the same. I thought that uh, a little too far behind the group ahead. Yes, uh, you can see them giving them a friendly reminder, and the players having some sort of a conversation that I think we are in time. I can tell you what they're discussing. The referee is telling them, please uh, scamper on. Akshay is saying that uh, we're not that far behind. And so is Manu saying. Manu is saying that I play on the DP World Tour. I know about speed, but... Uh, oh, no. It's, uh, yeah, maybe it's just a lot more benign. We're just trying to make it a lot more interesting. Yeah, maybe I think it's... Again, at the end of the day, everybody's trying to do their job. Yeah, and our job is to make it a little more interesting. <laughs> Keep up the conversation and Keep the controversy going. Create I, something. I, I'm pretty certain that if he's waiting that long, it's not helping him speed up. Is Manu yeah. having that conversation? I'm certain he's not the first to play when they get on the green. Now, Akshay is not too happy about that. He says that uh, the group ahead is right here, and that's what happens. You know, if the referee comes up to you right towards the end, uh, you tend to get a little hot under the collar, and it can affect your tempo. Especially if you feel you've been, uh, you know, wrongly uh, accused of slow play. Let's see how he does it. Especially for um, Akshay, more so because he he doesn't uh, he's he's got a bunker shot coming up. He needs a little more focus because he can very easily uh, lose a shot as well. Karthik here. We saw him hit that uh, rescue. Him. I'm not quite sure how he still has such a long shot coming up for his third. Maybe he clipped the tree. That can happen if uh, you don't catch it, catch it cleanly. Yes, he has almost all of 50, 60 yards coming up for his third shot. But uh, hasn't he done well? What a fantastic shot by Karthik. Really enjoy it. It's actually getting ready quite quickly, actually. So the intervention by the referee. Let's hope he hits a good shot. Yeah, I think he's at a really good shot. You know, this can upset your tempo sometimes, but that's the nature of the beast. You've got to keep up with the group ahead or play in your stipulated time. I'm sure what Mana was waiting for. Looking behind, I think waiting for the third player.
a small player on hole number 16. It was uh, Manu Gandas. Manav here on hole number 18. Asking somebody from uh, behind the green to not move. Any sort of sudden noise or movement uh, can cause a disturbance to the players. And that's the unique uh, nature of the sport of golf. Ambient sound is okay, but uh, sudden burst of movement can uh, really distract a player. We saw him make that tip and putt in the previous hole. Let's hope that he can make a birdie here as well. Would make his lunch taste a lot better. Maybe an eagle. Lovely effort, yeah. And that's how you finish in style. All mistakes forgiven for Manan Bhai when you finish in style with the birdie and birdie. So, I think uh, he's, made up for, he's made up for his mistakes. I think so. It'll be a delightful finish. Never hurts. Like you said, the lunch uh, tastes a little better. Yeah, he'd move up to 21st position and uh, he'll be really proud of the way that he's handled himself. As I say, it's not about what happens in life. It's about how you treat what, what happens. Your reaction to situations is everything. Saptak now just leaving it a little short to the left. Now you can see Karthik on hole number 18 in his unmistakable athletic posture trying to read the green. Gaurav Pratap Singh waltzing down the green. You can see they are playing ready golf. Uh, that's the difference. It is Gaurav Pratap Singh's putt, but uh, Karthik is ready, so I'll go first. This is an effort to save time. I think that's a good way to go about it also, unless I'm here disturbing somebody else. If you're playing within your time and your space. Should break a little to his right, I feel. I think he's breaking to his left. I feel he's aimed uh, a little on the right of the hole. Oh, right. I got it wrong. Too much, actually. <laughs> but either ways, it doesn't go in the whole difficult line, nevertheless. Despite that brilliant pitch shot. Uh, Manav uh, ranks 79th currently. Needs to jump 19 spots to not uh, go to the qualifying school next year and also to go to the season end up next week. Yeah, the Every season broke. Yeah, the season end is one where you can see your hair down, no stress, no cut. Manav currently at 469. I think it's going to be quite the uphill battle for him to make his card. He'd He'll have to make four, at least like somewhere in the vicinity of four lakh this week. And that means uh, a top eight finish. Yeah, something around that. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, Which is possible. He has put himself in a position yeah, where if he, he gets a low one tomorrow, he can propel himself to the top. So if he ends at six under par, uh, in, all, in all fairness, he'll have to shoot at least a par tomorrow to have a shot at keeping his card. But that would be some way. It is quite possible. I mean, you get to a decent start here. And uh, like we said, utilize the par fives. Gaurapatap Singh. At uh, trouble of the tee, then chipped out. Hit it to here. Now has this uh, for his buddy. Also with a conventional parting grip. Yeah, give it a good run. Yeah, give that a good run. Should be able to make his par. And that'll be good enough to keep him uh, in a tie for 21st. He's six under par, so he would join uh, Manav Bias at that score. Yeah, not wasting much time. Good part by Gaurav. 
One of having the better finish out of the three. As you're acknowledging your playing game for that company. It's a fantastic finishing hole. It's the perfect uh, amphitheater. If you have uh, somebody trailing by a shot or leading by a couple, you have to hold your nerve while executing a good shot. There's some big drives there as well in this group. Oh, always the finishing hole always makes uh, for an exciting finish, no matter where, which tour you're on. Which uh, Mangaj is on, on number 17 and, and Pokraj on hole number 18. Pokraj has uh, hit a big drive, really does bludgeon it. Not surprising at all, given he's Pokraj. He goes for a swipe with the iron, and I think he just uh, or hits it. That's not the worst place to be the back left bunker. I think when he got that iron on his in his hands, uh, he was only thinking of an eagle. Uh, Shamim Khan playing the hole in a completely different fashion has laid up. We'll try and make uh, birdie the hard way as our leader group uh, walks down hole number 17. You can see that uh, there is a brisk walk. Uh, I'm certain that... Uh, you know, he's aware that he's walking all the way from the ball till the, the pin. So he's trying to save time while doing that. And these are the things that uh, good top players do. They know that uh, they're putting in a little bit more preparation. Might as well save time. He likes to favor that low right to left spinning shot. So this will be interesting to see. So we pitch it towards the center of the green and let it release. Doesn't put too much spin on them. Doesn't have that kind of speed. Is more of a release uh, player when it comes to about these 60, 70 yard shots, but very good, especially if he has green to work with. Something like uh, this shot, you see this uh, break a little from right to left, maybe drop it about 15 feet short. And the good thing is that the ball is above his feet yeah. as well. That will really aid his uh, intended uh, shot. Let's see how he does now. I think he would be within uh, a makeable range for sure, given how much green he has to work with. Couple of bounce and look at that. I mean, I mean, this this is where this has made his living. He's beaten everybody to it from that range, seventy yards, and look how easy he made it look. And that's a very difficult shot. The judgment. We kill yours now. Yeah. So he's uh, that judgment is what uh, is really exemplary. Anything you want to learn from a top player, I think that's what you learn. You, you learn discipline. And you learn uh, repetition. He does the same thing over and over and over again. It's not easy to keep earning your birdies this way. You know, just compare it with a hit to hit a long drive, hit an eye, and just make up and down. It's so much more difficult to sort of plot your way around a golf course when he's just 250 off the tee. Absolutely. But you know, even sort of not having that distance, it comes with its own pressures also. Because if you're not that long, you have to be straight. Exactly. You can't be chipping out. After hitting a drive, it goes 250, 260. Yeah, that's why I think players um, who do have a good not being long of the tee have a lot of resilience and character. It's not easy to play this game at a high level, compete week in, week out when you're at such a disadvantage. You're always hamstrung and you're competing with players who are better than you in terms of ball striking abilities. And the only way you can meet beat them is the power of your mind. Let's see uh, what Dhruv can do. Now, this is a shot where a player is a little confused. Should I flight it up or roll it? Let's see what he does. Seems to be going with the aerial route. Seems to be going something like that. Maybe like a mid shot flight up that could roll out as well. It would be on an upslope as well. So, Mana went on the other way. Mana rolled it up the entire way. Couple of bounces, release up, and he's done well. That should be a birdie as well. Very good execution by Dhruv. Absolutely. And I think uh, Ukraj would want to follow suit. Leave himself to tap in, end the day with a birdie. So Dhruv would move to uh, 
13 under as well. Aman Raj also made uh, a birdie number 17. So he stretched his lead to two strokes. He's sitting at 14 under now, teeing off on our feed number two. Ukraj coming out from Bakka. Aman Raj. Slide for him, right down the middle. I think all that time in the gym is uh, paying off. He's getting some hustle behind that muscle. He's definitely going to have to give it a good look into when Pukhraj took the aggressive route with the second and also sort of run has run his, uh, run his third shot by. That's why we say golf is a great equalizer. Absolutely. He might be the only one struggling for birdie on this hole. Would be would be a Sun is now uh, has struggled with his game a little bit today, but put this down the fairway. Yeah, Sun is also a long hitter. Let's see where this ends up. I think Sun will probably be the longest amongst uh, the three of them. Yes, I think easily he uh, would have these players by at least 10 odd yards, but he has missed it to the right and uh, might not be able to go for the green from there. Pukhraj affectionately called Pukhi when we play our rounds of golf. Really cracks a joke or two on the golf course. I think a lot of us do. That's how you spend five and a half hours on a golf course. Uh, can't quite be poker face the entire duration. <laughs> Need to let off steam. Pukhraj, uh, quite the interesting character once you get to know him. Has uh, a lot of quips and quirks. You seen this putt break a little uh, from from the left to the right, or what was it? I'm a little confused. I think this one's going to be from the right uh, a little bit. I think mostly it's uh, how the speed plays out. He's like uh, he's like white lightning. He was so quick. He I, I I don't think he took a practice swing, but that's what you want to see. He'd be disappointed after that iron in his hand, and uh, I thought that was a good iron shot. Also, that second yeah. shot was really good. It pitched on the flag, just a little to the left. Unfortunate not to have made birdie. He'll be smarting from that. Dhruv, on the other hand, would like to cap this off with a wonderful day today. No round of the day alongside uh, Badal Hussain. It should be six under par. Dhruv also has that little uh, conventional grip, right hand below, left. Comfortably made that. Dhruv, currently the clubhouse leader at 13 under par after three rounds. Very, very, very consistent and impressive round by him today. Shamim now for his birdie. And he does that comfortably. Well, that's Pukhraj's dad, and uh, he seems to be okay, proud of the round uh, that he's watched. It's always fun to see parents coming out and watching their kids play golf. Now we see this penultimate group here at hole number 18. Is uh, quite the ball flight there being employed? <laughs> a little bit of a fade. Karthik also going with the fade. Comfortable. Straight drive. <laughs> Pukhraj, you can always bet that it's a left to right. With the right to right player. A little straightish this time. Uh, 
Now it's going to be interesting. I want to see how far Aman has been able to hit this. I think should should be a 240 odd yards. Seems to be in a similar place where Karthik was. I think uh, Aman Raj is the, the way the exemplary control of the golf ball that he's shown. I wouldn't be surprised if he puts it in the center of the green. Yeah, he can actually go over the three wood as well. Ravi Kumar opting to go with an iron or what is that? No, it's a rescue. Seems to be some sort of a driving iron. Is it? Uh, is it a possibility to chase it to the green, or there are trees that you? There are trees uh, there, so you can't quite chase it to the green. You have to fly those trees, but you can pitch it about ten yards short of the green. But you still have to fly those trees. Saptak on number seventeen. Uh, Looks like a slick. Slick. Interesting to see if it's for an eagle. Definitely looking at it, but he's left it a little short. While well, Ravi Kumar gets ready for his second on number eighteen. Uh, view is obfuscated by the tree. Sanit with his wife. Sanit uh, also seems to be going in with a longer iron. Has gone for it, and uh, isn't that a beauty? That's a lovely shot. It's Look at that ball. That, it's a great result. That's a ten on ten. That's a fantastic shot by Sanit. I didn't quite think that was possible from there. Would have hit a twenty thirty yard fade, and uh, really had some control there. Aman will have to go over these trees. Maybe going to the rescue. Let's see where's up. Not quite sure where that has ended. Going with an iron. Going probably with the four iron, maybe. Maybe he was just gesturing to to his caddy that uh, did it just clip? Yeah, I think it clipped those down. trees. Actually, lagging it up. He's remarking it uh, to suggest he's going to go tap in. That's so comfortably. Satak now, after that putt from over the hole, left a little short, so he's still giving it a good look. I think so. Aman would have clipped uh, a few branches there. Not the worst place to be, that's, that's a decent uh, place. Second shot, not the easiest, that OB lurks towards the left. It's probably why he was a little worried because he wasn't sure if uh, the trees threw it out of bounds. 
सब तक लाइक अ फोर फोटो बट इज मेड इट सो इज कंफर्टेबली मूविंग ऑन टू नंबर 18 and at all times when the polo games are going on you can hear the horses neighing on the left hand side and uh, you're hitting your shot so <laughs> your mind can vary a, a little bit you know you can you can go off places and think about the out of bounds but uh, these pl- players don't worry about any of that they're really good i remember back in the day when you were amateurs we used to driver and three wood on that uh, green and uh, that used to be a bedlam of many a players <laughs> that uh, this whole used to be the graveyard of dreams at times used to joke uh, but obviously the players have improved oh now would uh, would he love to make this up and down and finish at 15 under for the day from look like from what it looks like second position is going to be most likely at 13 on the par stance is a little open if you try to hit a spinning shot yeah he needs to chase up a little more mm like a 7 Just, out of 10 you'd say I'd probably give an 8 and a half out of 10 from here it looks pretty good to be honest maybe that camera angle didn't do justice to the shot it's not too bad he's been able That's to get it but yeah get it over that uh, ridge maybe a spun a little bit too much but that's all right all things considered while our final group gets on to hole number 18 manu gandas giving it all belting a massive drive here on hole number 18 and they're sitting down a bit unfortunately let's see if he's able to go for the green from there okay and the little overblow that he does with trying to gain uh, every little inch out of that drive Ravi Kumar is that his third from there yeah i think so i think so because uh, he was down the fairway with aman raj uh, and he's done well uh, from there to to be in on the front right anywhere uh, on the front of the green is not a bad position option seems to be a little cut but uh it's left it on the same line as money but seems to have drawn a better lie maybe now with the lag a little more aggressive than he would have preferred is he's left himself some work and from what we've seen from around that spot it's a little tricky uh the speeds and the line so he's going to do some work to get that body start that now after his pre shot routine stepping into the drive final drive and uh, final hole for him it's a good uh, hole for a right handed player just leave it out to the right and let it draw back uh, given the fact that it is a par 5 when you try to give it a little more you want to move it from right to left so there's no impediment to starting the ball on the right hand side here he seems to have left nothing there and went after it hard and which is probably why the club face just got uh, stuck behind a little and came out open so he's missed it out to the right it seems Sun at now with a realistic look at eagle. Carefully measuring up every grain that is uh, between him and the hole. But that was a really good second shot. Probably the shot of the day thus far. Strong ball striker is Sun at. Actually, the best shot we've seen on this hole yet. And I really like his attitude. Uh, the week before last at. Uh, the couple they've grand thorton presented by dlf he was uh, leading by four shots at one point in time but saw that uh, lead uh, capitulate towards the final few holes but still had a smile on his face uh, when he was playing hole number 18 and that's uh, when he realized that you know he has that ability to take a loss you know, anybody can smile when things are going your way but it takes uh, 
lot of character to be able to you know take it on the chain and move on absolutely we disappointed with that part you would want to give it a chance after that splendid second but i think that's all you know when you're secure when you know that you know what this is not the last time i'm going to be up here contending for a title when you know that you're good enough to win and you have this year and you will give yourself more opportunities and sometimes you're going to close and sometimes you're going to miss out i think it's a good be yeah i know not about that जाना तो मैम जरूर समझ गए मिठाइयों की डिलीवरी चल रही है सीआईडी के प्लान में डिलीवरी नहीं बेटा सब अलग अलग बैंक जा रहा है ऐसा क्यों बिजनेस बढ़ रहा है ना बेटा एक ही बैंक से काम नहीं चलता चलता है ना एयू करंट अकाउंट पे सब मिलता है मामू सोच बदलो और बैंक भी मेरी सी एयू स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक बदलाव हमसे है and he would uh, continue leading the tournament by two shots so yeah birdie on 17 18 for him for dhruv sharon for yashas chandra eagle birdie finish said sakeb ahmed birdie birdie finish he's seen quite a few players finish in a flurry and that's all the day is going to end for at least our leader raman raj is going to be going into sunday with the lead we just have to wait for sab tak because uh, of what he does whether that lead is going to be a stroke or two strokes currently his closest pursuer is dhruv sharon who is playing a group ahead of amun raj so i think safe to say that uh, the final group uh, would consist as it looks right now of uh, amun raj dhruv sharon and sab tak talwar a relatively young group uh, all in their 20s Absolutely. As you say, golf is uh, and Ravi Kumar there with a brilliant putt back for his birdie. He's uh, got a big smile. He he knows how to keep that putt was, and he's happy with the finish he's had. And now a mere formality for Sanit Bushnoi. As you can see, the golf is uh, definitely trending towards the youth. There's not much experience. I mean, obviously these these players are good. They won. They they do have the experience, Aman Raj, but they're still. uh spring chickens so as to speak they're pretty young uh the only experienced campaigner if i really look hard uh is rahil ganji at uh, 12th and amardeep malik in at 12th position maybe lower down you go gaurav pratap singh at tied 15th game that is uh, favoring youths now You don't see too many of the experienced hands out on tour. They're almost an endangered species. Uh, I guess it seems that uh, the game is uh, trending towards youngsters. And what can uh, the experienced lot do apart from just work on their fitness? I'm talking about some experiences. Um, somebody who is somewhere between those two, not in the twenties, maybe somewhere in the early thirties, if I'm not wrong. Not really sure. going with the wood here ball is sitting up he likes to hit a left right fade let's see if he does that from this rough will we'll have to make sure that it's gets clean contact otherwise i will take it wrapped in that grass and always tricky you do put up with a three wood or wood from the rough you almost certainly no oh, fantastic shot by right. him the uh, saving their best for the last playing to the gallery for the players on the professional golf tour of india are very adept at man now watching uh, akshay with that stroke similar position for him maybe uh, akshay had a better lie if uh, anything so manu taking a slightly more slight more risk 
for him compared to Akshay. So let's see how he does. Yeah, this is a brilliant uh, vantage point to see this hole from. Hole oh, is not quite visible and still he seems to be going for it. Unless it's a good lamb, I'm certain he wouldn't be going for. Uh, that's a rescue in his hand. Yeah, but the club head is not visible. You can only see the hosel. So, not too sure about this one, to be honest with you. Coming in from the right hand side, he'll have to hit it over the hazard. Yeah, I. Uh, 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 I think. Uh... See, that's that's not yeah. This is not the most prudent shot because that lie was not one that's going to allow you to control uh, you know the spin on it. So maybe that's where uh, the exuberance of youth some you know gets in the way. But that's all right. You learn. You need to be aggressive at times. It's a par five as well. I think he he probably have taken the risk into account. Even if he gets a drop and up and down, he still makes par. Yeah, it could have actually gone. Um, in Rescue maybe a five iron and play for a flyer and, and play for about 15 yeah. yards short. Hindsight, you know, is always 2020 vision, but yeah, that's one of the things that you learn over time. I think it's also smarter to hit a shorter club harder through the rough than a exactly longer club soft, especially when the ball's sitting down. We watch uh, the top tracer number 18. An ultimate group, Paman Raj, and the current leader as well. Followed by the leader group. Here we watch the leader group uh, making their way to number 18, which would mean that we are drawing a close to the day. Now, another look at that shot. The swing wasn't too bad. He went through it. Only after the shot, he realized that uh, flared out a little bit. Wasn't much of a miscue either, maybe about 10 yards right. Takes a second bounce, and I think it's in the bunker. So it's, uh, he's been saved by the bunker. If that is indeed in the bunker, that's a really lucky break. And that's a pretty straightforward bunker shot from there as well. And the flag's uh, on the back left. So on from the right, he'd have enough room to work with, to manufacture some shot. And Sattak has done quite well here, given he was a little on to the right. Yeah, that's a good place. Just keep it on the back foot and uh, kind of punch sandwich. And while we have a look at these players, we want to just run through the leaderboard. Aman Raj leads it at 15 under par, being followed by Dhruv Sharon at 13 under par, Saptak Talwar at 12 under par, Akshay Sharma at 11. And then you have uh, three players. Died at 10 under par, namely Yashas Chandra, Sanit Bishnoi, Manu Gandas. It's been a, an interesting moving day here. A lot of us, a lot of low rounds. Out of the top uh, 20 golfers, uh, almost 16 shooting under par today. So, shows you that, uh, 17, my apologies, shows you there's a lot of depth in the field and they're all firing on all cylinders. It's going to be a fantastic day tomorrow. Moving day has not disappointed us in the least. I think players on the page today I seldom disappoint anybody. They're all highly skilled. Most of the field actually wins. People at the bottom of the list here or people who missed cut could very well be winning next week. Surprising uh, 
swing being employed here by Saptak really long swing. It seems to be going with some sort of an aerial shot. But that uh, you would have liked to hit a low shot here. Maybe he's trying to uh, hoist it over something and fly it all the way back. Yeah, definitely looks that way. Yeah, coming up short. I think that wasn't a clean strike. Uh, he'd definitely be disappointed with that result. So by the looks of it, it seems like uh, Dhruv Sharon is going to be the closest pursuer to Amin Raj. And Amin Raj is going to enjoy a two-shot cushion starting tomorrow. I think the ball has indeed uh, gone over into the water, has it? It's going to take a two-shot, uh, two-club penalty drop. And we'll be hitting his fourth from here. Now, the tricky part is going to be dropping the ball. We'll have to drop it twice. And if it rolls back in the hazard, then uh, can place it. But there's a rule that you have to <laughs> ensure that it doesn't roll back in the hazard either. So the caddy might be standing behind inside the line of the hazard. So this is going to be quite interesting to see how they navigate these rules. Osmanu would have probably hoped to have missed it uh, a little more right because there's a little bunker there. He could have caught that and would have slowed his call pull down from going into the hazard. But this is currently what where the situation is. Yeah, I think the ball is rolled back so he can indeed go ahead and place it. That would be a little helpful for him. Manu's uh, measured up his chip shot, deciding what to do. Not sure what sort of a lie he's drawn. But he has plenty of room to work with. He's got a lot of green to contend with. There's space so he can choose both either to run it up a little or fly it a little further than just and that would suggest by his practice swing. Maybe he's trying to fly it a little more and eliminate the green in the beginning. He was trying to do that, but uh, there was a little more spin or uh, we'll have his, tech spin. We'll have his work cut out in order to save power now. Saptak now for his birdie attempt, lengthy one. I think he'd be happy from par from here. This is all a 40. Might end up breaking both ways. Yeah, that's a good part by him. Still a little uh, pinker left coming back, but not a bad effort. Yeah, that's uh, definitely food for thought. It's about four feet. The leader group seems to be struggling with this whole, uh, except for Akshay, who's got a 
five footer or so for his birdie, but the group before them showed how it's done. They're all three of them making birdies. What kind of a schedule is Manu following on the European tour? Is he uh, playing a lot of tournaments or limited I think, schedule? I think he was playing uh, most of the tournaments that he was getting. I think except for the Rolex series, he's got uh, all events. Um, I think he's going to get uh, starts on the Challenge Tour and um, on the PGTI next year. He's going to retain his card. But I'm sure he's gained immensely on experience. Watch him now. He only played four events on the Professional Golf Tour of India this year. This is his fifth. Oh, just about a disappointing. Uh, Akshay, the sole member of the group who's played this whole little more convention, he's going to be putting for his birdie. As you've seen this part before, uh, Karthik was in a similar spot. This breaks quite sharply to the left. Karthik had just missed it under the ball. He did uh, not take line. Let's see here. And uh, I think this is this part is fooling the golfers because Akshay made the exact same error, almost repeated nature. Last member of this group and the last player left on the field this round three. We thank all our viewers who've been with us, watching and following us, taking you along the journey in round three with Shorya Singh and me, Aini Shalwalia, your host. Uh, we'll be here tomorrow morning as well, following the same coverage in the uh, live bringing you the result on the final day what seems to be a very interesting day from jaipur it's been an interesting day thus far aman raj leading the tournament Saptak just a little more attention than, and uh, uh, yeah so that's it uh, that's the moving day but unfortunately for Saptak, uh, moved the wrong way on the final hole so that will move him down to 11 under par. So, Raj, along with And um, I believe Akshay Sharma will be playing the leader group tomorrow, as Akshay Sharma has a better round today. And at the culmination of uh, the third day's play, we have Aman Raj leading the tournament, followed by Drush Sharan, Saptak Talwar, and Akshay Sharma tied in third position. Uh, and this was... Uh, our coverage of the third day of the Bhavani Singh Rathore presents Jaipur Open 2023 presented by AU Small Finance Bank. And tomorrow we'll be live again at the same time to bring you the final day's coverage. Uh, there's a lot of action on the uh, for tomorrow, so stay with us. And uh, also stay for a little while to go through the highlights for the third round. And till tomorrow, this will be all from us, uh, myself, Shaurya Singh and Ainesh Anurwalia. See you on the other side. Thank you.